Am I the a-hole for taking my grandchildren to Disney for the first time without their mother and refusing to apologize when confronted? My son made this account and asked me to post this story because he claims that my normal meter is skewed and the internet is going to tell me that I'm an a-hole. Okay, that's already so funny. It's labeled as not the a-hole. I recently babysat my grandchildren, five and four, for a period of four nights and five days so my son and his wife could attend a wedding in Mexico and spend a few days on vacation. They approached me since her mother would not be available and I initially said that I wasn't comfortable with that. It seemed like a long time to watch the kids and she has point blank told me that the woman's family is more important than the man's. So yeah, I was irritated I was being asked and not her mother. I will admit that I did give in when my son became very emotional but I felt and feel like they were being manipulative. While I had the kids, I was invited to a birthday at Epcot and I wanted to go. It didn't even occur to me to run it by my son or daughter-in-law as I had the kids for an extended period of time and obviously they knew they would be going where I went. My daughter-in-law had previously mentioned wanting to save up for Disney but she said that about a lot of stuff and never made me aware it was something super special to her. Also, it was Epcot. It's not like I took them to Magic Kingdom and they had some magical moment of seeing their favorite character. When they returned and found out my daughter-in-law was furious and burst into tears, she said that I stole one of her kids first and then called me entitled. What? <laughs> to be honest, I didn't react well to being called entitled when she was the one who'd previously demanded babysitting. My son asked me to apologize as she was distraught over missing their first Disney trip, but I declined and I asked them to leave. My son reached out again and said I should have asked for something that big and his wife feels robbed. I know she's a huge Disney person but it was Epcot not quintessential Disney and I don't feel like I should have to miss out on a birthday party I wanted to attend. I told my son I'm not apologizing for anything and maybe they should think about how they made me feel when they didn't respect my initial no. My son feels like Reddit is going to show me the error of my ways. Oh my god that's so funny and so frustrating. You're not in the wrong even a little bit OP and your daughter-in-law is being so selfish and entitled Oh, that's so annoying. The top comment says, I hope your son feels humbled here today. Not the a-hole. They imposed onto you to watch their children. You did exactly as they requested. You've done nothing wrong. You're not responsible for your rude daughter-in-law crying. Tears don't make a person right. Wow, that's such a good point. So many people think that because they get upset that they're in the right. And yeah, that's not true. The only entitled behavior is your son and daughter-in-law. They guilted you into accepting something that you expressed that you were not comfortable with. And then they got upset in how you took care of their children for them. You shouldn't have to forego your plans because they didn't secure childcare before going on vacation. Again, you've done nothing wrong. She deserves no apology. She can pout and whine all she wants. She was the one who put you into an uncomfortable situation. She never said not to go there and you're not a bloody mind reader. Next time they ask something like this, tell them you can't deal with the negative reaction of the daughter-in-law and you aren't willing to subject yourself to her behavior. A million percent. And the comment underneath, very much not the a-hole. Daughter-in-law is being selfish in my opinion. When my kids' grandparents, either side, have provided my kids opportunities to experience cool stuff, I've been really grateful that one, my kids get to do those things, and two, that my kids will get to make wonderful memories with their grandparents that they'll cherish for the rest of their lives. My kids have amazing memories of their grandparents leading them on fun adventures to theme parks and historical places, some of them I would have liked to have gone to, but that's a separate issue from my kids getting to go. The most important part, one of those grandparents has now passed and those memories are absolutely precious to my kids. Those memories of my kids being loved by and important to many people in their lives are far more important than any selfish desire I have to experience all those things with my kids. Daughter-in-law needs to get over herself and realize that her kids are separate people from her. Their experiences don't always need to be about her experiences. In fact, it's good for their emotional and psychological development to build relationships and have experiences with multiple family and friends. Yeah, that's a beautiful comment. The daughter-in-law is only upset because they didn't get to do this. Obviously, the kids aren't upset. Yeah, that's super selfish selfish to be acting like this. And yeah, that comment was so well said. They owe you an apology, OP. Am I the a-hole for refusing to talk to my parents until they give me an honest answer to my question? I, 17 male, live with my parents and my younger siblings. We were very close until recently. My first mum died when I was six years old. She developed eclampsia in late stages of the pregnancy with me, and she never recovered from it. A few weeks later, my dad packed up and moved with me because he couldn't stay where they were planning a life together. This left her family behind. She has parents, siblings, nieces and nephews, aunts and uncles and cousins, who were always a very tight-knit family. My dad met my adoptive mum when I was seven months old. Out of insecurity on my mum's part and a desire to forget the future he had planned with my mum, contact between my biological maternal side was limited to once a year. My mum didn't want to share the role of mum. She knew that my family would want to talk about my mum around me and would want me to know that she existed, but she didn't want to feel like she was less of a true mum. And my dad has just never gotten over the pain of losing my mum, and he buries the past and her to cope. I don't fully understand why they couldn't put me first in 
that decision, but they didn't. My childhood was mainly happy. It had some negatives like wishing I knew my family better or had known my mum. Also, I wasn't accepted by my adopted mum's family, so yeah, that was always fun. Then I had more contact with my family. It started with texting and calling and Zoom calls regularly, and then convincing my dad to let me go for a weekend here and there. He and my mum didn't like it, and the decision confused my siblings too. I have loved getting to know them, and they've loved getting to know me. Grandparents' rights weren't an option for them because of that one visit a year, so seeing me more is huge for them. My parents really started to let me know how much they disliked all this extra contact. My dad said it's painful, and my mum told me she feels less important because I'm chasing a relationship that ties to a mum that I don't remember. A couple of weeks ago, they told me I should think of them and my mum's feelings. I asked them how they would feel if they were in my mum's shoes, or her family shoes, if they died while their child was a baby, and they were erased by their spouse and his new spouse, would they be okay with that? And would they be okay if my siblings or I died with a newborn and they never got to be a real part of their lives? They refused to answer. I told them I didn't want to speak to them until they gave me an answer, because they were being totally unfair to me. My parents are angry about this and my siblings asked me why I had to make this such a big deal. So I posed the question, if one of us died and we never got to see their only child, would they be okay with that? It helped them to understand, but my parents don't like my no talking thing, but all they want to talk about is this topic, and they also won't give me an answer. Am I the a-hole? No, of course you're not the a-hole, OP. And everything you've said makes perfect sense. Like the top comment says, not the a-hole, you have a right to see your birth mum's family and have a relationship with them. A couple of weeks ago, they told me I should think of them and my mum's feelings. I asked them how they would feel if they were in my mum's shoes or her family's shoes, if they died while their child was just a baby, and they were erased by their spouse and his new spouse, would they be okay with that? And would they be okay if my siblings or I died with a newborn, and they never got to be a real part of their lives? They refused to answer. They can't answer you because they would feel exactly as you do, but they still want you to not have a relationship with your maternal family, because it threatens the new family they created. Out of insecurity on my mum's part and a desire to forget the future he'd planned with my mum, contact between my biological maternal side was limited to once a year. My mum didn't want to share the role of mum. She knew my family would want to talk about my mum around me, and would want me to know that she existed. This is just cruel to you and your maternal family. Your younger siblings sound more mature than your dad or adopted mum. And OP said, yeah, exactly. Though I think for my dad, it's less about the new family and more about his refusal to deal with his grief and pain. He doesn't even talk about his life at all from before. It's like the past is all stored in a box that he keeps trying to get rid of, but he can't and he never can. I know he struggles to look at me sometimes because I look just like my mum and her family. So he could never entirely escape no matter how much he wanted to. Yeah, and like that comment said, it's so cruel on you, OP. Yeah, no, you're for sure not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for telling a doctor to shut up on a turbulent flight? Wow, this one's labelled as a-hole. I haven't seen an a-hole one in ages. I-30 male was on a flight from Atlanta to LAX last night. A packed flight. Everybody just trying to get some sleep. About two hours in, the lights come on and an announcement crackles through the intercom. Turbulence ahead, fasten seat belts. Pretty standard stuff. And then all hell breaks loose. This woman, maybe late 40s, impeccably dressed, starts freaking out, screaming about air pockets, demanding to speak to the pilot, the whole nine yards. Flight attendant, super patient lady, bless her, tries to calm her down, explains it's standard procedure. Turbulence is normal. Nope, not having it. This lady, who will name Jane, throws a fit. Not the screeching nails on a chalkboard kind, but a cold, steely fury. She accuses the flight attendant of lying, of putting everybody in danger, and demands to be deplaned immediately. The flight attendant says that's not possible mid-flight, and Jane launches into this whole spiel about how she's a doctor, pulls out an ID to prove it, and if something happens, it's on the airline. Now the rest of the plane is awake. People are grumbling, some looking scared. A baby starts crying. Flight attendant is trying to reason with Jane, but it's like talking to a brick wall. Finally, I just lose it. I yell out, probably a little too loud. Look, lady, we all get turbulence. It's not a five-star resort, but it's safe. Sit down and shut up before you get yourself arrested. And then everybody stares at me. Jane spins around, eyes blazing, and starts in on me about disrespecting a medical professional. What does them being a medical professional have anything to do with this? I fire back that a real doctor wouldn't be causing a scene and freaking everybody out. The flight attendant dives in trying to mediate, but the damage is done. We hit some turbulence. Not terrible, but enough to jostle the plane. Jane freaks out again, and some people start getting panicky. I feel awful. Maybe I made things worse. The flight attendant gives me a look that could curdle milk, but then steers Jane away to talk to her privately. By the time we land, things are calmer, but the tension is thick. Jane gives me a withering look as she disembarks, and a few people mutter thanks under their breath. So, am I the a-hole? Did I just escalate a bad situation? Or was I right to shut down a meltdown that was putting other passengers on edge? I'm honestly not sure. Yeah, so obviously what you did isn't that bad, but yeah, I don't feel like you should have said something. It's not your job to shut down a meltdown that's putting everybody else on edge. Yeah, this comment, you 
DA Halbert unknowingly. The crew are trained to handle these sorts of situations and you in your frustration escalated it. I fly a lot. I'm also a very big guy who looks like he can handle himself. There's kind of an unwritten rule that if there's an aggressive passenger, I sit the hell down but I pay attention, but I don't jump in. I don't risk making things worse in an attempt to fix the issue. Sit down and shut up and if the crew need help, they'll ask. You ever watch or play netball? Unlike a lot of sports where players will call for the ball, open players in netball say, here if you need. Or imagine going to the supermarket and you see somebody with a pallet stocking shelves. You don't just start grabbing stuff and putting it on a shelf saying, I'm just trying to help. Let the professional handle it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like it doesn't mean that you were wrong for what you said. It just wasn't your place to say it. Am I the a for saying I'm entitled to food that my parents buy? I'm going to keep this short. I'm in college and I'm living with my parents. My parents had an oops baby. My sister is only four. They can't afford childcare. So instead of getting a part-time job to help out, I take care of her when they're at work. We got into an argument because they haven't gone grocery shopping and we're running low on food. They used the last of the bread for themselves tonight. And when I brought up what I would eat, we got into an argument. They told me I'm grown and it's not their responsibility to feed me anymore. I told them that's BS and I'm entitled to food because I'm taking care of their kid. They're now calling me an entitled brat and saying that if I don't fix my attitude, they'll kick me out. I told them go ahead because then they'll be homeless because they can't afford childcare, even with both of them working. My relatives are telling me that I'm in the wrong because I'm an adult and I need to grow up. So am I the a-hole? No, I don't really feel like you're the a-hole, OP. Your parents aren't really making that much sense. Yeah, like this comment, not the a-hole. So you're an adult and you need to grow up, but your parents don't. They can either make sure there's food in the house for their kids. If there was nothing for you to eat, what did they give your sister? Or one of them can be a stay-at-home parent and watch the child they created irresponsibly so you can get a job and buy your own food. And OP said, yeah, it made sense to me that if I'm giving up on getting money to help them, they should provide the things I can't for myself because of it. My sister ate with them. I was working on homework, so I said I'd eat later. We had the stuff to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, which I planned on making for myself as well, but they used the rest of the bread. So I was left, as I said in another comment, with the choice of plain white rice, dry cereal or peanut butter on a spoon. Yeah, so what are you meant to do? Have a job, but also look after their kid? And what, they can't see that that doesn't make any sense? Yeah, no, it doesn't sound like you're the a-hole OP. Am I the a-hole for telling my mum I can up and leave and she's the worst thing that's ever happened to me? Okay, so I've had a lot of fights with my mum over the years. I'm 17, I'll be 18 soon, and for me, it's college time. I've been getting into fights with her about college since I was 14, mainly her telling me that I wasn't going, and me telling her I was. It was never a financial thing, but she felt I didn't have the personality to go to college. We keep having fights about this to this day. Apparently, a little while ago, I got into one of my dream unis. I'd been dreaming about this uni for years, and I got in on a scholarship. Not a full ride, but I had a lot of tuition off. And with the amount I was awarded, I could have paid for college myself. The housing was free. She hid it from me. I've lost access to my email for a while, so I was relying on using her account to check for responses. But for a while there, she wouldn't let me check, and she just said I didn't get any responses yet, and I believed her. The other day, she went to the washroom. I got into her phone, and I saw the email. I yelled more than I ever had. I swore at her for the first time in my life, and I told her that I'd pay for college myself. She's the worst thing that ever happened to me, and once I was gone, I would never be speaking to her again. My mum isn't talking to me anymore. My dad is traveling. My sister is in college. I can't speak to anybody, but apparently my mother spoke to her therapist and believes I inflicted trauma creating words on her purely out of teenage angst. I don't think it was angst. I genuinely can't express the anger I feel right now, but I do want to know if I gave my mum trauma. Am I the a-hole? So what, your mum's not going to take responsibility for the fact that she was hiding this from you? Like unbelievably important information? You said that stuff for a reason, OP, and you're angry for a reason. Blaming it on teenage angst is hilarious. The top comment says, not the a-hole. I'm a mum myself. She purposefully hid an acceptance letter and lied when she was asked about it. She quite literally could have diminished your future success had you not found out about her weird need to keep it from you. Also, I have large doubts that she told the whole truth about the situation in order to garner some sympathy. In no way is it teenage angst. It was quite reasonable to be upset and frustrated and mad, etc. From the fact that she blatantly lied about your dream college. Frankly, if this truly is your reason to cut off ties with your mum, then she can only blame herself for her deceit. I hope you do well in college. Yeah, the fact that your mum is putting all of the blame onto you, OP, and acting like she did nothing wrong or nothing to cause this anger, that's so awful. And like this comment says, not the a-hole. You seem to have handled the situation pretty maturely so far. And then she went and hid a life-changing email from you. That's something that no mother should ever dream of doing. She has not suffered trauma inflicting words because of you getting rightfully angry. I promise you that. I don't know how she was expecting you to react, but you were understandably angry. She owes you a sincere apology. She needs to realize that you are very nearly an adult and you make your own decisions 
Am I the a-hole for not telling my daughter that I was in an accident? My daughter, 28 female, and I, 56 female, have a tough relationship. I take the blame for all of this. When she told me she was a lesbian at 15, I didn't react well. I didn't kick her out of the house or do anything else, but I said terrible things, and our relationship, which was wonderful, turned into barely talking. My husband woke me up two years after she came out, and I started trying to improve my thoughts, my prejudices, and try to understand all of this better, but our relationship was already badly damaged because of me. I apologized to her for the things I said. We had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, and she was very sincere in saying when she'll leave the house, she would cut off contact with me, because despite accepting my apology, she no longer trusted me as somebody who she wants around. I accepted this, and after going to college, she actually cut off 95% of contact with me, and I tried to get closer or to go to therapy together, but she refused, so I respected it. We even had some contact while my husband was alive, because she attended the end of year parties, but after he passed away three years ago, if we talked three times, she didn't want to talk, and I respected that, because I'm aware of what I did. Two weeks ago, I was in a car accident, and I broke two ribs, my arm, and I had several scratches on my body. It was nothing too serious. I'm recovering well, and I have help at home. I didn't say anything to my daughter, because we don't talk, and she lives eight hours away. She called me yesterday, asking if I had really been in an accident, and when I confirmed, she started to argue with me, saying, I shouldn't know this kind of thing from my cousin, but from you. I was honest here, and I said that we haven't talked in months, almost a year. I'm respecting what she asked, and I thought this was a topic she wasn't interested in. She started to say that even though we don't talk, I had to tell her this type of information because she was my daughter and she's the only immediate family and to not hide it from her. She's upset with me, but today I received a bag from the pharmacy with pain medication and other things from her. I'm feeling bad, but I'm also doing what she asked me, which is that we don't have contact. Am I the a-hole? Nah, not really, OP. Like you said, you're going off what they said and I don't feel like they should be angry at you for that. The top comment says, yeah, ignoring everything in the past here and judging on the present, not the a-hole. She's the one who maintained a no contact relationship. You've respected her wishes on this for years and you kept your distance at her request. It's a bit ridiculous for her to scold you for doing as she requested. You can't be faulted for respecting her wishes. She can't change the rules and then play the victim after the fact. It sounds like there's no winning for you here. You're damned if you do and damned if you don't. She's going to be upset either way because you contacted her after being told not to or you didn't contact her at all. You're not a mind reader to determine what contact is acceptable for her depending on what rule she's established that day. Yeah, that's right. And like the comment under it says, not the a-hole for not telling your daughter. You're right, you are abiding by her wish to not be in contact with you. How are you supposed to know that there's a threshold of information she wants if she never communicated that to you? Thank you, daughter, for her concern and for the package and for thinking of you. Don't forget to tell her that you're so glad that she reached out, even if she's angry because you've missed her. If you reach out a little warm, maybe she'll reciprocate. And if you both can do that, maybe your relationship will start to improve. Yeah, that'd be such a beautiful outcome. But yeah, don't feel like you're the a-hole in this situation, OP. Am I the a-hole because I won't pay to continue housekeeping services for my wife. My wife is somebody who's always had a housekeeper from a young age. When we first discussed moving in together before marriage, the division of chores was a hot topic. I was on team, we can do it ourselves. And she wanted to keep using the housekeeping service that she had. Ultimately, I agreed to the housekeeping service after both our parents told me it'd be easier to agree to make her happy. My only thing was that it was a service she was responsible for paying for. She started out having them come every other week, then once a week, and then to every other day to keep their house as clean as she liked it, and to do things like her laundry and emptying the trash in her hobby room. Mid-January, my wife was let go when her company downsized. She's been having a hard time finding a job in her field. For now, she's working part-time in retail. We weren't making amazing money before she was let go, but we live comfortably due in part to living below our means for the most part. Since our current job doesn't pay much, I said that I would cover all of our joint expenses, i.e. mortgage and property tax, our utilities and our phone so she doesn't have to deplete her savings, and our savings won't suffer much either. She paid for the cleaning service in February, but then yesterday asked me if I was going to set up a direct pay with the cleaning company or transfer her the money to keep paying them. It's 190 US dollars a week. I told her neither. The housekeeping service was something she wanted and she was responsible for. If she can't afford it anymore without dropping her savings below a point she's comfortable with, then we don't need it. And I'm not going to pay for something that two able-bodied adults are perfectly capable of doing ourselves. We argued. She says I know how much she hates cleaning and that it stresses her out. And since the housekeeper cleaned up areas like the kitchen and the living room and made the bed sometimes, I was benefiting from it so it counts as a joint expense. Nah, that's not how that works. I told her that it doesn't because I'm perfectly happy to clean up after myself and I've cleaned rooms before when they needed it between visits. Fast forward to today and she still thinks I'm being a jerk for not paying for it. Am I being an a-hole here? Edit to add, I've been doing housework even with the housekeeper. I do my own laundry, I make our bed most days, I clean up after our pets, I clean the kitchen after we cook and that includes the oven and stove and microwave. I take out the trash and the recycling, I clean the AC filters, I dust between visits, I'll 
sweep and clean the bathrooms between visits, clean up the shower and the sinks after each use, I pick up after myself, most of what the housekeeper does is already done by the time she shows up, if my wife is home then it's her mess that gets cleaned up, or her clothes or plates or items that she leaves around, the housekeeper also cleans her hobby room, does her laundry and whatever else my wife asks for, she's just used to having a daily cleaner due to her childhood, of course you're not the a hole OP, she has absolutely no right to get upset at you for this, like that was the deal from the beginning, and for god's sake what did it say there you were paying for the mortgage and the phones and the utilities and stuff, like you've already taken over a lot of stuff to pay for, she has no right to be upset at you for not paying for this, yeah like this comment says not the yay hole please extend a warm welcome to reality to your wife, it seems it might be her first time joining us here, nobody wants to clean, it's a necessity of being an adult in your own living space, she can stomp her feet and pout all she wants to, as long as she's doing it with a broom in hand, just because she's been spoiled as a child doesn't mean you need to continue it into adulthood, it's time for her to grow up, yeah definitely, and then also to add on top of that that OP cleans everything anyway, so it's not like the house is a pigsty and they desperately need this cleaner, it's bloody clean anyway, yeah it takes a lot of audacity to get upset about something like this, especially when you're already paying for all the other stuff OP, and you're also cleaning up after her, yeah that's so wild that they're angry at you for this, am I the a-hole for refusing to cover my scar and wearing a bikini as it triggered my friend, I 24 female had a cancer scare a few years back and had a biopsy done on my upper leg, the scar has faded now but it is still fairly noticeable and about 7 centimeters. thankfully it was only a scare and nothing came of it, for a while I was insecure about it and I stopped wearing skirts or tight leggings where you could see the outline of the scar, but now that I've accepted it's gonna be there, I've started to wear whatever and I realized that nobody cares about it apart from the odd question, we went to the beach yesterday as a friend group and I wore a bikini, I was excited to get a tan and my friend Anna brought her friend Dana, 25 female, I have met her before but I don't know her very well, however I do know she started a fundraiser for her mum who's fighting cancer right now, Dana's family situation is quite difficult as her dad passed away recently and her mum has stage 4 and Dana is juggling a lot, I came earlier than Anna and Dana so I was already in my bikini when they joined us and Dana was nice to me and asked about my new job, then Anna went to say hi to the others and Dana mentioned my scar and recognised it was a biopsy, she asked if I could wear a beach cover up and it was triggering to her and it was insensitive of me as I know her mum is going through it right now, I said no I'm here to get a tan and the cover up will ruin that and Dana didn't say anything but didn't talk to me for the rest of the day, today Anna texted me telling me that Dana told her what happened and while she agrees that Dana's comment was weird, I should have given her a free pass as she's not in the best place mentally right now, I said it was really weird and no I wouldn't, I genuinely don't think I'm in the wrong and I think she's being really weird about the situation, obviously if I'm in the wrong I will apologize, no I don't feel like you're in the wrong OP, not even a little bit, like yeah your understanding of the situation and yeah it's super unfortunate what they're going through, but that doesn't mean you live your life expecting everybody else to change because of that, yeah like the top comment says not the a-hole at all, while I feel for it and what she's going through it's absolutely not okay to ask somebody to put a cover up on due to a scar, if somebody has a trigger it's their responsibility to handle it, not everybody else is to change for them, you're at the beach it's completely acceptable that you wear your bikini and good for you for not letting your scar deter you from what you want to do, yeah it isn't your responsibility to change OP, and like you said at the top of the post you were really insecure about this and you stopped wearing tight skirts or leggings where you could see the outline of the scar, but you've come to accept it and you're in a good place with it too, and yeah for them to come along and say oh no you need to cover it up, no you really don't OP, I feel like you did the right thing, the next one is called am I the a for telling my mum I will move out versus paying $600 a month in rent, I'm 25 years old, I was paying 60 bucks a week rent for a few years, I recently started a new temporary job that pays pretty decent and they decided to keep me with the company last week, this morning my mum texted me saying rent starts up again, $150 a week, I just told her I'll move out, I already pay for my own meals and I only have my small bedroom to call my own in their house, I can rent a studio apartment 3 or 4 times the size of my room for a few hundred or more, or could rent a room with friends for less than my mum's trying to charge me, it'd be one thing if they cooked and cleaned for me every day and I was raking up their bills but I do my own thing and I pay my own bills, I never really even cross paths with my parents besides when I'm getting off work, my mum's definitely pissed that I said that, I can tell, but I'm also upset that the person who birthed me is trying to get me to pay what I'd pay a landlord for rent just to sleep in her house, even a hundred a week I'd be more inclined to be okay with, but 600 a month just to be able to sleep at my parents house seems a little bit high, if I'm paying $600 a month I think I deserve my own spaces around the house also as I would with a landlord, it seems having a landlord would be a better deal for me in this case, no you're not the a-hole OP, like yeah you're 25, you want and need your own space, so yeah of course in this situation you'd move out, I don't think it said where you live, but I'm assuming it isn't Australia, cause yeah $150 a week isn't gonna get 
get your place here. But obviously you can find somewhere for that much. So yeah, go for it, OP. I mean, like, it's going to be a lot more expensive than you expect. But hopefully you realise that. Like, I don't know if rent is really that cheap. And that's not the only cost that comes with moving out. But that's besides the point. Ultimately, no, you're not the a-hole if you want to move out, OP. You can do whatever you want. The top comment says, you know, parents have bills and utilities to pay also. You're only entitled to free room and board until you're a legal adult. Lol, if you can swing it for $600, go for it. Where I come from, $600 a month would get you a shared bedroom, a half bathroom, and maybe access to a garden hose with a three minute shut off timer to shower with. Despite coming off a little bit naive, you're definitely not the a-hole. I'm not sure why she'd be so angry unless she was genuinely depending on the income that she got from you to pay bills. If she was only depending on it for luxuries and fun money, then she's extra a hole -ish. And OP said, yeah, if it were a matter of making ends meet, I wouldn't have any issue. My dad has a credit card in my name that he can use whenever he needs to catch up on something and doesn't have the money. Dad's the breadwinner in our house. My mum pays for vacations and a couple of utilities, but my dad pays for the mortgage and the groceries and most of the bills. The funny part is he doesn't want rent from me. It's my mum who wants it. It's part of why I'm especially not keen on the idea. If they needed the money, it wouldn't even be a question, but they just got back from a two-week cruise and they're planning another one, so they're definitely not even close to struggling. Yeah, don't get me wrong, the cheaper studio near me is closer to 900 and not the best area, but I still would have more privacy and independence for sure. Sorry if I missed a couple of points, I'm trying to reply to as many comments asking for context as I can. Yeah, well there you go, you're definitely not the a-hole OP. And it also doesn't sound like you're delusional about the rental process, so yeah, all the best with it OP. Am I the a-hole for telling my friend that she's ruining her child's life with the name that she gave her? So I, 21 female, have been friends with Lorene, 22 female, for 17 years now, and we're really close. She recently gave birth to her daughter and her and her husband recently told us the name. They decided to name their daughter Juliet, pronounced, yeah, Juliet, and her middle name is Mariah. I thought the spelling was a joke until she told me they were serious. I told her with that spelling of a simple but beautiful name, it's just gonna ruin the little girl's life. She got mad and told me to stop ruining her mood and that I'm being mean. I'm completely honest, the spelling is just bad. Nothing else can explain it. Why ruin such a beautiful name by including letters that don't belong there? I texted her yesterday and I told her the little girl will try to change her name or at least go by her middle name since it's normal. She told me to stop texting her that I'm a bad friend and that I'm being an a-hole for making fun of the name. I don't think I am. When I told her that the spelling is just bad, she went crazy. She told me that I'm the worst friend ever and that I'd never be able to see her daughter again. After that, her husband sent me an email telling me to stop being so disrespectful. He thinks the spelling is cute and just makes her unique. Unique, yeah, but that's gonna make the little girl suffer and she'll probably be bullied for the spelling. I haven't replied and I don't think I'm the a-hole, but I thought I would ask Reddit since y'all are the best to judge. So am I the a-hole for telling my friend the name she gave her daughter is bad and is gonna ruin her life? Update. Alright, I get it. I'm an a-hole for going after the name more than once. Sorry for that LMAO. I just sent her an apology text for doing that. Yet I did write how she should try to look at it from another perspective. I also sent a few screenshots of the comments just for her to see what other people think of it. FYI, I'm supposed to be the godmother, which is why I was extra worried, laughing my ass off my bad. Yeah, no, I think you're right, OP. It doesn't make sense to name them Juliet and to spell it like that. And it's not unique. Like, oh wow, you spelt it in a way that you didn't need to. That doesn't make it super cool and unique or something. The top comment says, hi, I'm a high school teacher. I'll tell you up front that you're right. Kids with messed up spellings of their names are miserable about three quarters of the time. It's difficult to spell, people mispronounce them, and official documents, forget about it. And we definitely judge parents. We don't think their kids' names looking like they just picked 10 random Scrabble tiles out of a box are cute and unique. We think their parents are stupid and immature, like contestants on an early 2000s reality show like Flavor of Love or something. It's one of the ways that we clock parents as potentially difficult. I keep in touch with three students who changed their names from their parents' spelling to the actual conventional spelling the minute they turned 18. That kid will be Juliet Maria as soon as she possibly can be, not the a-hole. Yeah, 100%. I don't feel like they think about the child, and it's also kind of self-serving as well if they're thinking it's going to be super unique. Like, they want people to think that they're unique and fun, but I don't feel like they're thinking about their child. And like the comment under that says, not the a-hole. What people don't seem to think about is that these little babies grow up to become adults. First, imagine having to put Giulietti or whatever on her resume, and then some poor soul has to figure out how to pronounce it if they want to pursue her for employment. She'll spend literally the rest of her life listening to people struggle to pronounce it, and she'll either have to get used to explaining it sounds like Juliet, or she'll legally change it. She's setting her kid up for a life of teasing and judgement, and frustration on her part. Yeah, definitely. Am I the a-hole for refusing to share money that I'll be given, or 
have access to at 18 with my stepsister and half brother. I save a team male will be coming into a large amount of money when I turn 18. This is money that my mom who died when I was 7 and my maternal grandparents accumulated for me since I was born. I won't say the exact amount but it's between 500,000 and a million. The reason it's that much is my grandparents ran a successful business for many years and they sold it 18 months ago and all the money from that sale went to me. Whoa, okay. They kept none of it. My grandparents have control over all of it currently. Before my mum died, she left me in charge of the account where she was saving. She was married to my dad at the time but wanted to secure my future in case anything happened, like dad remarrying and having additional kids. She didn't want to run the risk that once she was gone, her money could be used for somebody who wasn't her kid. My dad knew some money had been saved for me by mum but was never aware of how much or little it was. He also had no idea my grandparents continued saving for me. My grandparents told me about the money over a year ago. They wanted me to prepare for my future and to know I'd have so many options because of the money available to me. They also mentioned it never bringing back my mum but it could alleviate the burden of becoming an adult. So here's the deal. My dad did remarry. He has a stepdaughter 16 and a son 5 with his current wife. They're not wealthy and my dad's wife prepared her daughter to try and work hard for scholarships and financial aid to get into college because she wants to study to become a lawyer I think. My dad had similar conversations with me and had sat me down a few times since I learned of the money's existence to figure out what our plans would be. Eventually I told him that it wasn't going to be a big concern and I told him about the money. He was like what the hell and then he told his wife and they apparently went what the hell together and told me that I could be gracious and split the money when I get it between the three of us and to give the other two a chance to have a decent helping hand with college. I told them I would not be sharing it because it was created by my family, not theirs. Dad's wife argued that it would be incredibly selfish to take such a large amount of money and blow it all on myself when I have two siblings who could also benefit in major ways from it. Well, come on. My dad told me even giving some of it to them, not a full split, but some money, money I have left at the end would be amazing and would help out my family a lot. I told him I wasn't going to. They are so not happy with me. They told me that me being selfish with this is not a good way to be. My dad is also pissed that he continued saving for me and dividing things equally between the three of us when I have so much I'll have access to in a few months. Am I the a-hole? No, I don't feel like you're the a-hole, OP. It seems like that's what your mum saw coming. Like, that's what they were talking about. And they knew that too, and they didn't want that to happen. Yeah, like the top comment says, not the a-hole. Their reaction is exactly why your mum set it up how she did. She knew your dad, and well enough to know that the money would not be yours, and it'd be used for children that are not hers. And OP said, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking after the pressure campaign started. It was like, wow, mum sure did know what could happen, and she was right. Yeah, I don't feel like you're the a-hole, OP. It'd be a lot easier if they didn't know about it. But yeah, you're not in the wrong for keeping it. Yeah, and like this comment says, incredibly selfish to take such a large amount of money and blow it all on myself. You aren't blowing your money. He seems to have the idea that this money would be wasted if it isn't spent on your stepsister and half-brother. And your brother is five. Plenty of time for his parents to save for him, not the a-hole. And now your father knows that he doesn't need to save money for you, so everything he's already saved can be divided between the stepsister and the half-brother. Yeah, definitely OP. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for expecting my wife to do most of the pool upkeep? I, 36 male and my wife, 35 female, purchased our house three years ago. When we were in the market for houses, my wife stated that she explicitly wanted a pool. I didn't really care too much about a pool, but we had a flexible budget, so I guess why not? I requested though, that if we bought one, she would have to do 80% of the upkeep, if not all of it, and she agreed. And fast forward to now, I've done 90% of the upkeep, and my wife had an excuse every time I asked her to help me clean the pool, or check the alkalinity or pH level of the pool. She's always too tired, or she'll do it later. I let it happen the first couple of times, but it's kind of getting frustrating now. But luckily, I have two employees that are extremely helpful. My son, seven male, and my daughter, six female. Very well paid, no complaints so far. Yesterday, my employees were using their time off to go to school. So I got to cleaning, technically draining, but it took long enough that it was just about done by the time my wife got back home. By the time we were heading to bed, I asked her if she could clean it on Saturday or I could help, but she hit me with the, I'm busy. She doesn't work on Saturday. I got kind of upset about it and I told her that she should be doing 100% of the upkeep and I'm gonna stop taking care of the pool from now on. She just told me to stop bluffing and went to sleep. Fast forward to this morning and she doesn't even want to discuss anything pool related or even anything related with me. Am I the a-hole? No, of course you're not the a-hole, OP. Like that was the agreement. It can't get any more straightforward than this. You were like, do you want a pool? Your wife was like, yeah. And you said, okay, are you happy to look after it? And they said, yeah. And now they're not looking after it. Of course you're gonna be annoyed, OP. And if they won't even discuss it with you. Just don't clean it anymore. Let it get all gross. Like we made a deal that this was going to be your responsibility. But what, that goes out the window or something? Yeah, like this comment says, not the a-hole, just stop OP. Tell her it's her responsibility now and she can either
to step up or deal with a dirty pool? Yeah, a million percent. It's just a rude otherwise. Like, oh yeah, I'll say I'm gonna do something, but what, expect you to do it? And I'll never actually do it? Come on, that's disrespectful. The next one is called, am I the gay half for telling my sister-in-law to find another provider? Because I'm not it. My sister-in-law has always called me a disgrace and talked about how men are providers. She's repeatedly told me this and tried to shame me for having a better education and job than my husband. My husband's family are Mexican immigrants and my sister-in-law lives in Mexico and has a Mexican husband. She recently fled the house looking for somebody to stay with. My in-laws live in another state, but my sister with her three children came to us instead. We live in a small house in San Diego that was my grandma's. My in-laws live close to Houston. My husband was not home when his sister arrived and I sent her away. When she showed up on my doorstep, I told her to go find another provider because I'm not it. My husband heard and came home from work and I told him that he had to pay for her hotel and plane tickets out of his money to our in-laws place. He and his family have been pissed at me. His sister has constantly bullied me for over 10 years for dumbass stuff like I'm not making my man a plate. I've never liked her or her ex. I do not want her in my home and I wasn't having it because she has no damn money because of her own stupidity of being a wifey. I refuse to support her and now my husband's family is saying that he should leave me and stay in Houston. I told him he can choose his sister over me and if he's not back in 24 hours I'm throwing his crap on the street and letting the homeless take it. Yeah not the a-hole OP. When did all of this become your responsibility? Yeah this comment you open that door and it'll take a sheriff's order to close it again. Not the a-hole. And this comment too. I've made the mistake of opening my home and wallet for extended family who didn't respect me thinking the olive branch would help. I can't explain why but all it does is make them hate you more and feel entitled to your money. When you eventually want to stop and let them stand on their own feet they become more resentful than they ever were. Hard not the a-hole from me. Letting people who don't respect you as a person into your home is a mistake a hundred percent of the times I've seen it done. If the other option were homelessness for the kids, that's different. But they have family in Houston and they're probably better off there. Yeah, definitely. That's so frustrating. Am I the a-hole for saying you should have thought of that before you procreated? My ex and I have a 13-year-old daughter, Nicole. Nicole has several medical conditions that require a lot of attention. She will need some sort of in-home assistance for the rest of her life. While we have an aid to help a couple of days a week, it is still a challenge. The outcome of Nicole's condition became clear when she was two. My ex and I agreed that we wouldn't have any more kids because it wouldn't be fair to anyone. There'd be no way we could focus attention on two kids. Someone would definitely lose out in this situation. We divorced when Nicole was five. We originally had a 50-50 custody. Three years later, my ex remarried. His new wife, Callie, is nice. My ex did say that she didn't understand the severity of Nicole's condition. I figured there was a learning curve. Eventually, Callie basically said she wanted to be hands-off, which I respected, though I wondered how it would work considering Nicole lives with them half the time. Last year, my ex and Callie had a baby. I was a little surprised given that my ex was always firm on not having more kids, but I figured it wasn't any of my business. He did begin to complain that it was a lot of work juggling Nicole and the baby. I sympathized, but I really did didn't know what else to say. Recently, the venting got worse. He said Kelly yelled at him for taking Nicole to her physical therapy appointment instead of helping her with the baby. He brought up potentially having Nicole stay with me more. I wasn't entirely shocked, but it did piss me off. I said Nicole was his daughter. He can't just abandon that responsibility. He asked what he was supposed to do about the baby. I said, maybe you should have thought of that before you procreated. I mean, really? We discussed this 10 years ago as to why it'd be hard to juggle two kids. Why did you think having another would be a good idea? He got quiet and said, Callie wanted a baby. I said that isn't enough of a reason and maybe he should have thought harder before bringing more life into this world. The conversation ended with me saying that I'd call my lawyer and we could arrange for him to have less custody as I'd rather my daughter be properly cared for than be viewed as a burden. Callie called me that night very upset that I'd made my ex cry and that I said her baby shouldn't exist. I said that's not what I said completely. More that they didn't think about it. She called me a jerk. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole OP. It feels like Callie's upset that you're not taking the baby. Yeah, like the top comment says, I assume Callie had this dream of Nicole magically disappearing over to your place so she and the ex can have just their happy new trio. You're absolutely correct to hold him accountable, especially if Nicole has the mental capacity to be aware that she's being shut out, not the a-hole. Yeah, you were only being honest, OP. Am I the a-hole for telling my mum not to ever invite her friends again for ruining my birthday party? I, 18 female, recently had my birthday. At first, I was just going to have lunch with my friends at a restaurant, but my parents insisted on joining us and 
celebrating it together with us. Even though we were going to celebrate at home as a family anyway. I didn't mind and I told them I'd be happy to have everybody together at the party. It was all going well until my mum told me that she also invited her friends to my birthday party. I didn't want them there because I didn't know them well enough and it was just supposed to be people close to me. But she was stubborn about inviting them so I suggested that we could have two timings. One for my mum's guests and the other for my friends. She agreed to it and it was settled that we'll invite her guests at 12pm while my friends would be there at 2pm. This way I could spend enough time with my friends and also give time to the other guests. On the day of the party none of my mum's guests arrived on time and only by the time all of my friends were there did they start arriving. I was a bit annoyed but I didn't say anything. One of the guests daughter around 6 years old wouldn't leave me alone. She clung to me the entire time. Her parents insisted on having her cut my cake. Oh what? I let her do it since she was just a kid who probably wanted to do it for fun but then she started smashing the cake. No. Is this real? Smashing the cake with her bare hands? Nah surely not. Wiping her snot on the new dress I was wearing which was my birthday gift and even spat on the food? Nah. Please tell me this isn't real. And her parents instead of disciplining their kid stopped the music that my friends and I were playing and played kids music so their daughter could show us her dance. I didn't get to spend a single second with my friends and by the time they left everything was a mess. I still kept my cool and I thanked everybody including those parents for coming to the party. Once everybody left I started crying and I told mum how her guest ruined my birthday and that I hoped I never have to see them again. She took it as me blaming her for everything so she started telling me how ungrateful of a child I am and that I didn't even deserve to have a birthday party. I don't even know what to tell her anymore. Update thank you to everyone for your birthday wishes. My friends and I are planning on hanging out pretty soon and I'm happy that we could have a redo party. No parents or six year olds this time. Many comments asked about my dad's reaction. My dad was against the entire thing when my mum first mentioned inviting her friends but he had to give in since mum was the one paying for most things and there was no winning an argument with her. During the party he was well drunk, very drunk and he didn't realise how big of a mess it was. He still thinks the party went really well. Okay so assuming this one is real, of course you're not the a-hole. Like that's not even a question. I don't understand how anybody there couldn't have felt so bad for you. Like how the hell could any of them be like oh yeah that was a good party. I didn't completely ruin it. Your mum is way out of line here OP. Inviting your own friends to somebody else's birthday party is straight away an a-hole move. Like you don't do that. It's not about you mum. It's your daughter's birthday party not yours you know. Stop thinking about yourself for 10 minutes. I feel like anybody who's going to invite their own friends to somebody else's party is a huge red flag immediately. And yeah those friends absolutely ruined the party. There's no excuse for that OP. And yeah of course you're not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for kicking my brother and his fiance from my house after she made comments on my girlfriend's eating habits? I 30 male have been with my girlfriend Kelly 29 female for 4 years and have known her for 10. Kelly's autistic and one of her biggest problems is food. However since getting together with me she's opened up to a lot of new foods. Just to give an example she wouldn't eat certain vegetables as they are but wouldn't mind having them blended in or cut in small pieces or spirals. Now my brother Kevin 35 male has recently proposed to his girlfriend of 3 years Laura. He mentioned he has some news to announce and will I be okay to host a family dinner at my place since I love cooking. I said it wouldn't be a problem and we've decided on a Japanese theme. Now to the issue. For the main dish I've made ramen including the noodles and broth from scratch. It had to be chicken as Kelly doesn't really like beef or pork and since my mother doesn't eat pork. For Kelly's portion only I've added some extra veggies, zucchinis, carrots, sweet corn and some others since she's not fond of eggs. So naturally her ramen was served without an egg while everybody else had a standard portion which is enough to fill up a grown man. I also made sure there were some snacks on the table like tempura, yakitori skewers, onigiri etc. Well within the first half an hour of her being there Laura kept on picking on Kelly and saying that she can't say that she likes ramen because her version is not authentic. None of us are Asian or have any ties to Asia if it matters which was upsetting to her and it meant that Kelly started to eat significantly slower compared to the rest of the group. It happens when she's getting anxious. Then Laura's tried to grab some of Kelly's ramen to try and prove the point so Kelly freaked out since she really doesn't like sharing food that's already on her plate which resulted in an argument between Kelly and Laura and Kelly crying due to her being overwhelmed. After this weekend I asked my brother and Laura to leave. My parents were absolutely terrified over how Laura behaved towards Kelly and hinted that Laura should apologise. They ended up leaving but later I received a call from Kevin calling me an a-hole for kicking them out and spoiling Laura's pregnancy reveal. He also wasn't happy about our mother scolding him over Laura's behaviour. Well what do you expect dude? Laura's behaviour was bloody awful. Of course people aren't going to be happy about that. Laura sounds mean. The top comment says not the a-hole. Laura kept picking on Kelly. Laura has tried to grab some of Kelly's ramen to try to prove a point. My parents were absolutely terrified over how Laura behaved towards Kelly. Laura's a mean girl. 
Later, I've received a call from Kevin calling me an a for kicking them out and spoiling Laura's pregnancy reveal. Not gonna lie, I think the idea of needing to gather a group and be the center of attention for a personal announcement is pretty bloody cringe in the first place. And somebody said in the comments, how would you prove a point by grabbing Kelly's ramen? And OP said, according to what she said, she wanted to try it as she was still hungry and realized that she doesn't want it as it doesn't even taste authentic. Yes, so frustrating. Oh my God. I'm definitely not a ramen expert, but a lot of people in the comments are saying that it doesn't even make it authentic or not. Like what Laura said wasn't even valid. And yeah, acting like that over ramen. Ugh. And they want you to apologize for kicking them out? Get out of here. That's hilarious. Do actions have consequences? I'm not sure. Like all of this is a result of how Laura acted. It's not a bloody accident that they got kicked out. They shouldn't have been so rude. Yeah, you're not the a-hole OP. Am I the a-hole for writing my parents a check for everything they say I owe them and telling them to shut the hell up and get the hell out? I'm 30 years old and I'm fairly successful thus far. My parents are a huge part of my success. They kept me motivated through school. They gave me a great childhood. They helped me graduate debt free. My mom's contacts helped me land a well-paying job straight out of uni. I am a Nepo kid. Without them, who knows where I'd be? They think this gives them a carte blanche to interfere in my life. They constantly critique everything about my life. I can't think of one aspect of my life they approve of. And I'm not a bad person or anything. It's not like they have a problem with me because I'm a drug addict or working as a sugar baby. They just think they know better about everything. I had them over to my place for my dad's birthday and everything was wrong. My apartment was too small. The stove didn't have precise control of the heating elements and I scorched the sauce. I did not. It was perfect. Just everything. And they kept saying they wanted better for me and that after everything they did for me, I should be doing better. Well, I'm doing well. And because I live the way I do, I've actually done fantastic for the last eight years. So I wrote them a big check and I asked them to hold it up. I took a picture of them with the check. They asked what it was for. I said that was everything they've wasted on me since obviously they think I failed. So I'm giving them a refund. I told them I loved them and that I appreciated their help. But now that they were paid back, they could keep their opinions to themselves and out of my apartment. They got all huffy and left. I heard from my brother that they're pissed that I did that. I don't really care. I just want them to accept that I don't owe it to them to live my life how they want. Yeah, 100% OP. That's an awful situation. Like, yeah, they obviously helped you out growing up, but they're not being supportive and that's not a good parent. Tearing you down about everything isn't going to make anything better. And also, it doesn't even sound like you need to do any better, OP. It sounds like you're doing awesome and they should be proud. The top comment says, not the a-hole. If your parents were actually supportive and loving, they'd encourage you instead of criticizing. It's great that they helped you growing up. That's actually what parents are supposed to do. There's nothing wrong in setting boundaries or expecting to be treated with respect and kindness as an adult. Writing them a check was an inventive way of trying to point out their negative behavior. I'm not sure it'll work to make them understand how their actions aren't reasonable or kind, but it was a better option than losing your temper. Keep your boundaries and live your best life. And if your parents want to be a part of it, they can learn to not be a-holes around you. Yeah, because that's what they're being, OP. Absolute a-holes and for no reason either. Like, yeah, they could easily be positive and supportive, but no, they have to be negative and criticizing. That's super toxic. Am I the a-hole for refusing to name my son after me? My family has a tradition of Oh yeah, here we go. We read about these stupid traditions all the time. My family have a tradition going back six generations in which the firstborn son is named William. My father and I go by our middle names to avoid confusion, whilst my grandfather is known as Bill. It's not that I don't like tradition, it's just that my middle name James is the name I've always been known as, and I always hated being made fun of when I was younger, especially at school when a new teacher would inevitably call out my actual first name when taking the register, and all the other kids would laugh at me for trying to explain that I didn't want to be called that. Now I'm an adult, I know if I wanted to, I could legally change my name by deed poll, but I guess I've just sort of got used to the inconvenience. And at this stage of my life, it's more of a conversation starter than anything else. I also understand that of all the things to be made fun of when younger, it's pretty low down on the list and some people would say I'm just being petty. Anyway, I've recently become a father to a beautiful baby boy and to my family's horror, we've named him Ezra, which both me and my partner love. We've still given him the middle name William, but this isn't good enough for my family who've practically not acknowledged my son's name at all. He's three months old now and whenever they interact with him, he's referred to as Junior or the child. Yeah, families like this suck. All I really want for Ezra is for him to feel like he's his own person, to not feel like there's some kind of burden on him, to live up to any expectations that we might have for him, like I suppose I've always felt somewhat, and to feel comfortable knowing that any decisions he makes, me and his mum will always support him. This is what makes me stand by our decision, but I can't help but feel guilt for breaking the tradition and that there's now a slight rift between me and my family especially my dad. Am I the a-hole for not naming my son William? No, of course not, OP. You're 
You're trying to give your son what you didn't get and you're trying to make sure what happened to you doesn't happen to your son. And that's awesome and that's good parenting OP. And if your family is going to actually make an issue out of this, then they kind of suck. They need to accept the fact that you didn't want to do the tradition and they need to come to terms with it and move on. Like what, are they going to be upset about this for the entire life of your son? Nah. Yeah, no, you're not the a-hole OP. You did the right thing. Am I the a-hole for telling my soon-to-be mother-in-law that I'm marrying her son and not her just after uninviting her to our wedding? I, 28 female, met my fiancé, 28 male, during college and we have a great relationship. Last year we got engaged and we're planning the wedding for this fall while he has an awesome dad and really sweet sisters. His mother is kind of a sore spot for him. She separated from his dad and from what I've heard and witnessed, the family don't get along much with her. If you met her, you'd understand why. She's super judgmental and rude and barely has a nice word to say about her own kids, let alone me. Unfortunately, my fiancé, being her only son and the youngest child, is her blatant favourite. She really wants him to be mama's boy, but he's not that way at all and does a great job of handling her and keeping his distance, which honestly, he prefers. Upon news of our engagement, she was super excited, very uncharacteristically. We then all realised that she was basically wanting to frame the whole day around her. Think everyone should be praising me for birthing this boy? He couldn't even get married without me. From there, the craziness really ramped up. She was coming along with him to tux fittings, trying to plan out the music, even our first dance and getting angry at me for daring to choose a dress that she didn't like. The rest of his family and I were actually beginning to toy with the idea of uninviting her based on this behaviour and as wrong as it kind of innately feels, this is a pretty exceptional case and honestly, her actions were starting to make us dread our own wedding. A further incident a few days later where she told my son she wanted to walk me down the aisle so she could have a moment with her son at the altar made me, my husband and my future in-law snap. We very recently arranged for her to come over to our home where myself and my husband sat her down in the peace and quiet and gently explained to her that we no longer wanted her to attend the wedding. She got really angry and immediately flew off the handle at me and not her son as though I was the one who would influence the rest of the family to uninvite her. My frustration had her boiled over and without shouting I stood up and told her that I wanted her to stop yelling and that she had no right to speak to me as she was. When I realised she was about to blow up again, I cut her off with In case you don't know, I'm the one marrying your son, not you. She didn't say anything else, just snatched up her bag and left. She hasn't spoken to me since, but she's trying to get my son to change his mind. Believe me when I say he will not. She wants an apology from me, and while my husband and the rest of the family don't think I did wrong, I kind of wonder if my comment was unnecessary and whether it would have been better to stay the calm and collected party. I'm just so done with her, and I wanted to let her know exactly how I felt. No, you're not the a-hole OP. The top comment says, I wouldn't care what she thinks. It seems everybody agrees that she should not be at the wedding, so 100% not the a-hole. P.S. You may want to hire security to keep her out. Am I the a-hole for saying that I'll take on more responsibility so that my parents can foster or adopt my special needs cousin? But only until I'm 18 and then I'll be done. My parents have four kids. I'm 16 male, the oldest, and next is my brother Harry, 13 male, and then my sister Jazz, 11 female, and then my younger sister is Amy, 8 female. Harry and Jazz have autism. Neither can talk clearly, but mumbling is the best they've learned, and they were delayed developmentally, so walking came later for them as well. Harry and Jazz are in a special needs school, a private one, because my parents wanted the best chance for them and this place was highly recommended. Both of my parents work longer hours for this and because of the longer hours they work and the aftercare they're paying for Harry and Jazz, it's meant that I've needed to take on some more responsibility and especially with Amy. I take care of her every day after school until our parents come home. That includes cooking and deep cleaning the kitchen after I finish making food for us so that my parents can cook for Jazz and Harry and not risk any issues with the food because both have highly sensitive taste buds and they have limited diets. When Harry and Jazz go for respite or all day therapies, my parents make time for Amy and just Amy. They don't want her to feel left behind or like she doesn't matter. I don't get the same attention. I never did, even when I was younger and things were bad. Amy was always the kid they prioritised time with when they had it, and I had expectations put on me that I would do my best to give her a great childhood. They put a lot of that responsibility for that on my shoulders by the time I was 11. I'm also more responsible for keeping the house clean because of my parents' working hours. Sometimes I'm the only one who cleans in a week and I used to try and get Amy to help out with some light stuff, and my parents told me to let her enjoy her childhood. Recently, my uncle and my aunt died, and my cousin, who also has autism, ended up in foster care. My parents wanted to take him, but they told me that I would need to step up and do more for us to make it work. They even told me how bad my cousin has it in foster care right now. Dad told me that he hasn't found stability since his parents died several weeks ago. So what do they want? Me to take over all of the cooking, for me to do all the grocery shopping, but not with Amy, of course. And they want me to start adjusting to having three kids, two with special needs at times, so they can take one kid at a time to their therapies and appointments. It pissed me off because they also asked me to babysit
did all three special needs kids so they can make a bit more time for Amy because it'll be the hardest on her. I was pissed off so I said sure I'll do it but only until I'm 18 and then I'll be done and they'll never see me again. My parents told me that my anger was unwarranted. Oh no it's not. And everybody has to make sacrifices when a family is dealing with this many special needs kids. Am I the a-hole? No OP you've been completely parentified. It's scary how common stuff like this is. I've seen it where a mum has daughters and the oldest one gets treated like they're pretty much a parent. And yeah that's what your parents have done OP. Like the top comment says not the a-hole. I am sympathetic to your parents to an extent as they're in a tough position. Foster care can be a very difficult situation for children with different care needs but the amount they're trying to put onto you isn't reasonable. You're not an adult and you shouldn't be expected to completely lose the last years of your adolescence. Yeah damn right. And like this comment says I'm so angry for you right now. They expect you to throw your whole life away to look after kids that are not even yours. Not the a-hole. And OP responds and they expect me to be fine with never needing parents. They expect me to be the third parent and adult and make sure that everybody stays afloat while not caring if I do. Yeah that's such an awful situation and I don't really know how you get out of it. Can you show your parents these comments? I feel like they need to read them. But yeah of course you're not the a-hole OP. Post number two is called am I the a-hole for humiliating my daughter by treating her as she's been treating others. My tone is not gonna come off good in this post. I'm extremely disappointed in my daughter ever since she's been at college. She commutes to campus. She used to be such a kind person and now she has this higher and mighty attitude. Anytime somebody asks her for help she'll either be condescending, tell them it's not her issue or straight up call them dumb. I've talked to her so many times and it always results with her telling me that she's an adult. One example is my son asked me for help with an essay. He was learning MLA formatting and didn't understand it. She saw that I was helping him and made comments about him not being the smartest. I shut it down but damage was done. He already has confidence issues with his grades and she knows that. That resulted in an argument. She's taking an art class. It's not going well for her. I can paint and she asked me for help. I told her everything that she's been saying to other people in the home. She started to get really upset when I made a comment about her not being smart. I finished with telling her this is how you make others feel when you do this to them and she's refusing to talk to me. My wife is pissed that I humiliated her and is calling me a ding dong. No you're definitely not OP. Your intent is good OP. You're trying to teach your daughter a lesson about how she treats people. A super valuable one too. You can't live your life treating people like that. If you have a good talk to your daughter and say that you weren't just trying to bully your own daughter but that's why she needs to treat other people better then yeah I feel like you're not the a-hole. Obviously if you just called your daughter dumb and you didn't say anything after that of course that isn't gonna help. The top comment says not the a-hole. Treat others how you'd like to be treated. She learnt that she doesn't like to be humiliated when asking for help in a subject area that she isn't good at. She treated everyone else like that and upset and humiliated her brother. If that's how she thinks people should be treated in that situation then she can't expect anything different if she finds herself in their shoes. I think you taught her a valuable lesson. I hope she learns from it. It does sound like your wife might be partially responsible for her attitude though if she thinks it's okay for your son to be humiliated for no reason but not your daughter who humiliated your son. Yeah that's the thing though. Are they gonna learn a lesson? Because some people don't and they get even more selfish or a holy. Yeah it's a complicated one because two wrongs don't make a right but at the same time she needs to learn that it's not okay to do that and she definitely deserved what you said. Yeah I don't know don't listen to me I'm not a parent. Let me know down below what you think guys. Pretty much everybody on here is saying not the a-hole. Post number three is called am I the a-hole for refusing to pay for cake slices that my teenage daughter ate. I female 38 am a single mum with my teenage daughter Carly female 17. My sister female 36 lives nearby with her husband and two kids, female 9 and male 7. Carly sometimes babysits her cousins on the weekends so that my sister and brother-in-law can go out, usually for 3 to 4 hours. In exchange, my sister gives her 30 to 40 euros, cash in hand. Me and my sister don't make Carly babysit. She volunteers too. She likes having the extra money to fund her Starbucks addiction without a part-time job in fast food or retail. Plus, the kids love getting to see her. I'm glad that she's getting to learn responsibility. I think it's a win all around. Last weekend, there was a problem. A couple of hours after Carly came home from babysitting my sister calls me. It was my niece's birthday two-ish weeks ago and there was some leftover birthday cake in their kitchen. It was a custom made fancy lemon curd cake and I remember at the party a lot of the kids didn't want to eat it so there was a lot left over. While she was babysitting Carly had eaten two slices. My sister said that she should have asked before helping herself to the cake and that it was expensive. I apologized to my sister and I told her that I'd have a word with my daughter. She mentions again that the cake was custom made and expensive and says that we should be compensating her. At first I honestly thought she couldn't be serious but she did want me to give her money because of the cake. I mentioned that surely the cake is going bad soon if it isn't already stale. I said this light heartedly trying to lighten the mood but I made it clear that
that I'm not giving her money. She says she paid 70 euro for the cake and she expects me to give her 20. I told her I'm not doing that. My sister says that I'm being inconsiderate and that my daughter ate the slices without permission. I feel like she's being petty. And what difference would it have even made if all of it got eaten last weekend or at the birthday party? Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay her for the cake? There's a comment here that says change to not the a-hole. The cake was being kept at room temperature in a bread box on the counter. OP must have left some more comments about it. After two weeks, it really isn't even a viable edible item anymore, let alone one with any monetary value. Your daughter's lucky she didn't get food poisoning. Yeah, two week old cake? Nobody should be eating that. Info, where in the kitchen was the cake being kept? And was there any previous understanding in place about your daughter eating leftovers while she's babysitting? Unless the cake was in the freezer at two weeks old, it's well past the point that it should be eaten by anybody. And as a food safety hazard, maybe some food safety education for all parties involved would be appropriate. If it was in the freezer, your daughter should pay for it. If it was frozen, it was clearly being saved for the future. And OP said, it wasn't frozen, it was being kept in the bread bin. And yeah, I agree, it isn't the safest. Eating two week old cake isn't something I've encouraged in my daughter, but she will eat anything. Yeah, you're definitely not the a-hole OP. The top comment says, pay the sister for the two slices of her fancy ass cake, and then tell your daughter that she will not be babysitting her siblings without full and comparable to other sitters compensation ever again, and tell her why. Your sister had the golden goose of babysitters, and she obviously had no idea how good she had it. Emphasis on had. If she wants to nickel and dime you, let's go. And don't bother to give your sister a heads up. She can find out that your daughter will be charging her, oh shall we say what, 20 euro an hour for every hour, or whatever the going rate is, or she can scramble to find an alternative. Your daughter could be making all kinds of money for her Starbucks addiction, working for somebody else, but the bargain that sister had ended when she expected you to fork over 20 euro for stale leftover cake. Not the a-hole. Post number four is called, am I the a-hole for lying to my family for two years that my house purchase deal fell through? A few years ago, my husband and I told our relatives that we wanted to buy a country house by the lake. In our country, almost everybody lives in apartments, so our families were very happy. My mother immediately decided that she wanted to arrange a vegetable garden in the yard of this house. My husband's sister said it would be a great place where she could take her children for the summer. My sister started fantasizing about family picnics. My husband's brother joked that it would be a great place to get drunk on weekends. We were terrified. We didn't want any of this. We wanted to have a place where we could truly feel at home, where we can rest, where we can arrange everything to your taste, where there'll be peace and quiet and not family squabbles, where we can raise our future children. In the end, we decided to tell them that the deal fell through and there would be no house. After all, it's not even their business. We were the only ones buying a house and it has nothing to do with them. We didn't even have to tell them. We only tell the truth to our best friends, whom we were sure would not spoil anything. The house is really beautiful and all my friends and I often go there on weekends. Well, two years have passed and my sister found out about the house by accident because one of my friends posted a photo from there. Now our families are furious and they call us greedy. Many of the relatives don't want to talk to us until we give them the address. My mum even asked for spare keys. This is exactly the hype that we tried so hard to avoid. I don't think we're a-holes, but my husband is starting to hesitate about what we should have done. So outside advice can help us. No, you're not the a-hole OP. You definitely need to set some boundaries with them though. Like this comment says, not the a-hole. Tell your family. Hey, we told you the deal had fallen through because you were all talking like you were entitled to share in our house. This is our weekend home. It's not yours to party in. We're not giving anybody else our keys. And we don't want you to raise a vegetable garden in our backyard. We go there weekends to relax and chill. Sorry that we lied to you, but your reaction right now says that we were exactly right not to tell you that we'd bought our house. No, we will not give you the keys, the address, the location, or an invite. And install cameras in case they find it. Yeah, why are they acting like this? And yeah, definitely don't give your mum any keys. You're definitely not the a-hole OP, but you are going to want to talk to them about this. You're going to have to set some boundaries and say, like, listen, this is our house. You guys can't be acting like this. They definitely need to know. Post number five is called, am I the a-hole for ruining my brother-in-law's reputation by telling my friends the truth? My in-laws are currently furious with me for hurting my brother-in-law's feelings and reputation with my friend group. Recently, my single brother-in-law, Chris, 38 male, has been hinting at me to introduce him to women and I've refused. And he's been having a hard time meeting women. He tried flirting with my friend, but she had been cold and non-receptive. This was my friend Grace, 35 female. Grace is not interested in him due to his inability to be faithful and she wasn't physically attracted to him. He tried to flirtatiously engage with her during a small party my husband and I had last Saturday. My husband got a long-awaited promotion so we had a little party. During the party, Grace had grown frustrated with his incessant flirting and at some point told him in no uncertain terms that she found him physically ugly and that his physical ugliness is only surpassed by the ugliness of his character. She told him this in private and so 
no other guest had heard her scathing review of his personhood, Chris left the party. The following afternoon while my husband and I were nursing a wicked hangover, my in-laws to my surprise called to scold me for having abused and embarrassed Chris. After a few minutes of us shouting back and forth on the phone, I reminded my husband that handling his family was his job, so while my husband argued with his parents, I reviewed our security cameras. And honey, Grace verbally tore him apart. Grace reminded him that he cheated and divorced his late ex-wife Lily while she was battling cancer, and that he then got dumped by the mistress for being a cheater as he continued to cheat on her. Grace told him that he wasn't a man of any significant value other than the few coins that he had in the bank, and that there's no way in hell that she'd entertain his delusions of sexual grandeur and beauty. She also said the only thing he had going for him was his overbloated job title as an executive director to a third-rate company that will probably collapse in the next five years. As a parting gift, she told him to consider some cosmetic work to improve his haggard appearance, and perhaps to start praying for divine intervention to fix his rotten soul, since there's no way a psychotherapist could ever come close to fixing whatever's wrong with him. My in-laws and Chris feel that I shouldn't have told my friends what Chris did, because he's now perceived by my girlfriends as a terrible person. I told them that he was unfortunately a terrible person, and people would have always found out what happened between him and the late great Lily. I then discussed what happened with my colleague Natasha. She said I was cruel for having told my friend group about what happened between Chris and his ex-wife, because Chris had grown a lot in the past two years, and didn't need to be known for the worst thing that he's ever done. Natasha is dating Chris's friend, so she also knows him. FYI, I've only discussed Chris's treatment of Lily with my direct friend group, and that's only six people, and half of them already knew as they were also friends of Lily. So it's not like I'm screaming, hear ye, hear ye, in the town square. No, you're not the a-hole OP. It's not like you're making stuff up about Chris. You're telling the truth. Like the top comment says, not the a-hole. How can telling the truth be perceived as unfair? Chris did this to himself. It was his behavior that's the problem. Why should you expose your friends to a potentially horrific relationship? You know that your brother-in-law's a cheater, but your in-laws want you to keep that from your friend so he can continue to take advantage? What, without consequences? I think you did the right thing. Like, yeah, you're looking out for your friends, OP. Like the comment under that one says, truth is an absolute defense to defamation. Not the a-hole. What kind of friend would you be if you didn't warn your friends about his cheating? If he's grown, then he can prove it. You don't owe him any setups, much less ones that you've been lied to by omission. Yeah, 100%. Post number six is called, am I the a-hole for getting my neighbor and client banned by all the local babysitters after they tried to renege on a deal? Over the holidays, I, female 17, got a chance to go to the Caribbean with my neighbors as their nanny. My parents weren't thrilled, but it was after Christmas, so they let me go. The deal was pretty simple. It was 10 days at an all-inclusive resort. I'd share a room with the kids and take care of them for seven days and nights. In return, I got $500 and three days to myself. The rooms were adjoining. I think that's the right word. A door joined them. My parents insisted I get everything in writing so there were no mistakes. Basically, we agreed that I would work two days and take one day off, over and over. No problem, I thought, and I checked out the included activities and any excursions I might like. On my third day off, I'd planned to go scuba diving. I got up early and I went on my excursion. When I got back, the parents were mad that I'd left without any warning. I reminded them that we had a deal, and they said that they'd met another couple there, and they were going golfing, and that I screwed up their plans. I don't know why they made plans on one of my free days. They were upset all the way home. When we got back, they posted about how irresponsible I was. One of the other families called me to get my side of the story. I sent them a picture of the deal we agreed on. They said that they knew I wouldn't do what I was being accused of. And then they started commenting on the post by my neighbors. My parents did this also. But I think everybody thought they were just protecting me. So now it's a big deal and everybody knows that they tried to change our deal without talking to me. Some of the other babysitters or their parents are now saying that they won't babysit for my neighbors anymore. I feel bad about it because they paid a lot for my vacation. And if they had asked, I probably would have switched my excursion to the last day. Anyway, they're upset that I knocked, which I didn't. They said that I could have talked to them if I had a problem, but I'm not the one who made it public. Yeah, exactly, OP. It's not your fault. That's so bloody frustrating. You're for sure not the a-hole. They get wrongly upset at you, and then they take it to Facebook and it backfires on them. That's 100% their fault. It's probably saved a whole bunch of headaches on the babysitters too, like by not babysitting for them in the future. If they're gonna be acting like this, why would you want to babysit for them anyway? Also, kind of childish that they just go and post stuff on Facebook about it. The top comment says not the a-hole. You made an agreement in writing which they insisted on. They wanted to renegotiate the terms of your agreement so it's down to them to discuss that with you at an appropriate time. Not on the day they wanted to switch. Even then you would have still been completely within your rights to decline their request as per the original agreement. You did nothing wrong. You stuck to what was agreed. They then decided to defame you on social media over this. There's literally no other reason for them to make their annoyance public other than to shame you. Fortunately for you it backfired on them and now as a consequence of their
their second mistake. They've gotten themselves blacklisted by other sitters. Do not feel bad for them. You reap what you sow and you certainly have. This is not your responsibility in the slightest. I just hope you got your $500. Yeah, very good point. Don't feel bad for them, OP. This is not your fault. And yeah, that's right. They were trying to shame you on Facebook. They suck, OP. Post number seven is called, Am I the a-hole for telling my friend that our daughters are no longer doing homework together and her kids' grades are hers to manage? My daughter has a best friend named Sarah. They're both in fourth grade. The two girls would do their homework together at the school's after program. School ended at 2.30 and I would pick my kid up at about 4 so they had time to do work. The issue started when I got a call from the teacher about cheating. Both girls' homework were identical. Even any sentence questions were word for word. I explained that the girls do their work together and she made it clear that this isn't helping and it's basically copying at this point. She can't tell if either girls is struggling from the homework but she knows one girl is due to test scores. She told me she's going to talk to the other parent also. I informed my daughter that she needs to do her homework by herself, that she can do it by herself after school or play and will do it when she gets home. She decided to do it by herself. It's been two weeks of this and overall seemed fine. The other girl's parent confronted me today. She asked why the girls were not doing work together. I explained the cheating situation and I thought that the teacher talked to her. She told me that they weren't cheating and just helping each other out, that her daughter's math score has gone down since then. I informed her the kids are no longer doing work together and her kids' grades are hers to manage and if she is struggling now then she needs to deal with it and she called me an a-hole. No, you're not the a-hole, OP. Am I the a-hole for telling all of my friends and family why my vacation home is off limits now? Unless they rent it. I rent out my house through a service that includes insurance when it's in use. The insurance does not cover when I lend my house out to friends and family, since they're not paying. I have regular homeowners insurance for that. My brother was using my house with his family just after New Year's. It's a slow time and I wasn't going to lose out on much income. My nephew stayed up late one night and didn't go out for breakfast with his family, so he decided to make himself some food. He started a kitchen fire and he freaked out and and called 911 instead of using the fire extinguisher in the kitchen. He's 14, so I can't blame him too much. The smoke damage will cost about 8,700 to fix. I told my brother he could take his time paying me back. He said he wasn't going to pay for an innocent mistake. I needed the house in order, so I just fixed everything. I didn't go through insurance since I didn't want my rates to go up. I was obviously upset, so I posted about the fire and how pissed I was at my brother. Pretty much all of my friends and family took the side of the innocent angel. They said it was unfair for me to expect that much money from him when he could have rented a hotel for a quarter of the price so I agreed. I said that from now on my house will be off limits unless they rented it out or I was there and they came as my guests. Since I only use the house with my family that means they can rent it all or use the only empty bedroom. It has a twin bed and a crib. Now the howling started that I'm being unfair to them for something that wasn't their fault. I offered to take up a collection from them to cover the repairs or the increased insurance premiums and most of them shut up. I directed them all to my brother. He got quite angry at me for blaming him for the situation. I said I wasn't about to send a mob after my nephew. I bought the house after I got a settlement from a worksite accident. I used the income to supplement the difference in what I used to earn at my job and what I do now. So I guess my question is, am I the a-hole for telling everybody who has a problem with me charging rent or stuffing a family into a room meant for two small children to talk to my brother about it? No, you're not the a-hole OP. And like this comment says, not the a-hole. If the kid can't be blamed for starting a fire, then the dad has to be blamed for leaving the kid unsupervised because obviously he isn't ready to handle emergency the family's angry because their free ride is over. Tell them that you can't afford the risk involved in giving away rental time for free. Yeah, and they're not taking responsibility for it. And that's not your fault, OP. Imagine if they went and stayed somewhere and they did that. And they were like, no, I'm not responsible. It was an accident. Of course you're responsible. And yeah, I feel like it's completely fair that you said that they have to rent it out in the future. And you're not just going to let them stay there for free anymore. Yeah, not the a-hole, OP. Am I the a-hole for moving out instead of sharing a living space, which is causing a problem for for my mum and her boyfriend. My dad passed away when I female 16 was like three. We lived in a house that my grandparents own and they agreed to let my mum and I live there rent free. Over the years, whenever my mum dated, I tried to spend the nights that she had guests over at my grandparents' house. When I was 10, my grandfather renovated the basement to make me my own kind of apartment. I have my own bathroom, kitchen and living room to go with my bedroom. My mum met a guy last year and it got serious. He moved in with his two kids, which is fine by me. My mum deserves to be happy and have somebody in her life. There are three bedrooms 
bedrooms upstairs, so it's perfect. One for them and one for each of his kids. Everything was going according to plan until the kids asked where I was staying. I said I lived in the basement. They made a joke about me living in my mum's basement. I invited them down to play Mario Kart to be sociable and to show off that I'm being completely honest. I have a couch my uncle gave me and my dad's old lazy boy in the living room. The recliner is only for me and all my friends know that. The kids started complaining that it wasn't fair that I got all of this room to myself. One tried sitting in my chair even after I told her that it was only for me. I settled that immediately. It's mine. After a few races where I demolished them, I said it was time for them to go back upstairs. They said no. I called my mum to come get them. Over the course of the next week, my mum started hinting that maybe my living room should be a common area. I said no. She started insisting. I said no. She has a key to my door. I never locked my door unless she had guests. I did start locking it when Dan and his kids moved in. I came home from school and I found the kids in my living room. They had also gone into my room and they were eating my snacks that I pay for myself. I yelled and I told them to get the hell out. I called for my mum to explain why they were there. She said that she decided that it wasn't fair that I got almost a third of the house to myself and that my TV and gaming system should be shared. I said F that. She got really upset with me and said it was a done deal so deal with it. My grandfather and my uncles came and got me and all the things that matter to me including my recliner. He told my mum that she needed to start paying rent if I wasn't going to be living there. I have a bedroom at my grandparents house but I miss my area. My mum is trying to get me back so they can save money to get their own place. Yeah right. I'm not that dumb. She said that I need to stop being a brat and behave like an adult. I said I was living like an adult until you let those kids into my area without permission. She tried to say that she could do whatever she wanted in her house. Sometimes I think she forgets it wasn't my dad's house and she didn't inherit it. I feel a little guilty about this because my mum is actually pretty cool and I hate that this is causing a strain on her relationship. Am I the a-hole? Edit, after talking to my grandparents I do have something to add. They were not happy about her moving her boyfriend and his kids in. They were gonna allow it since I lived there still. Them coming into my space and my mum saying that I had to share it did not go well with them. That's why they wanted to charge her rent. Especially after I moved out. No, you're not the a-hole OP. It's not your mum's house. It's your grandparents' house. It's not your mum's decision. And like OP said at the end there, the grandparents are gonna start charging her rent. Like, yeah, it's not her house. The top comment says, not the a-hole. I'm glad you're standing firm. Because your mother has absolutely no right to your living area, all your things, all your snacks, etc. They were provided to you from your grandparents, not from her. Unfortunately, some people can't be reasoned with and you've found out. You're probably gonna find yourself going low contact when you're an adult. That's okay. You can love her from a distance and not become the person who supplies the deficits in her life. She's an adult. She should pay her own way, not steal from her daughter. The next one is called, Am I the A-hole for announcing to my brother-in-law and his friends that my partner and I are going to have the horizontal mumbo? My partner and I bought a lovely house that's great for hosting get-togethers. Most of the time, we invite friends and families, mainly friends now. Earlier this week, my brother-in-law asked if we could host a get-together at our place since a friend is visiting the state and he wanted to give his friend a house tour. Just a disclaimer, I really dislike having my brother-in-law over because he doesn't respect boundaries. We ask us not to go into our bedroom and my office, but he goes in both because quote-unquote he was looking for our cats or he wanted to check the place out. This man is 11 years older than us. My partner and I barely had time for each other due to our busy work schedules and this weekend we were looking forward to us time. My partner said he didn't really want people over and I said the same. My partner texted back, we can't, sorry, we're busy this weekend. Brother-in-law kept on pushing and calling and asking why we couldn't make time and he claims it's only going to be a few hours and this friend rarely visits the state that we live in. My partner just kept replying that we're busy. He keeps asking what we're doing and why we're busy. Yeah, I can already tell you're not the a-hole OP. That's so frustrating. Saturday evening, we're relaxing and playing video games in the living room. Brother-in-law calls my partner, says that they're outside dropping by really quick. Oh, get the hell out of here. <laughs> How bloody annoying can you be? My partner says that we're busy. Brother-in-law argues, seeing us from the window, that we're just playing video games. More arguing. My partner hangs up and aggressive knocking follows. We go and open the door and there are seven other people with him. They had alcohol and snacks. Oh my God, this brother-in-law is a nightmare. You're gonna end up putting a bloody restraining order on them. This is so aggravating. This is a common issue between brother-in-law and us. What do you mean? They've done this more than once? No way. I'm fed up with this and I kind of just asked what they're doing here and that we can't hang out tonight because we had plans to relax. Went on a tangent about our busy weeks while they stood out in the cold. I ended the conversation with, we plan to have the horizontal mumbo tonight and we don't want people around while we're at it. We already told him that we're busy. He wants details. Here, we're having horizontal mumbo all night. Good night, stay warm. Well, brother-in-law talked to father-in-law. Now I'm getting calls and texts on how crude and rude I am. Oh, get out of here. And how 
how I have no decency, my partner doesn't care how I handled it, and understands I'm sick and tired of brother-in-law. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole, but I feel like your brother-in-law still isn't gonna get the message. They sound like an infuriating sort of person. Like, is this a funny movie or something? And OP said they were sick and tired of this, as in like they do stuff like this a lot. If it was me and it was my house, I wouldn't even want him in my house after the first time, let alone they do stuff like this a lot. Oh, take a hint. Of course you're not the a-hole, OP. Like, that's so unbelievably disrespectful. How would you even want to associate with a person like this? And yeah, there's no excuse for acting like this. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to follow my sister-in-law's rules for her wedding and saying that her insecurities aren't my fault? My female 27, brother male 34, and his fiance female 31 are getting married soon. My husband and I got an invitation. All fine. However, this is the problem I'm having with them. I'm not a bridesmaid or in the bridal party because I have a baby, and I was either pregnant or with a newborn during most of the wedding planning. It was for the best, so I'm just a regular guest as everybody else, right? Well, my brother and his fiance came over a few days after they sent their invitation because they wanted to talk to me. My future sister-in-law basically told me that she's gotten a dress for me and she'll love me to wear it for the wedding. I was kind of like, okay, thanks, but why? You know, at first she didn't want to tell me why they've chosen a dress for me. But finally, she told me that I tend to draw too much attention to me. Last year, our other brother got married and my sister-in-law thinks that she doesn't want to risk having me show up similarly to their wedding. By the way, I wasn't wearing an inappropriate dress or white or anything like that. It was a normal formal dress. I was super confused by this and I asked her what she meant because as I said, I know how to dress up for a wedding. I reassured her that she shouldn't worry about being outshined because for starters, it's her wedding day and everybody's going to be paying attention to the bride and the groom. And secondly, I won't wear an inappropriate dress like too much cleavage or something. Her family is rather conservative. So I thought maybe she was more scared of her family's reactions. We discussed this for a while and she told me that the problem is my weight. She's a little overweight and I'm not. I've always had problems gaining weight, even while pregnant. So she feels insecure and that's why she wants me to wear a dress that would cover me completely. This is where I think I might be the a-hole. I told her that her insecurities were not my problem and that it was weird to ask me to wear a certain dress just because I'm skinnier than her. She told me that she knew I'd have this reaction because supposedly I always want to be the focus of attention. She also said that my life has always been easier and it's not fair that I want to steal her wedding day as well. Oh no, that's an awful attitude. People who think that everybody else has an easier life than them. That's a bad attitude and I can do that to anybody ever. And yeah, that's not your fault, OP. I asked her if she was doing this with every other woman who was skinnier attending the wedding and she said no. So I told her that's a crappy move. We argued and then my husband and brother got in between us and they argued as well. And finally we kicked them out, but not before I told them to enjoy their damn day because I wasn't attending their wedding, for which they accused me of being a drama queen and wanting to embarrass them by not going. Wow, so you're a drama queen? Well, I'm more calm and this has caused quite a fight in our family as well. I admit that I was so tired and stressed that day because my baby had been sick all the prior day and night. So I don't know, do you think I exaggerated here? Or were they truly rude to ask me something like this? No, you're not the a-hole OP. There's definitely some red flags here. Like their jealousy for one. And also this mindset where they think their life is a lot harder and saying that you've always had an easier life. Having an attitude like that can become a huge downward spiral. Like you should never make stuff like that a competition. But you see it a lot. People are like, oh, my life is harder than yours so your problems don't matter. And because I have a hard life, that means that your life is immediately easy. Like that's not how that works and let's not make it a competition, you know? But yeah, I feel like you saying that you're not gonna go to the wedding was a good move. And no, I don't feel like you're the a-hole OP. The top comment says not the a-hole and I agree with your decision not to attend the wedding. Sister-in-law can give any explanation for why you're not there, but I would definitely answer honestly if anybody asked why you didn't attend. Yeah, for sure not the a-hole. Also, I can't even remember the last time that we read a post and it turned out to be an a-hole. Have you guys also noticed that? They're all not the a-hole. I suppose that's a good thing though. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for defending myself against my sister-in-law who was upset that we waited to tell her that we were expecting and also waited until our son was born to announce his name. My husband, 42 male and I, 41 female, tried to have children for 13 years before we accepted that we were never going to have it happen for us. We spent a lot of time hoping and trying different things and nothing worked. I was 35 when we decided to come to terms with our life as a child-free couple. We sold our house, downsizing considerably and we started changing how we lived our life. We devoted so much time to preparing to be a family with children that we didn't really know what we wanted now that it was no longer in the cards. Then just after my 40th birthday, I discovered I was pregnant. It was a huge shock and what was even more surprising was the baby was healthy when I went for my first scan, but I was afraid. We both were, so we waited until I was 
18 weeks to tell people. I didn't really show it until I was about 21 weeks, so that made it easy to hide. We announced and people were thrilled for us. All our siblings already had children who were 9 and older, so this was the first baby born into the family in a while. We got asked about names and whether we'd have a name reveal, or a baby shower with a name reveal. We decided to keep the name to ourselves until he was born. Something special and a surprise for people. Most people understood, but it came to our attention recently that one of my husband's sisters, sister-in-law, was not happy about any of this. I'm sorry, but who cares? Why should they be upset about that? She didn't like that we kept the pregnancy to ourselves for a while and disliked it even more that we didn't share the name. Wow, talk about making an issue out of nothing. She brought this up at Christmas for the first time and surprised the whole family. She brought it up to my husband on three separate occasions after it and then she brought it up to me four days ago. She told me that we left our families out when this was just as big of a deal for them as it was for us. She said everybody had wanted us to have a baby too and how could we cut them out like that? She also claimed that we could have gotten feedback and blessings from the family members on his name, which is Hawthorne for people who will ask. I told her that the news came as such a surprise and we worried and we wanted to come to terms and get to what we felt was a safe point before telling people. She argued that we needed our family if something went wrong. Then she said there was still no excuse for the name, that the name was kind of odd and she would have liked us to pick a more classic name. Oh my god. Oh, get out of here. Like James or George. I told her I understood that everybody had their own taste, but we were getting one chance to name a child and one chance to experience parenthood and we wanted to make the most of it. You're being way too polite, OP. Your sister-in-law can take a hike. It is not up to them. And the audacity for them to get upset about this and to say that she would have liked a different name. Come on. I said we never did it to hurt anybody, but we wanted to do what felt right to us. She told me that was what my husband said and it was lame, especially to defend myself that way when it was something that the whole family are experiencing. She told me that we just wanted to leave everybody out and we should have known better. Am I the yay-hole? The people in the post today have been so frustrating. Like the top comment says, not the yay-hole. Your sister-in-law is a giant a-hole. While it is great for your family that you got pregnant, it is in no way happening to them. This is your experience and after years of trying and eventually giving up to find out that you were actually pregnant, that would have been incredibly hard to come to terms with, especially to get to a place where you were comfortable enough to tell anyone. I only started announcing my first around 18 weeks because I was so worried something would go wrong and I had no history of issues. Everything you did was completely understandable. Your sister-in-law is a control freak who seems to think that her opinion is the only right one. No decent person would ever comment negatively on someone's child's name. I absolutely love the name by the way. Congratulations on your son. Yeah, control freak who seems to think that her opinion is the only right one. That's a really good way of putting it. But yeah, once again, not the a-hole. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for kicking my roommate out and tossing his stuff into the trash after finding out he messed with my food. I, 24 male, have shared an apartment with Andrew, 25 male, for a year. We found this place through some friends and honestly, everything was pretty chill until this whole thing went down. My name is on the lease and Andrew would just spend me his half of the rent. We never had any formal contract between us. We were having dinner with some friends and we were drinking, chilling and having fun. One of our mutual friends made a joke about me being very tidy and Andrew being very chaotic in terms of our rooms and cleaning habits and stuff like that. Our friend asked us if that was a usual problem for us. So for some reason, Andrew decided to mention that whenever I'd get too annoying about cleaning the apartment or whatever, instead of fighting, he would go and spit in my food. Straight out spitting. We were all laughing it off, but then Andrew went to the kitchen and demonstrated how easy it was to just take out one of my prep meals for the week, open it and spit on it. He did it right there in front of us. We were still laughing, but in a what the hell is happening kind of way. After our friends left, Andrew tried to play it off, asking if I'm okay with what he admitted and apologized for it, but I could sense that he was dead serious. We ended up having a heated argument and I was furious. I told him he needed to find another place to stay and he stormed off to his room slamming the door behind him. The next morning he heads off to the gym and in the meantime he sends me this long apology text but when I didn't respond right away he loses his cool again saying that he doesn't regret it and even cracks this disgusting joke about messing with my food suggesting that I avoid eating my ice cream because it's flavoured now. Ew! Just the thought of it made my stomach turn so I wasted no time. While he was out, I gathered up his belongings and I tossed them in the trash. Some of my friends think I went too far by throwing away his stuff. But honestly, it felt like my only option. I couldn't bear the idea of having him around after that. Honestly, I'm kind of embarrassed to tell the full story to most of my friends and family, especially my mutual friends. I just tell them we've had a fight. So I've been called an a-hole on more than one occasion. Plus, I'm not the best at getting jokes either. Am I the bad guy here? Um, them spitting in your food is not a joke, OP. That's not you not getting the joke. 
like, that's disgusting. And yeah, of course you're not the a-hole. Ope said in the comments here, okay, after reading through all the comments, it's clear that I messed up. When I said only option, I meant that I didn't really want to keep talking to him, not even through texting. His ice cream joke was implying other fluids as well, which was too gross for me to handle or even respond to. Oh God, I didn't realize that. So at that moment, asking him to leave was the only way I could think of to end it and convey that he needed to find another place to stay without further discussion. I want to emphasize that Andrew did retrieve all of his belongings. I placed everything in the trash cans outside during the daytime, so his items weren't taken by the garbage truck. I don't believe he intends to take legal action because one of our mutual friends said that he told her that we weren't on bad terms. Looks like I owe him an apology then. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't feel like you should apologize still. That was revolting what they did. Yeah, no, I don't feel like you're the a-hole OP and I don't feel like you need to apologize. Yeah, like the comment under it says, I don't think you owe him an apology. Just leave it at no contact. Am I the a-hole for demanding my house guest to pay me for what she drank? I, 29 female, was asked by a friend, 27 female, that I went to university with if she could stay a few days at my place on her vacation. She came a couple of days ago and also brought her sister, 31 female, which was fine with me. Her sister declined going out for dinner with us and wanted to stay in. That was fine and we left and we went out to eat. Well, turns out her sister is a recovering alcoholic and wasn't coping that well being in a different place. We come home a few hours later and I found out that she got drunk and raided my liquor cabinet for whatever she could find. She ended up drinking my very expensive gin, 300 US dollars, that was given to me by my dad. It's not something I ever would have offered a guest. When she woke up the next morning, I told her that she needed to pay me for that. I didn't even open it. She started freaking out saying it was a mistake and that she couldn't afford the rest of her trip if that's what it really cost. I told her that she technically stole it from me and that she needed to pay me for it. My friend from uni says that her sister is struggling in recovery, but they really can't afford to compensate me without it ruining their trip. Yeah, that's not OP's fault. I asked them to leave and they were both very upset about it. While I do understand that it was a moment of weakness, I still think she needs to pay me for it. If she broke it by accident, that would be a different story. Am I the a-hole for wanting her to give me the money for it? Edit, thank you everyone for making me not seem like a monster. I requested the money and her sister sent me an e-transfer. We weren't super close, but we met up from time to time. It wasn't a friendship that I'm necessarily devastated over this happening. Am I the a-hole because I laughed my ass off when my mum told me that her rumba fell into the pool? I'm on the phone with her as she's in her winter residence in Florida, in brackets Snowbird, and telling me that she was cleaning the house and left the screen door open. And I'm like, where are you going with this? Because my mum kinda rambles a bit with stories that go nowhere. And then she says the rumba was missing and she found it at the bottom of the pool. That completely caught me off guard and I'm howling with laughter. And my mum is like, it's not funny, that's a $400 machine. No, 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 that's super funny. And so how that made it even funnier and she's not making it easy for me because she's describing that apparently it didn't die right away and for a minute the little brush things were still going around like it was trying to dog paddle its way out of there so my mummy's angry that the rumba wasn't built with some sort of safety device in case it falls into water like what flotation bags are supposed to pop out of it like chitty chitty bang bang or something and at this point i'm in literal tears from laughing so hard so mum's angry the rumba is dead and i'm probably not invited to easter dinner no that's bloody ridiculous i what sort of a reaction was your mum trying to get out of you if not a funny one? That's hilarious and the way they said it was also funny. And if your mum can't see the humour in that, that's on her. That's not your fault. The top comment says not the a-hole. Let her be angry and send a condolences note for the dead rumba. Edit. Buy a new rumba for Easter saying that it's been resurrected, its name is Jesus and it's seen the light. Yeah, that's a wonderful idea. But yeah, you're not in the wrong OP. If you're telling somebody a story about how your rumba fell in the pool, you should be expecting the other person to laugh. So yeah, definitely don't feel like you were an a-hole. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for coming to dinner basically topless? I've dreaded posting for a while because I'm afraid I might be the a-hole, but I just gotta know. So here goes. My parents-in-law and brother-in-law came to visit and stay for a month with my husband, 27 male and I, 28 female, after I had my baby. For context, if it makes any difference, I'm German. Husband and his family are Italian. The baby was three months old at the time and I breastfeed her. Usually, I just nurse on the couch in the living room, but because company was staying, I'd go to my bedroom. After I nursed her, she'd fall asleep and take a nap and I'd have some free time. Since family was visiting, I tried to plan her naps around our meal time so I could spend time with family uninterrupted. My mother-in-law has this thing that when food is on the table, you be there pronto. Sometimes I'd be late to come into a meal because babies can be unpredictable and she wouldn't fall asleep right away or nurse longer than normal. To this, my mother-in-law would barge into my room and announce that food was ready, all impatient. This startled the baby and made the process last much longer than it should have. 
life. The result is I had to eat much later than everybody else. Alone and the food was cold. More work to do with the baby and I'm secluded. This happened several times. I asked my husband to talk to her and explain I can't always come on time. He talked to her but she still did all this anyway. So I simply decided to stop being late to the dinners. The next time she barged in my room and announced that the food was ready. I came without any hesitation. I came to the table exactly how I was. No shirt, half a bra and a baby hanging off me. Nothing was seen as the baby was covering up everything anyway. But still, in shoe the uproar. Go something like this. Mother-in-law exclaims, what the hell I'm doing at the table like this? I'm indecent. There are men at the table. I should be ashamed. I yell back, what the hell does she keep calling me to the table for if I'm not ready yet? I have no reason to be in my room alone with my baby while everybody else is out having a great time together. Brother and father-in-law are trying not to get in on the argument. My husband ushers me back to my room and scolds me. Taking his mother's side? Oh, dude, what? He means he gets I'm frustrated, but this action didn't help anything. But after that, mother-in-law didn't bother again while I was busy with the baby. So what if I came to some meals a little later than everybody had started eating? The roof didn't cave in. The end. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole, OP. The top comment says, not the a-hole, a well-placed piece of malicious compliance. Yeah, that's 100% what it is. Like, oh, you want me to come out right now? Okay. Like, what the hell is the mother-in-law doing barging into your room and treating you like that? All that shows is they have a complete lack of awareness. Maybe this isn't the time and maybe it's not a huge deal to not get to the table right now. So ridiculous and you're not the a-hole OP. And also, like a lot of Am I the A-hole posts that we read, the husband is not helping even a little bit. Am I the a-hole for cancelling our anniversary trip because my husband drowned my... Okay, I can do this. <laughs> for some reason, I have an issue with reading words like this. Terrarium. I-29 female travelled across the country to visit a company regarding an incredible job offer. I spent two days touring the company to decide if it would be the right fit for me. After years of self-employment, after meeting with the company, I visited my sister, 32 female, and her family a few towns over. We barely get to see each other because of work and distance, so it was wonderful to spend a few days with her and the family and her new baby. I was going for a total of eight days. When I returned home, I was excited to spend time with my husband, 33 male, and tell him about the trip, my visit with my sister, my impression of the city, etc. We were meant to be celebrating our anniversary and decided to put off the discussion about whether or not I should accept the job offer until after our anniversary getaway. I had arranged for us to go on a luxury train ride because he's a big train enthusiast and we were meant to leave the trip three days after I got home. This is when the problem started. I have a very large closed bioactive terrarium which I made with my mother 15 years ago. It's one of my favourite things I have of her from before she passed. This terrarium is my pride and joy and has come with me everywhere since we planted it. It was always super healthy and beautiful and if only ever had to open it up four times to do a little bit of maintenance and watering. My husband knows all of this, which is why I don't understand why he decided to tamper with it in my absence. I didn't notice the night I got home because I was exhausted, but the next morning I went to check on the terrarium to find it in a terrible state. The roots were rotting and the plants dying and molding. He told me that the day I left he poured a few cups of water into the vessel and sealed it again. I was so mad I cried and it turned into a huge argument because it's just a plant and all you do is look at it anyway. He called me ungrateful and overdramatic and that I should appreciate that his intention was to help me and that he didn't ask because he didn't want to bother me on my trip. I ended up cancelling our anniversary plans, partly because I was so upset that I didn't want to go and partly because I wanted to try and salvage the plants and that would require time. He hit the roof when I told him and he's now sleeping in a separate room and refusing to speak to me because according to him, I'm being petty and trying to destroy our marriage. Am I being oversensitive about my plans? My friends are pretty evenly split and have pointed out that he was just trying to be thoughtful, however misguided it was. Yeah, I'm not convinced that they were trying to help. That's what people say when they don't want to get in trouble for something. You see stuff like that in situations all the time. Like, oh, I was only trying to help. No, you weren't. You knew what you were doing. Yeah, the top comment, not the a-hole, and I doubt your husband was trying to help. Firstly, if you've opened it a few times, then he knows it doesn't get watered that often. Secondly, he knows how much it means to you, so should know that you would have taken care of it before you went, or would have left very detailed instructions. Also, how big is it? Would a few cups of water have been way too much, even if he was just being helpful? The you just a look at it comment is also strange. That's what everyone does with their plants. And OP said, I've literally never had to open it or water it in the time that we've been together. And even when I did water it in the past, it's never required more than a few tablespoons of water. I've talked about it before, but he clearly forgot. Yeah, no, I don't think they were trying to help OP. And you're not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for telling my mum that we don't view her eldest as our brother and she needs to stop forcing him on us? I, 28 male, am the youngest of three. Though if you asked my mother, she'd say four. Prior to my eldest brother Christopher's birth, my parents had another baby that was 
born still. His name was James. My parents consistently talked about him. He was included in family portraits, where one of us held the only picture that we have of him. Christmas cards, etc. He was mentioned at every single big event. My brothers and I have tried to tell our parents that we're uncomfortable with the picture, as it is morbid to us, as well as we don't want it included all the time. My mum always insists and tells us that James is family. She also gets upset if I refer to Christopher as my eldest brother, or if one of us say that we have two brothers. We've tried to explain that we were born after James and don't have the attachment that she does, and that's led to several arguments, and usually it isn't worth it, so we just give in and say fine. She can bring the photo and talk about James there. Christopher is getting married. After talking with his fiance Lily, they both said the picture cannot come. They said they'll include James in the program alongside Lily's grandmother who passed as a sort of guest that we're thinking of on this special day. But there'll be no detailed essay that her mum usually includes on the holiday cards to memorialise James. She got very upset by both things and called them insensitive. They're sticking to their guns. My mum was venting to me and I told her I agreed with Christopher and Lily. I said that James isn't here. We have no connection to him. And she can't keep shoehorning him in. She can't expect us to make everything about him. And that obviously she won't ever be over James's death. But it's time to stop making him front and centre. I also added that none of us view James as our brother. She began to cry and left. My dad is angry with me beyond belief, as are some other family members. My brothers are on my side, but I need some unbiased perspective. Am I the a-hole? Nah, you're not the a-hole, OP. The top comment says, not the a-hole. Your parents needed therapy to deal with this about 30 years ago. Of course, losing James was very hard for them. A stillbirth is very sad, but this kind of enduring clinging to that is not normal or healthy. If they wanted to do something to remember him on his birthday, okay. Maybe, but not at every occasion. Not when none of your siblings ever knew him. Keep sticking up for Christopher and Lily because their wedding is their day and it's supposed to be happy. It doesn't need an outsized and awkwardly sad reminder of a lost baby. Maybe you and your brothers need to stage some kind of intervention with your parents after the wedding perhaps and talk to them about getting a therapist. You love them and care about their pain but they can't keep forcing this in every Christmas, every wedding, the eventual births of grandchildren etc. Yeah pretty much what that comment says. I don't feel like there's much more to add to this. Like yeah it's not healthy and they don't need to bring this up all the time. And it is super sad and you do want to help them and make sure they're okay. But yeah, you're not the a-hole OP. Am I the a-hole for not telling my boyfriend that I won money 15 years ago? I don't know what I did wrong or if what I did is wrong and I need some advice. I didn't want to post this on my real account because I'd like to be as anonymous as possible. My boyfriend, 35 male and I, 35 female, were discussing finances as we wanted to be on the same page. My boyfriend moved in with me unexpectedly three months ago as his landlord decided to move into the property with his family. We were discussing finances and the topic of how I own my place came up. I explained that I want some money, not a lot, but enough to be able to put myself through a nursing school, purchase my home and have some savings back in 2009 and I bought my place outright and then rented it out until I moved back into it in late 2018. Obviously, I had some luck on my side as this was right in the middle of the recession, so I got my place for real cheap. He says that I was deceiving him by giving him the impression that I was financially well off and that I led him to believe that I was more business savvy than I was. I don't know how I did that because because I literally work as a nurse and I make decent money, fully own my home, fully own my car, have decent retirement plans and decent savings. I'm fairly certain that I'm financially better off than most people I know. He says that he can't trust me anymore and that he was stupid to have listened to my financial advice. Oh my God, bro, what? But the thing is, I never gave him any financial advice except for telling him not to buy a car that was in my opinion unreliable and much too expensive. Did I deceive him by not telling him how I got myself financially stable? FYI. We've been dating for almost a year and a half. Edit, I just had another very weird conversation with him and I honestly can't wrap my head around it. Yeah, so he's definitely a gold digger. He asked me how much I have in savings and seemed impressed with how much and then said maybe he reacted too aggressively and then asked but sort of told me that he still wants the car that I advised him not to get. He hinted at me getting it for him as a birthday present. Bro, are you joking? Since it's his birthday in early March, I'm definitely dumping him. I'm gonna wait until my two sisters and my two brother-in-laws can come over before I break up with him in case he reacts crazy. Edit number two, he's jealous and also resentful. He's ranting about how he would have tripled the money if he had won it. Edit number three, he's saying that my money is wasted on me because I don't make it make money. Apparently I should have been investing my savings in high yielding stocks and other crap. FYI, I do get financial advice from a financial advisor, but I'm a risk averse person so I'd never invest it in the manner this idiot is telling me. Sure, the chance to get a lot of money is there, but so is the chance to lose it. Edit four, he's now on a crazy rant because I suggested we take a break from this argument because I don't want to ruin my few days off. My god, I can't believe how he's behaving. He thinks he's so 
clever, but I'm thoroughly disgusted. Oh, it's absolutely over between us. Edit number five. Okay, so I understand him better now. So my house and the property it's on is what led him to believe I was much richer than I am. He assumed I was loaded. So me telling him I actually got lucky pissed him off. Then when he found out how much I have in savings and assets, he perked up and had a change of mind. He's now telling me that with just a quarter of my money, he can show me how to invest on the stock market and make real money. Oh, he's genuinely deluded. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, there's so many red flags here. They've obviously been planning to mooch off you. And him asking you to buy him a car for his birthday. What? And yet yeah, jealous and also delusional too. And because he's jealous, he's getting upset. It's a jealous, insecure sort of thing. You see it all the time. Like if somebody is doing well, a lot of people can't handle it. And because they're not doing as well, they get upset and they get insecure and they get frustrated. And yeah, you don't need that OP. You're a million percent not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister-in-law that she needs to get over me being a cheerleader? And I had nothing to do with her bullying. This is really frustrating. I've been married to my wonderful husband, 29, for a few years. And we started to date senior year of college. My high school had about 300 people in my grade. It was a surprise that we both went to the same high school since we ran in different circles. My issue is with his sister. She was bullied extremely badly by a cheerleader. This cheerleader was two years younger than me and on the team. I had no idea and I wasn't even close to her. The cheerleading team had around 30 people on it. I was in no classes with her or even saw her outside of practice. She made a huge deal when she first met me that her brother was betraying her for dating a person that didn't do anything. I explained I was on the same team as her and I didn't know. Doesn't matter. Ever since she's been a royal biatch. I announced my pregnancy to the family and she made a comment that the poor kid is going to have a bully as a mum. I lost it. I told her I'm done. She needs to grow up with me being a cheerleader. I've done nothing wrong and at this point she's the bully. She called me a jerk and the family is split if I should apologise or not. So what? There's a person that was a cheerleader that was a bully and you're now a bully because you were a cheerleader? How dare they? Oh, that's so awful. And like this comment says, not the a-hole. Sister needs therapy to deal with the trauma that she endured in high school. But you had no part in it. Your husband should make it very clear to her and his parents that any more comments like this from her or any more support of her unhinged behaviour by the family will mean that you and he and the new baby will be distancing yourself from their side of the family. For your own mental health, you and the baby will not be coming to events where the sister is present. And if grandparents refuse to be nice to you, they'll have very little contact with their new grandchild either. I can't believe they think that you're a bad person because one cheerleader from their childhood bullied them. Like, yeah, obviously they need to get help so they can deal with this, but it is not okay for them to call you a bully and actually start vocalizing it. You didn't do bloody anything, OP. Am I the yeho for telling my mum and dad that they have to get their noses pierced if they want to see my daughter again? My husband and I travel down to Mexico to visit with my family. I am an American citizen, my mum and dad are not. My mum and dad got my daughter earrings for her birthday. My daughter's ears are not pierced. She's only one year old. I told her I'd save them for her until she was old enough to get her ears pierced. We left my daughter with my parents while we went out to meet up with some friends. When we went to pick up my daughter, my mum showed us that we didn't need to wait because they'd taken her to get her ears pierced. I got my daughter and I dragged my husband out of there before he lost his crap. We went back to our hotel. I'm so furious. My husband said that my parents are not allowed to spend time alone with my daughter ever again. I went even further. I said I would not be bringing her or any other kids that we might have down here to see my parents. We checked out three days early and we went home. On the way home, my parents are calling me to see when we're coming over. I ignored all the calls and texts until we were back home in Phoenix. We took a couple of days to think over and cool down. I finally called them. I asked them not to speak until I was done talking. I told them that my husband and I are upset with them for getting our baby's ears pierced without our permission. I told him we went back home and probably wouldn't be visiting for a while. They said that my sister and I both had pierced ears when we were babies and that it didn't harm us. I said that we're not going to change our minds. They started getting everyone, including my grandmother, to call and say that I was being ridiculous. I talked to my husband and we came up with a compromise. We agreed that we would resume visits, but not alone time with them. If they both got their noses pierced, they said that we're being stupid and they're not going to do that. I said no problem and I hung up. We've started blocking anybody who tries to call us and give us crap for denying my parents their rights right to see my daughter. Oh yeah, you guys are not the a-hole OP. The fact that they did this and didn't even ask you first is so not okay. And also, it's not like you were like sort of half open to the idea. You said no and you said you were going to keep the earrings until your daughter got older and then you would get your daughter's ears pierced and your parents were like, oh, screw that. And they went and did it anyway. And what, they think they're in the right? That's hilarious. Of course you're not the a-hole OP. The top comment says not the a-hole. They violated your trust in a huge way and they have absolutely 
absolutely no right to see your daughter, nor do they have a right to see you. They're confusing rights with wants. They're willing to do semi-permanent damage to your baby directly against your wishes just because they want to decorate the baby. It displays a lack of respect for you and for your child. Their aesthetic wants are more important than the grandchild's feelings. And if you think about it for more than five seconds, I did this unnecessary thing to a baby before they were old enough to say no is a terrible way to treat a person. It was polite for you to save their earrings for later, where they said until she was old enough to get her ears pierced. They're grown adults. Surely they didn't think this meant later today. Yeah, definitely. And like this comment says, these sorts of posts just blow my mind. Grandparents want to do something. Parents say no. In this case, daughter is too young for that. Grandparents do it anyway. In this case, physically altering the child's body against their parents' wishes. Parent takes child and leaves and grandparents who are supposed to be having a visit don't hear from the parents for days. Even past the time that the vacation was supposed to happen. Grandparent thinks, well, I didn't think it was a big deal, but my kid is so mad they took their kid home and cut the vacation short, even without saying goodbye and they haven't spoken to me in days. Should I A, apologize and take accountability for having gone against their wishes with their kid, even though I personally don't think their rule made sense? Or B, should I double down and imply that they're overreacting and tell them that I expect them to accept that I can do whatever I want to their child and they have no say? Or C, do B plus call all of my friends and our family, cry to them about how I'm such a victim and then ask them to harass my child about how sad I am and how awful they're being? Yep, definitely C. Half of being a mature adult is accepting accountability when you're wrong. It's so easy. And the higher the stakes, say for example, whether or not you're allowed to have a relationship with your own adult child and their family, the easier it should be to admit that you crossed a line. But no, parents would rather be righteous than happy. After all, how dare their child, who's a grown married adult and a parent of their own, think that they don't have to obey? How dare their child try to impose any rules or boundaries around their own family or child? Don't they know who I am? I, who chose to have a child, actually fed and clothed that child when it was helpless, and I was required to care for the life I chose to bring into the world. That means the child owes me obedience in everything and forevermore. Like, the nose-piercing thing is ridiculous, but if they'd just apologised and given some space and time, I assume OP would have let them visit eventually, even if not unsupervised, but instead of apologising, they put on this whole show and turned the entire family against the OP, simply for saying, hey, it's not okay that you went behind my back, abused the trust I placed in you to care for my child, and permanently altered my child's body after I explicitly said it's not happening. Stick to your guns, OP. If your parents would rather be right than have you in their life, then they aren't the kinds of people you want as role models for your kids anyway. Not the a-hole. The next one is called, Am I the a-hole for calling the police on my parents? I, 23 female, was asked to sit for a date night while my parents went to a wedding yesterday. I was supposed to have a baby boy, 13 weeks old, and his sister, 2 years old, from 5 to 11 p.m. This is not my first time watching either child. Our evening went as smoothly as it could with a toddler and a baby. I got them to bed by 7.30 and I started putting the house back together. At 10.15pm I got a text from the parents asking if I could stay until 12pm and I told them that's fine and to have fun. 12.15 rolls around and I haven't heard from the parents. I sent a text asking if they're close and I didn't get a response. I can be pretty anxious and my mind started thinking they got into an accident or something bad happened. I didn't hear from them after 5 minutes and then I decided to call but I got no answer. 1am rolls around and the baby has already woken up to feed again and I'm just overly anxious at this point. It's 1am and I have no one to call to calm me down. I would never assume that a late parent is just a late parent at 1am. So I'm on our city's Twitter page where they let you know road conditions and accidents, just seeing if something has happened in the last hour and a half, but nothing. 2am rolls around and I kid you not, I've called around 15 times and I've received no answer from either parent. I wanted to call the police at that point, but also I didn't want the kids woken up and taken out of the house at 2am. I was hoping that the parents would walk in and although I'd be angry, at least they're fine. But again, that didn't happen. At 5am, I decided to call the police and report the parents missing and I told them I couldn't keep them after having them all night. The police showed up at 5.22am and took a statement from me. I was asked for the parents numbers and the police asked if I could stay with the kids until they could figure out what exactly they're gonna do. At this point the neighbours are outside and the woman directly next door told me she could stay with them but I didn't know their relationship to her so I told her I'd wait with the kids for a bit. At 5.48am they roll up and are greeted by the police. The mum ran into the house thinking something had happened to the kids and then sighed when she saw they were there. Our phones died and we didn't know how to get home from the venue, is what she said to me, and I was fuming. I called them irresponsible and the crappiest parents I've ever worked for. I demanded she pay me on the spot, and I left. I got a super long message about how this is my job and I'm a huge a-hole for disrespecting them and calling the police. She felt like I could have left them with the neighbours or called the emergency contacts, but not the police. Am I the a-hole? Edit, I meant 12am, not 12pm. I was only supposed to stay an extra hour. Emergency contacts are mum's parents who are a six-hour plane ride away. Their pediatrician's office and 911. I felt 
like 911 would be the best in this case. The wedding was a friend of the dad, so I just don't see how they'd be able to contact anybody there. Yeah, no, I don't feel like you're the a-hole, OP. The top comment says, not the a-hole. You actually did the right and the safest thing. Also, it's 2024. Who in this day and age doesn't either have a portable charger or a car phone charger? Their parents, they should have been prepared for their phone dying. Also, they got lost for that long. Nah, something is fishy there in my opinion. Wipe your hands off them. You didn't do anything wrong. And OP said, that's why I also am just so upset. People carry charges everywhere. I don't think they couldn't get home. I don't think they wanted to come home. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it, OP. Why the hell else would they take so long? But yeah, either way, you're not in the wrong. What else were you supposed to do? Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay for my stepdaughter's tuition because she never liked me? I, female 39, married my husband, male 54, six years ago. Together, eight. He has two children, male 20 and female 19, Emma. I have a daughter, female 9. I was a widow when I met my husband. Emma had severe issues with her daughter getting married again while her brother got along very well with me and my daughter. He's the best older brother out there. Emma did not like me and she treated my daughter very badly too, to the degree that she almost never left my arms when her sister was home. When Emma was 15, she permanently moved to live with her mother. My deceased husband left me a small fortune when he passed that I never touched since I had a good job and I never wanted anything more so last year I helped pay for my stepson's tuition. I am planning to do that with my daughter too and the rest I'll add to my daughter. My stepdaughter is very angry now calling me the a-hole. Am I? I never had a good relationship with her. She always hated me and I don't think she's becoming a good person. And honestly, I'd rather leave more to my daughter than pay for her ungrateful last. My husband is sad because he thinks I'm being unjust. I'm very sad about it, but I still don't feel like I'm the a-hole. Update. Hi, thanks. This is my update. Hi, Emma. Unfortunately, I have no means to pay for your education, nor do I understand why you would expect me to. However, I can help you finding student jobs on evenings and weekends. I know many children doing that, including myself. I wish you good luck. And then it says, okay, okay, whatever, B arch. Wait, so is that what Emma said? What? <laughs> oh my god, OP, you're not the a-hole even a little bit. They don't deserve your money, and the fact that they feel so entitled to it, that's hilarious. The audacity is strong here. Like, why the hell would you give her money? And you're not being unjust, OP. They don't deserve your money. The top comment says, not the a-hole. She has no claim on your money. She hasn't treated you as family, so you don't have to treat her as family. Your husband should feel blessed that you chose to give some of your first husband's money to his son. Not many people would do this. She is not entitled to anything from you when she can't even give you respect for how father feels about you. Yeah, a million percent. Actions have consequences, you know? Maybe don't treat people awfully. It's a lesson for them and you're not the a-hole, OP. Am I the a-hole for telling my parents and my pregnant sister that I will not baby-proof my area of the house and saying that I'll be locking them out instead? My parents live in the in-law suite of my house. They pay rent to help me cover the mortgage, but the house is completely mine. Their rent is $600 a month. That includes all utilities, including internet and streaming services. My older sister is pregnant again, yay, and she needs a place to stay as her baby daddy bailed out and moved back to Romania without her. My parents agreed to let her stay with them. They did not ask me. Like I said, they pay rent and they can do as they wish in their living area. My parents have full run of my house except for my bedroom and my office. My dad likes to putter in the garage and plays with my dog. My mum likes to bake in my kitchen and work in the garage. The basement has a kitchen, but it is small and mine is just better all around. Nope, they want me to baby-proof my levels of the house. I asked why I would need to do this as the kids would 100% not be in my area. My mum said that it would not be fair to keep the kids cooped up in the basement all day. Oh my god, it's not your house, mum. I said that there was a huge yard and a sunroom for them to spend time if they really wanted. My sister said that she couldn't spend all her time cramped up like that with three kids. Oh, this is so frustrating. And they didn't even ask you, OP. Oh, you can't be there all cramped up. Find somewhere else then. Wow, the audacity. I asked when she found out she was having twins. She shut up. I dragged it out of them that she was planning on watching her friend's toddler for money. I said I did not have insurance for her to run a business out of my house. She said it was all under the table and that she needed money. This is when I said I'd be taking the keys to my area back from my parents. And I was also going to change the locks. I said that I agreed to let my parents live with me to help them out. They agreed to let her move in because she's an irresponsible wench that can't even understand birth control. I never agreed to let her use my house as a day home. I know I don't want three kids here along with four adults. Well, three adults and a pregnant dumbass. I thought this, but I didn't say it. My mum is mad that I'm going to lock them out of my area, but my dad understands. The thing is, I'd let him keep a key, but my mum would get it off him. And then she'd give it to my sister. I said I'd leave the garage locked the same and that was good enough for him. My mum and my sister are upset and giving me the silent treatment. <laughs> my mum got my dad to ask me if they paid for the insurance if my sister could watch her friend's kid. I agreed, but I said they should get my sister to pay it. Wow, you are so not the a-hole OP. This is infuriating. Like the fact that they don't even feel like they need to ask you about it. Your parents are acting like it's their 
house. Oh, that's so annoying. I'm never going to let anybody in my house <laughs> after reading stuff like this. The top comment says, not the a-hole, but you may have to reconsider this whole arrangement. You know, over time, this will still become a mess for you. Your mom, your sister and kids will take over your space and it will be very hard to rectify after they're here. Ask your parents to move out, although I do feel sorry for your dad. And OP said, locks are changed. I will not bend or break on this. That's good, OP. Stay strong. Like everybody, you need to remember whose house this is. Have some bloody respect. Oh my God. Yeah, that was infuriating. Am I the a-hole for telling my neighbor I'm not her babysitter over the summer? I, 38 female, have a neighbor. We'll call her Sarah, 38 female. I'm married and I have two girls, eight and 11. She has two boys, eight and 12. Sarah is married, but her husband travels a lot for work and she works from home. I'm a teacher, so I have school breaks and summers off. Over winter break, Sarah's kids kept coming over to see if my kids could play. Play means they've been sent over because they're annoying their mum and she's trying to work. Backstory, the kids were friends when they were younger, but as they got older, they don't really have much in common and they've drifted apart. Her kids go to a parochial school and my kids go to a public school, so they don't even have teachers or classmates in common. They don't have a ton in common anymore and when they do play, Sarah's kids fight a lot with each other and with my kids. One day over winter break, the younger one came to the door to see if my kids could play and I told him they didn't want to play right now. Sarah sent me a text saying that she was on a work call and she could really use some time with the boys out of the house. Yeah, that's not OP's fault, Sarah. I caved and I told my girls to just try and find something they could do together. Ten minutes later, my oldest came upstairs crying, saying that one of the boys made a nasty comment about how boring our house was and that it was dumb that I wouldn't let him play Xbox. It's my husband's Xbox and it's in our family room where I was doing laundry and watching a show. I told the boys if they were bored, they were more than welcome to leave. Now it's almost spring break and Sarah asked if I could watch the boys for two days because she has two busy work days and I'm quote unquote off work. I told her no because we'd be on vacation in Florida visiting family. She said okay and jokingly said, I guess I'll just hit you up in the summer. I replied and said that I will not be babysitting her kids over the summer. True emergency, sure. I said I'm sorry but just because I'm not at school during the summer does not mean that I'm your free childcare. Yeah, I don't physically go to work over the summer but I take online classes for my masters and I teach online summer school, meaning I am also working from home. She blew up at me <laughs> and told me that I should help her because she's alone a lot and now that the kids are older, it's harder to keep them entertained all day. I told her that I didn't care if the kids played together outside during the summer, but I was not going to be a caretaker or responsible for her kids unless she was going to compensate me. I tried explaining to her that the kids don't get along the way they used to. My kids don't fight with each other the way her kids fight with each other. And my kids don't really want them to be over at the house all the time. Now she's pissed and not speaking and her oldest told my oldest that I'm not a good person because I won't help my neighbor. Oh, get out of here. Am I really the a-hole because I won't watch her kids over the summer? No, OP. They sound awful. Oh, you're not talking to me anymore. Good. This one's also infuriating. How the hell are her kids your responsibility? Like, what are you talking about? Just because you have stuff to do and you're busy does not mean that you can just give your kids to somebody else and expect them to look after them. They're your kids. Like, what do you mean? And how bloody rude of their kid to say that you weren't a good person. You're under no obligation to look after them, OP. The top comment says, not the a-hole. Nah, just tell your daughter to tell him that he has a bad mum who can't even watch them when she's home. See how she likes that. Or that he's such a bad kid that good neighbours won't even watch them for free. Also, what does her opinion even mean for you? It should mean nothing. This is a one-way relationship where she takes and takes. What do you even get in return? The good neighbour award? And OP said, normally I don't care if people have a negative opinion of me. However, we do have a lot of mutual friends and she's very gossipy. And I'm not, so I'm more concerned that she would be bad-mouthing me to other people. I know I shouldn't be concerned about that because I know the other people and they know that she's a drama queen, but it still bothers me. Yeah, you definitely shouldn't worry about it, OP. What are they even going to say bad about you anyway? Like, what, are they going to make stuff up? If she goes around saying stuff like that, OP, she's the only one who's going to look bad. You haven't done a thing wrong. And like the top comment said, it's a one-way relationship where she takes and takes and you don't get anything in return. They're the opposite of grateful. They're upset at you for nothing. Yeah, you're so not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for telling my friend all that matters is that she's happy? when she asked me if I liked her plastic surgery. I, 34 female, have a childhood best friend Cordelia, 32 female. Cordelia was always one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen, but she's always had severe self-esteem issues. Recently with the buckle fat removal trend, she's been enamored by it. She swore up and down that she was going to save up for it because she doesn't like her round face. It wasn't round or big at all. She finally saved up the money and flew to LA to get the surgery. And this week she was healed enough to see some results. Me personally, I think the people who get the procedure look bad. But my opinion doesn't matter because if that's what makes them happy, that's all that matters. Beauty is subjective and as long as you love yourself, nobody else's opinions are relevant. Cordelia and I 
had brunch today and she asked me what I thought of her results. I told her the doctor did a good job at the surgery and I'm glad to see her happy. She continued on and we were chatting, but then she brought it up again asking me how I thought she looked. I once again told her that the surgery was very well done and that it looks exactly the way she wanted. Cordelia got upset and asked me why I wasn't giving her a straight answer and asked me if I thought it made her prettier. I told her that she's always been a beautiful woman and that the glow she has from the confidence it's given her is a good look. She told me to tell her if I thought she was pretty or not and I said your opinion is the only one that matters. It's your face and I'm happy you achieved your goal. I personally don't like the look of it on anybody but it's none of my business because it's not my face. You were beautiful before doing it. Cordelia threw a fit and poured her mimosa on me and told me I was a jealous and petty biatch. I didn't mean to hurt her feelings. I don't know why she wanted my opinion so bad or why she couldn't accept my answer but I definitely feel like the yay hole. So am I? Nah, no way OP. This comment says not the yay hole but she wanted the white lie. That was all that mattered to her. She didn't even want your honesty. If you aren't prepared to do that then you're not compatible as friends and there's nothing wrong with that. Some friends will BS each other and it's a mutually agreed social contract. They know it's BS but it makes them feel better. Other friends appreciate honesty more and they don't get upset. Everybody is different. And then OP said I just didn't even clue it. She put me on the spot and I panicked. I'm not a good liar and by the time I even realized I could lie it was too late. Yeah and that's also right OP. They put you on the spot. They were repeatedly pushing you about this and they poured their drink on you. Yeah I don't feel like this is a friend OP and it definitely doesn't seem like you're the yay hole. Am I the yay hole for telling my mum that I don't want her to watch her grandson alone anymore? I female 23 and my husband male 24 welcomed our baby male in September of last year. We moved from his hometown to mine in January in hopes of saving up to buy a house. We moved in with my mum 50, something she very enthusiastically agreed to. During our few months she's been a little weird. She's constantly checking to see if he has teeth, pushing for us to stop feeding him milk, tries to give him really complicated food like candy yams. Her defense is I did it with you and you survived. Most recently she was holding him and playfully asked him if he wanted water in which I responded don't give him water mum. She proceeds to give it to him and goes see he's fine he isn't dead. I immediately took my child from her and I informed her that she'll no longer be watching the baby alone since she's constantly overstepping my boundaries and doing everything I ask her not to do. She isn't talking to me now and I made her feel like a bad parent and grandparent. Am I the gay hole? Is there something I should be doing to make her talk to me? Edit I pay half the mortgage utilities and I buy my own food to cook with. I don't rely on her for childcare. I want to clear that up since I'm getting a few comments about it. Update. Whoa, I did not realize how divided the internet was on parenting. And I'm seeing this on blogs. That's insane to me as I'm from a pretty small town. First off, obviously info is somewhat off and every aspect of my situation isn't posted here. So yeah, advice is taken with a grain of salt. Secondly, everybody had fair points. Some had good advice and others had perspectives I'd never thought about. With that being said, mum and I had a conversation last night. She started off defensive, telling me I was showing her that her tricks and advice wasn't right. I showed her some articles and I voiced my concerns. I let her know that I'm not telling her she did a bad job raising us, but times and rules have changed. Somebody pointed out that car seats weren't big back then, and now it's the law to have your child in one. After a 30 minute conversation, we got to the root of the problem. She feels like she did a bad job raising her kids. I assured her that she didn't, and that I respect and appreciate everything she was able to do for us growing up, but it's my turn to raise my child, and her turn to relax and enjoy the perks of having grown children and grandkids now. So yeah, all is well. She knows I wasn't mad about the water, just that it felt like she did it to prove a point. I love my mum, and I'd never just jump to banning her from enjoying her first grandson. She's my world after my husband and son. And once again, I love her dearly. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm happy it had a good ending. Am I the gay hole for telling my daughter that if she pays for her sister's college then I'll stop favoring her with my money? I'll try and make this as clear as possible. My mother had a fund that was supposed to be for both of the grandchildren. She told me multiple times it was for both of the kids. She also informed the girls that they have money. She passed away unexpectedly. My oldest name, Shelly, was the only one on the fund and it is legally hers. She didn't share it with her sister, Grace, and she has a huge head start in life with it. Due to this money, she's been able to go to college debt free and is going to buy a house soon. My husband and I have been scrambling to give as much money as possible to Grace and she really got screwed over. Even with all of our help, she still needs to take out student loans. Grace is working while in college and she found a student job that gives free housing. The issue is that she needs a car for it. So my husband and I are going to buy her a car because turning down this job will result in a ton of extra debt for her. Shelly found out about us getting the car and is pissed. What? She's upset with us favoring Grace and that she never got a car from us. Oh, get out of here. I pointed out 
out that she doesn't need help financially at all. We argued for a while and I had enough. I told her that if she pays for her sister's college, then I will stop favoring her sister with my money. She called me a jerk and isn't responding. Edit, according to my mother's partner, she had the money together in order to build it up more and was going to split it when my oldest went to college, but she died before that. They are full sisters, same parents. So pretty much what's going on is that your daughter is not splitting the money, even though they know that that's what their grandmother was going to do and what their grandmother wanted. And knowing that they're still not splitting it. Yeah, you're not the a-hole at all, OP. Like the top comment says, not the a-hole. Your oldest daughter was very selfish to not split the money, knowing that it was what her grandmother wanted. It's one thing to keep an inheritance that your family member fully intended to be just for you without sharing it. But this feels very wrong. I think that at least until you've given half that amount to your younger daughter, it is entirely fair. I'd be pretty disappointed in her and it's hard to forgive. I can't imagine this isn't going to destroy a lot of relationships in the family. And OP responded, we'll never be able to give Grace half the amount. It'll be around 200 to 230,000. It won't happen. Maybe when we die, but we have probably 40 years left since we had our kids young. Oh, that's so infuriating. That's so much money. And OP also said in the comments, we have discussed it multiple times. She was 17 when she got her inheritance. It had a block, so I couldn't touch it, which was fine. It was supposed to be for the girls. We thought that she'd just be kind and split it with her sister. She didn't, and it basically messed up her relationship with the family. As she puts it, it's hers legally. I don't need to share. Our other option would be to fight her claim to it, but we didn't have the money for that. She knows that we all disapprove of her choice with it, especially since she knows grandma wanted it shared. Oh my god, OP, your daughter is an a-hole. What the hell is wrong with them? How do they sleep at night? That's actually revolting. Somebody like that doesn't bloody deserve an inheritance. Oh, that's so gross. I can't believe that even though they know that's not what their grandma wanted, that they're happily going to divide their family because they're so selfish. Ew. It doesn't get more a-holy than that. Of course, you're not the a-hole, OP. Like this comment says, not the a-hole. Your oldest daughter is a bad person. If everyone, including the grandmother's partner, knew it was for both granddaughters, but it just wasn't set up correctly while legally she can keep the money, by at least not sharing some of it morally was definitely wrong. The fact that she's debt-free and able to buy a house but is still so greedy that she's mad that you guys don't buy her a car as well is crazy. Yeah, that's another thing. Imagine being the grandmother's partner and seeing this bloody entitled granddaughter take all of your partner's money. God, that's so aggravating. And also, the Am I the A-hole post ended by saying she called me a jerk and isn't responding. If I was in this situation, hey daughter who called me a jerk and isn't responding, you're lucky that the family even speaks to you anymore. Like seriously, what a joke. We need to move on. That one's too frustrating. Okay, after reading possibly the most aggravating Am I the A-hole post I've ever read ever, let's read the second one. Am I the A-hole for throwing a tantrum because my child wasn't invited to a child-free wedding? My sister is getting remarried and she wants a very small wedding with only immediate family. Yesterday we got her wedding invitation and to my surprise it said that the wedding is going to be child-free and my child isn't invited. My child is 17 years old going on 18 soon. By the way, my child is the only one under 18 in our family and in the groom's family. So she is the only one that's being excluded. I called my sister and I asked her if she was serious. She said, I'm sorry, but we've decided that we want a child-free wedding. I told her to just say that you want a my child-free wedding and to get over with it because this is exactly what you're doing. We got into an argument and she told me to stop throwing a tantrum and that my child doesn't need to be included in everything. I told her that we won't be attending her wedding and then she called me an a-hole for not supporting her. Yeah, I feel like usually in a situation like this, it'd be the other way around. Like normally in this situation, I feel like it'd be the other way around if they wanted a child-free wedding and they were making sure that a lot of children weren't going to show up. But in this situation, it's different. You're not the a-hole OP. You said that your daughter is the only one that's going to be excluded and your daughter's 17. It's not like they're five or six years old, which I understand would be the point of having a child-free wedding. So you don't have like a whole bunch of little kids running around. But not only is your daughter not a little kid and they're obviously not super disruptive or nothing, but they're the only one who's getting excluded. And with that context, I feel like what you said was totally fine. Yeah, like this comment says, that's a weird one. I feel like normally it would be a their wedding, their rule sort of situation. And I'd say grow up and get over it. But this is not that situation. Your grown pretty much child is literally the only one being excluded. I can't even imagine what is probably going through that 17 year old girl's head right 
right now. She's probably wondering why her family doesn't like her. You should definitely talk to her and make sure she knows that some people are just ridiculous about their stupid wedding and that she didn't do anything wrong. Make sure she knows this is not her fault somehow. Yeah, and like the comment under that says, I think a lot of the your wedding, your rule situations are cases where the bride and groom are a-holes, but they get away with it because of that attitude. Well, yeah, there's definitely cases of that. I'm not sure why couples are given passes to do whatever they want with the expectation that they'll be forgiven because it's their special day. People absolutely remember this type of petty BS. Anyway, not the a-hole here. Yeah, and also OP said here, my kid is the quietest, most well-behaved kid in our family, though a lot of family members don't really like her because of how quiet she is. Well, there you go. Not only are they 17, not a bloody six-year-old, but they're also not disruptive. Of course they should go to the wedding. And also OP said in the comments that there were 18 to 21 year olds going. So because OP's daughter is one year younger, well not even that, like half a year younger than 18, they're technically not allowed to go. Yeah, you being upset about this is definitely understandable OP. The next one is called, am I the gay for going to my birthday dinner without my husband when he wasn't ready on time? It was my 40 female 40th birthday a few days ago and we had a reservation for a table at a nice restaurant for 7pm. It takes about 20 minutes to drive to the restaurant so I plan to leave the house at 6.30pm to build in time for traffic and picking up my father. My husband, 43 male, had decided to do a bit of work on his car about half an hour before we had to leave. At 6.30 when the kids and I were waiting by the door, he was still doing it. He hadn't changed and hadn't showered. I told him to quickly get ready but it got to 6.50 and he still wasn't ready so I decided to just leave without him. He has a habit of always running late when we have to go out and he's always the last one to be ready. Normally I can tolerate it since it only sets things back by 10 minutes at the most but my birthday dinner was important to me and I'd been looking forward to it for weeks. Making us wait for 20 minutes was taking the mick so I yelled out that we were leaving and left because I didn't want to lose the table since we would have arrived around 7.20. I called the restaurant to let them know we'd be late and luckily we still got our table but my husband didn't show up at the restaurant and when we got home he was mad at me. Oh the audacity. I told him that I was tired of him not respecting my time and always making people wait for him and that he could have made his own way to the restaurant. My father agreed with my decision to leave without him but my kids were a little upset that he wasn't there to have dinner with us so am I the a-hole? No of course you're not the a-hole OP and the fact that your kids are upset because he wasn't there to have dinner with you that's not your fault. Obviously this shouldn't have happened in the first place and it really shows where his priorities are but also in the situation where your husband is going to be late and you are going to leave when you left without him your husband should have got ready as fast as he could and drove to the restaurant and apologized and been there like a little bit late because he's the one who's in the wrong. Literally the last thing he should have done is not went and then been upset at you when you got home. It doesn't even make any sense. And also the fact that he does stuff like this a lot is even more frustrating. Like you'd think that your partner's birthday dinner, 40th birthday dinner, maybe you could be ready on time for that, you know? And even though they were going to be late, when they could have still saved the situation by getting ready super fast and driving over there and apologizing and being like maybe half an hour late, maximum, but still having a dinner and celebrating your partner's birthday, but instead they did the most selfish thing imaginable and they didn't even bother to go and then got upset at you. Cringe. The top comment says, not the a-hole, you were already late when you left. If you waited any longer, you wouldn't have even had a table and thus no birthday party. When you got home, you should have torn him a new one for deliberately trying to sabotage your birthday party. Put him on the defensive where he should be for his behavior. Really though, when your husband decided to do some work on his car, you should have said, no, you're not doing that. You're going upstairs and getting ready to leave with us. No, OP shouldn't even need to say that. They're a fully grown man. It's not OP's child. This was a totally predictable problem. You should stop tolerating his lateness. When you do that, it gets worse, not better. Yeah, and like the comment under it says, it's not on her to mother him. She showed she was not tolerating his behavior by leaving. He should have the awareness and the discipline to not start that project 30 minutes before they had to leave. Yeah, it's not OP's job to make sure that the husband is always doing something right or time managing for their husband. Oh, that's so frustrating. And yeah, of course, you're not the a-hole OP. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for refusing to babysit for a family again because they took advantage of me last time? I, 16 female, am a babysitter and I babysat for a family that I've never babysat for before. They have a baby that's only a couple of months old, a four-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl and are paying me $12 an hour. As you can imagine, they're all on the smaller side and they require lots of attention. When the parents were about to leave, their friends came over and dropped off their four-year-old. I'm not getting paid extra and this was not communicated with me ahead of time. The parents brought her to me and said that she goes to bed at the same time as the others and gave me a quick smile before leaving. Oh no, that's not okay. I babysat
reset the kids for six hours. I was wondering if I should bring it up to the parents or should I just let it go since it's only one extra kid. It just seems unfair that there was no communication to me about it and I'm supposed to feed this extra kid and get her ready for bed and keep her entertained and put her to sleep. In the end, I decided to do nothing about it and I told myself that it wasn't that big of a deal. My parents and friends have since told me that I was being taken advantage of. Yeah, definitely. Yesterday, the mother texted me asking if I'd babysit for her kids again while she went out. I declined telling her that I didn't feel comfortable babysitting with her again because she didn't communicate with me last time and I felt blindsided. She snapped back by telling me that I was very rude and it was in the past. She said I should have said something then and that it's my fault for not telling her how I felt. Nah. I really feel bad but my parents told me that she's trying to guilt trip me since I'm only 16 and she thinks that she can. I haven't responded to her messages because I'm unsure if I'm wrong. So am I the a-hole here? No, definitely not OP and they're definitely trying to guilt trip you. They 100% plan to do that. Like you also looking after the other kid definitely wasn't an accident. And yeah, they knew what they were doing. The top comment says not the a-hole. $12 an hour is way too low of a price point. You should have been paid more, especially if you're caring for three kids, in addition to having to babysit for a fourth unexpected child. She's the a-hole for expecting you to babysit another kid and not communicating with you about it. Big no. Do not babysit for her. Do not let her guilt trip you. And do not tolerate her behavior. In the future, you shouldn't even have to justify your reasoning as to why you can't babysit somebody's children. Example, her children in this case. I feel like you should give her the reason of being uncomfortable. Just tell her that you're unavailable and block her number. I would also think about what prices you'd charge for babysitting. I know that some people have a baseline price for one child and then an additional cost for multiple children. Maybe a couple of dollars more added onto the baseline price per child. This is completely up to you. For example, maybe $12 an hour for one child and then maybe a couple of more dollars, two to five dollars extra per child. Yeah, you're for sure not in the wrong OP. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for going after child support from my ex-wife and her husband? Even though I said I would not after they said they wanted input on how I raised my daughter. My ex-wife Sandy and I got married young, too young. I wasn't done university and she was fresh out of high school. We were pressured by our families. It's a religious thing. We didn't actually even live together until a year and a half later when I finished my degree. I'm not in great shape. I'm not particularly handsome, although my mum says I am. I also spent a lot of time at work my first three years of my career getting a running start. I am ashamed to say that I pretty much neglected Sandy. When we had our daughter, I re-examined my life and I made them a priority. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too late. Sandy left me. It hurt. It hurt even more when she moved on and left our daughter with me. She said that she was still young and that her family and I had taken years of her youth away and now it was her turn to enjoy it. I felt a lot of guilt over what she said. For the record, I didn't particularly want to be married either. I said that I didn't want to hold her back so I would not take child support. We went to court and I got full custody. She got visitation which she only very rarely uses, like four times last year. It's been five years and my daughter and I are doing fine. I have a great job now and I'm able to work from home. I take my daughter to school and I pick her up and I leave my work in my office when we're together. I have also withdrawn from the church that my parents attend. Recently, Sandy has been bugging me about parenting decisions. I told her that I'd raise my daughter as I saw fit. She said that she was her mother and deserved to say. Her husband chimed in that I was not doing a proper job of parenting and that they were considering going back to court for custody. As soon as he mentioned lawyers are hung up and I called mine. She's a bulldog. She immediately filed for child support including back child support for the last five years. I've been hearing from everybody that I'm being cruel going after her for money. Full disclosure, I make close to five times their combined income. I don't need their money, but if I can use the law to get her to leave us alone, I will. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole, OP. Is there maybe a possibility that they know that you make five times more than their combined income? I feel like there's definitely a motivator there. And like the top comment says, this woman abandons her husband and daughter to go enjoy life and now wants to give advice on raising your daughter. I don't think your attorney is out of line for filing for child support and or back support. You're sending a message loud and clear to back off. Chances are the ex hasn't changed that much and is now feeling the heat of having to explain to others why she doesn't share custody with her daughter. I think going in hard like you did was a good move. Keeping with the quarterly visits is good for now or until your ex proves that she's not gonna abandon your daughter again. That kind of rejection lasts a lifetime and every little one needs to know that they're worth fighting for. So keep fighting for her. And also like this comment says, I got the vibe they would try to take the kid and get child support money since OP is doing so well. I think they see money. Yeah, and like this comment says, that lawyer is worth whatever you're paying her. Leave it to the courts. That's what they wanted, so that's what they get. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I don't feel like you're being cruel or anything, OP. You're looking out for your daughter. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for leaving the restaurant even though my daughter-in-law hadn't finished eating? I, 58 female, invited everybody in the family out for dinner at a nice restaurant for 
my husband's 60th. I told everybody about the event a month ago. The guest list also included my daughter, Sarah, 24, and her wife, Elizabeth, 28 female. Elizabeth works in a demanding, stressful, but well-compensated corporate position. She does have a tendency for overworking herself. Unsurprisingly, she was late to the dinner. Sarah said that Beth had cleared her schedule for the day, but there was a last minute issue and she had to leave for work. Elizabeth made it while everybody else was starting dessert. She apologized, gave us a fancy bottle of wine as a gift and sat down. We were all done and ready to go, but Elizabeth hadn't even fully eaten yet. It was getting late, so as people started leaving, my husband and I decided to leave as it was getting late. We didn't wait for Elizabeth to finish her dinner. The next day, I got a call from Sarah saying that it was not okay for us to just leave them by themselves like that. I explained and said that it was getting late, but she insists that we should have stayed. I may be an a-hole here when I said that maybe she needs to take her rose-colored glasses off about Elizabeth. She got upset and hung up the phone. Was I an a-hole? So I don't feel like you're the a-hole for the dinner thing, but you obviously don't like Elizabeth. And the rose-colored glasses comment that you made was definitely an a-hole comment. It feels like there's a lot more to this, but also arriving to dinner when everybody else has already had their main and they're eating dessert, you shouldn't be ordering your main when everybody's about to finish. The top comment says, not the a-hole after the group has eaten the main course. A late arrival has effectively missed dinner and should not expect to order and eat. It was pushy and rude of Elizabeth to expect to eat, let alone have anybody wait for her. Someone in a high corporate position should know that and treat her in-laws better. And also this comment. Yeah, your last comment means that there's more to this that you aren't telling us. They should have ordered dessert. I find it odd that she ordered a meal when you were all on dessert and then expecting you to wait, but I think there's more to this. Yeah, it does definitely feel like that. Am I the a-hole for yelling at my wife for firing our babysitter and making her cry because she called an ambulance? Hello Reddit, I've just downloaded Reddit because my niece said I should post this story to the Am I the A-hole board. So here I am. I'm not very good with technology, so forgive me, but I'll probably be messing this whole post up. So here's what happened. Me and my wife hired our babysitter who we've been going to for years. We have two sons and a daughter and we've been hiring her since my older son was a baby. Though it was mostly her mum looking after the baby while she was helping. So we gave her a couple of dollars for that. She's now 16 and can look after the kids all on her own and my oldest two love her. My youngest is only seven months old, so I'm not sure he really gets it yet, but he seems relatively happy when he's with her. This Friday, my kids' daycare has been closed for renovations and Daisy, our babysitter, has kindly offered to take them after school from 3.30 to 6 p.m. I get home from work at six and my wife gets home at half six. However, I got home early from work at half five and when I got home, I found my wife yelling at Daisy while Daisy was just sobbing and apologizing. I asked my wife what was going on and she just started yelling that Daisy had cost us a bunch of money. My first thought was that she'd broken something, but my wife wasn't telling me what it was. She told Daisy she wouldn't be paying her for her time and to get the F out of our house and to never come back or she'd call the police. Daisy then ran out crying and I left my wife to calm down while I comforted my kids. They were all crying in different rooms while my wife yelled at Daisy. When everything had calmed down, I got the full story from my wife. So here's what happened. My mother had been looking after the kids until 3.30 while we were at work and this was Daisy's first time looking after my youngest son. Though we knew that we could trust her with the baby since she looked after my daughter alone when she was a baby. Something important that you should know is that my younger son has breath holding episodes, which occur when he gets frustrated or is in pain, and he'll just hold his breath. To stop them, you just have to blow on the baby, or they'll just snap out of it on their own. They're completely normal and relatively safe in babies. However, the episodes can sometimes cause passing out and blueness, and it's normal, and he usually wakes up within a few seconds. To cut a long story short, my mum forgot to tell Daisy what to do if that happens, and when my son passed out, Daisy panicked and called 911 and then my wife. My wife is now angry that Daisy called 911 for nothing and has now wasted our money on an ambulance ride. Me and my wife are now arguing because I think Daisy did the right thing but my wife doesn't. Yesterday we got into a heated argument. We both said some hurtful stuff and now she's staying with her mother for a few days while she thinks over my priorities in the relationship. Am I the a-hole? What does she mean your priority? She was putting money over your child. No, you're not the a-hole, OP. Your wife is definitely the a-hole. Super irrational behavior. It's her fault that she didn't tell the babysitter what to do. How the hell was the babysitter meant to know what to do? And the babysitter did do the right thing. Oh, I feel so sorry for the babysitter. Like this comment says, not the a-hole. Your wife behaved reprehensibly. Daisy deserves a medal and an apology. She was unprepared with information she required. If you want an expert who'd already knew this, then you don't get to hire a teenager to babysit. And your wife needs to get comfy paying a lot more for a professional adult nanny who comes with this sort of knowledge. Your wife prioritized money over the safety of the children and the most basic respect and kindness towards Daisy. You may also want to be reconsidering some things. Give Daisy the money and apologize your wife owes her. Edit also would strongly encourage you to apologize to her parents as well and make sure they're aware of the trauma that Daisy experienced. She might have been 
been scarred or ashamed to tell her parents the full truth and it would be kind for you to support her on that front as well. Yeah, your wife is completely in the wrong, OP. They yelled at the babysitter for not knowing something that they didn't even tell the babysitter. Like, how are they meant to know if you didn't tell them? And then you get upset at them because you didn't tell them? You should be yelling at yourself. Are you joking? Yeah, that's revolting. And like this other comment says, not the a-hole. Is your wife normally irrational like this? Does she realize that she's valuing money over her child's health? Your 16-year-old babysitter wasn't given incredibly important medical information. And your wife thinks that when faced with an unconscious baby, her reaction should have been what? Ignore it? Call one of you guys? Lord, pay the babysitter. Give her a bonus. Apologize for your wife's behavior. Not something I'd normally suggest, but damn. Also, if there's a babysitter network, you guys will probably be blacklisted. Yeah, that's so hard to wrap your head around. Because, yeah, it's completely irrational. Losing your mind at this babysitter and screaming at them and making everybody cry when the babysitter didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, that's unbelievable. And a wild start to the episode. Am I the a-hole for telling my son's girlfriend to break up with him? My female 41 son, male 20, has been in a relationship with his girlfriend Lily, female 20, for about three years now. I love my son and I hate to say this, but he hasn't turned out to be a good person. He has very little work ethic, has no desire to get a job or go to college, and spends most of his time gaming or partying. Lily, on the other hand, is the polar opposite. She's very studious, has aspirations to be a doctor, is a very good swimmer, and is currently away at college. When my son and Lily first got together in high school, they were an excellent match. We loved having Lily over and my son definitely took more care of himself. Since then, it's rapidly deteriorated. I know my son still loves Lily, but he never gives her the attention she deserves. And with her clear potential, I feel like she deserves better. When Lily came to visit a few days ago, she was visibly upset. When my son went to the store, I asked her if she was okay. And she told me that she didn't know what to do and wondered why my son had such a little ambition and was so lazy. I told her I didn't see it changing anytime soon, as that is my view given it's been going on for almost two years. When she asked what I would do in her situation, I told her to put herself first and what she wanted. Lily thanked me and said that she'd think about things. Well, earlier today, my son comes downstairs in a rage telling me that Lily had broken up with him via a text message. I asked him what she said and apparently the message referred to discussions with your mum that had made her rethink the relationship. My son was livid that I'd gotten involved and said that I'd overstepped boundaries. I told him that I didn't advise Lily to leave him. I just said that she had to make her own choices and decide what was best for her. My son is now not talking to me and my husband is annoyed, believing that having no Lily will make my son's rut last even longer. I also miss having Lily around. So am I the a-hole? Nah, you're not the a-hole, OP. You would have barely made a difference. What, you think the relationship would have last? No, this just would have happened a little bit later even if you didn't say anything. Lily obviously wasn't happy and your son wasn't doing enough and that's not your fault. And also, if he is in a rut, he needs to figure that out. It's not somebody else's fault. Like the top comment says, not the a-hole. You didn't tell her to end the relationship. You told her to consider her needs. Your son certainly wasn't. And tell your husband it isn't up to Lily to get your son out of his rut. And maybe he needs to spend more time teaching him how to be a good man and not a mooch. Let your son be angry. He'll do one of two things. Stay angry or get off his butt and start pulling his own weight. Too many young adults have little to no aspirations and are more concerned living in the moment. Yeah, 100%. And especially that bit that says it isn't up to Lily to get your son out of his rut and that your son obviously wasn't considering her needs. Like, yeah, if he didn't pull his own weight, it was gonna happen anyway. It's not like everything was all fine and dandy before you had a conversation with her OP. And also, I feel like it's not a good sign that your son immediately went to blaming you. Like, surely he could be like, oh, well, maybe, you know, they had a point. Maybe I wasn't doing enough. Maybe I was neglecting my partner, you know? Instead of immediately blaming you, OP. And also, you didn't overstep any boundaries. What you said to Lily was like really general sort of vague advice. Like, do what makes you happy. Anybody would have said that in that situation. You didn't say like, you need to break up with him right now. So yeah, I don't feel like the anger should be directed at you, OP. And like the comment under that says, not the a-hole, you didn't tell her to break up with him. You told her she needs to put herself first, which is solid advice to anybody. The fact that putting yourself first meant breaking up with your son is his issue for being a waste of space. And your husband can also get in the bin expecting Lily to get him out of his rut. If it's that simple, he can get involved and sort it. He's his son. Besides, who knows, maybe this will be the kick in the ass that he needs to sort himself out and maybe win her back. Unlikely, as this isn't a rom-com, but never say never. Yeah, definitely. Would I be the a-hole if I rescinded my offer to pay for a friend's birthday dinner after they picked somewhere that I can't eat? My friend Luke is turning 40 and I offered to pay for him and a group of our friends to have dinner anywhere that Luke wanted. Luke knows that I've been vegan since my 20s and it's never been an issue before. When I asked where he made reservations at, he said at a local barbecue place that 
it's famous here for having a menu that mocks people who don't eat meat. Like it has a section that says vegetarian options. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. I asked what he expected me to eat and he got all huffy and said, well, it's his birthday, so it shouldn't matter. Oh, come on, dude. I should eat before getting there and just order drinks while everybody else eats dinner and still enjoys everybody else's company. Okay, we already know you're not the a-hole OP. This sounds miserable to me. I had zero expectations of Luke picking somewhere vegan friendly. Hell, I expected him to pick a steakhouse and I would have been fine with a salad and some fries, but I didn't expect him to choose somewhere that prides themselves on meat being in every single dish on the menu. I want to tell him never mind and buy him a traditional birthday gift instead, but I feel like a massive a-hole for taking back my offer. I don't know what to do, to be honest. You're not the massive a-hole, OP. Edited to add, it's a group of nine, so I'm also feeling miffed about spending 300 plus on a meal that I can't eat. Yeah, and fair enough too, OP. Second edit, the exact text I sent said this. Hey, I want to take you and the friend fam out to dinner for your birthday. Make a reservation somewhere and let me know. OP, your friend is a huge a-hole. Like, are they trying to be awful because they're succeeding? Yeah, like this comment says, communicate with them. I offered to take you out to eat. Right. You picked a place that only has meat on the menu and you know I'm vegan. Yep, you said anywhere. It doesn't matter to me that you can't eat anything on the menu because I'm an a-hole. Okay, I retract my offer. Not the a-hole, your quote-unquote friend is being a complete jerk to you, but you're wondering if you're the a-hole? Yeah, they're being straight up awful. Like, why would you want to be friends with somebody like that? So selfish and entitled and also ungrateful too, like you offered to pay for everybody. Oh yeah, thank you for paying for everybody's meal. That's really generous of you. Why don't we go somewhere that you can't even eat anything? The comment under it's also really good. Make a joke out of it by saying something like, come on man, you know I'm vegan. Quit messing with me and pick a place where I can eat as well or you're on your own. Yeah, definitely OP. Whatever you do, don't go along with it OP. The friend is being awful and they need to know it too. And yeah, probably wouldn't be friends with somebody like that. But yeah, of course you're not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for refusing to apologize to my friend's boyfriend? This is so stupid. I feel like I'm in high school again. I, 34 female, have a friend named Summer, also 34 female, who's a free spirit. In high school, she got sent home multiple times for coming to class barefoot. She dropped out of college and hitchhiked to Mexico one summer. Didn't tell anybody where she was going. She forgets to pay her phone bill, so she's occasionally unreachable. I know that sounds like a lot, and it'll sound like even more by the end of this, but we've been friends since we were 10. I don't care that she's a mess. I love her. We're in this for the long haul. Summer's boyfriend, Will, is the opposite of her, and I had hoped that he'd mellow out her wild side. You know how Summer forgets to pay her phone bill? Well, apparently she did it again. I found out when Will called me Friday morning while I was at work. He said he was having trouble locating Summer. I said, yeah, that's Summer for you. If you get a hold of her, please tell her to call me. Best of luck. And then I hung up, thinking nothing of it. Will rang me again and demanded to know where Summer is. I truthfully said that I have no idea, but I'll call her parents for him and see if they know. I went to do exactly that, but Will called me again before I even could. I answered and it was the same question, but angrier. Where the hell is my girlfriend? I'll spare you the suspense. This went on for quite some time. Absolutely no clue why Will was convinced I know where Summer is, but I told him exactly when and where I last saw her and that she disappears like this routinely, which he damn well knows. They've been together for a year. I used the plainest language possible, but Will just wouldn't relent. He called me about 50 times. I put it on silent at first, but by the 51st time I'd had enough, I answered and said, bro, stop blowing up my phone. I don't know where Summer is and I'll block you if I have to. You're gonna get me fired. And then I turned off my phone. Today, Summer called me. I was expecting some sort of an explanation, but she opened with, I'm handing the phone to Will. He wants an apology. Oh, Will, are you joking? I stopped her and I said, apology for what? She said, for saying that he blew up your phone, to which I said, he did blow up my phone, and I was at work too. Maybe I shouldn't have threatened to block, but he didn't get the point the first 50 times when I said it calmly. Summer said, just apologize because he's really pissed. Oh, who cares? And here's where I'm probably the a-hole. No, no to all of that. I'm not apologizing because her milk toast boyfriend, who's basically the human equivalent of a dry ham sandwich, is on some ego trip. I said that but nicer, and she hung up on me. Now I'm thinking I should have sucked it up rather than jeopardize two decades of friendship. Am I the a-hole? Oh god no, OP. You didn't say enough, I don't feel like. Will's a giant a-hole for doing that. And what, they're all upset now? They don't deserve an apology. And there's no reason you should apologize, and you're absolutely right for not apologizing, OP. And the fact that Will doesn't realize that? Gross. This comment's interesting. Not the a-hole, there's definitely more to this, but it's between them, and they both needlessly involved you, and they're trying to use you as a scapegoat so they don't actually have to address whatever their problems are with each other. The top comment says, not the a-hole, you have nothing to apologize for, but he does. 
Also, any reason why he was convinced that you knew where she was? It sounds like there's something else going on there between them. And OP said, the only thing I can think of was back in high school. I'd cover for Summer when she'd sneak out. But we were teenagers and I haven't done that in about 15 years. If I find out, I'll post an edit. But I completely agree that something else must be going on behind the scenes. Yeah, it's so irrational that Will got that angry. Like, is somebody telling Will something about you? It doesn't make sense that they were that angry and they were convinced that you knew where she was. There definitely has to be more to it than that. But yeah, still a giant a-hole move of Will to do that. And then expect you to apologize. You haven't done anything wrong, OP. The next one is called, Am I the a-hole for taking up all the attention at my sister-in-law's baby shower? I, 33 female, am an obstetrician gynecologist, and I've been traveling around different parts of the world on missions with MSF. Long story short, I hadn't been home in 15 months. For some context, I decided to join due to a depressive episode after my ex-girlfriend broke up with me. But I ended up loving it, and I just kept on going on missions for like 15 months. My my ex-girlfriend is a good friend of my sister-in-law Penny. I decided to take some time off and come back for a while before deciding on what's next for me. I returned two weeks ago. My brother, I'll call him Harry, 34 female, and his wife Penny, 28 female, are expecting their first child. They'd scheduled a baby shower for yesterday, and obviously Penny invited me. Family members and some of Harry's old friends were asking me questions about different missions and why I left for charity while I could earn a fortune here. Was it hard being a woman in those areas, etc.? I gave them short answers, but they asked me more questions. Penny suddenly asked me to talk one on one in the middle of the party. She told me I was monopolizing everybody's attention and taking up everybody's time and nobody was paying attention to the purpose of this gathering. Due to me being there, I apologized and I asked her if she wanted me to leave. She said that I'd been enough of a distraction and told me to please leave early. Oh god. I left about half an hour after this talk. So far, everything's good. The next day, Harry called me and told me I'd been a rude guest the day before because I'd ruined their first child's baby shower. He said I should have kept quiet or at the very least left the party the moment Penny asked me to. Was I the a-hole? Well, I don't think so. If we're judging off what you've said here, OP, then no. You're not the a-hole. Like, unless you left out a lot more details. They were asking you questions and you were answering them. Like, oh, sorry for what? Making conversation? There's no way that was distracting. Like this comment says, not the a-hole. Boy, this must have been a very boring baby shower if your mere presence and conversation about work was enough to distract the guests. It's not like you were juggling monkeys while standing on your head. You were answering questions. And what were you supposed to do? Like ignore them or something? How's that your fault? With a situation like this, it is hard to say if they're the a-hole or not. But going off what you've said here, I don't think so. Like if you were trying to make yourself the center of attention, then yeah, that's not good. But that's not what happened. And like this comment says, not the a-hole. You couldn't win no matter what you did. Yeah, definitely seems like that. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for arguing back when my parents were disappointed I didn't name my daughter after my late aunt? My aunt died two weeks before I got pregnant. When I announced, the expectations were on me to name my daughter Elizabeth after my aunt, if she were a daughter. My aunt had Down syndrome and was beloved and special to our family. I adored her too, but I never wanted to name my daughter Elizabeth. I had my own reasons for not liking the name Elizabeth, and my husband feels the same. To us wanting to give our child their own name that is not a family name. I told my family during my pregnancy that if my baby was a girl, she would not be named Elizabeth, and I refused to communicate about it after. My daughter was born three weeks ago, and my family were furious when we announced her name and it wasn't Elizabeth. They believed I'd changed my mind between when I told them and the birth mostly due to the fact that I was aware that they didn't approve. Oh my god, it's not up to them. We've read so many different ones like this and they're so frustrating. They came over on Saturday and they told me I was wrong and asked how Elizabeth would feel if she knew that I hadn't wanted to name my daughter after her. They told me it was an unkind thing to do and that my daughter would have been blessed to be named after her special great aunt. I told her them talking like that is one of the reasons I wouldn't want that. I said my daughter deserves her own name and not one where she'll always be told that she should feel blessed or grateful to be named after my aunt. They told me I was being ridiculous and I was making excuses. What? I told them they were right and I didn't need to make any to them because it was none of their business. They wouldn't let up so I told them to go and to not reach out unless they can accept that my daughter is not Elizabeth. My family told me that arguing with them was not the way to conduct myself. They argued first but I mean I did argue back so am I the a-hole? No you're not the a-hole OP. You arguing back about naming your daughter? It's a pretty big deal. Why did they have this expectation in the first place? Why did they feel like you were gonna name your daughter after your aunt? Why are families like this? We read stuff like this all the time. Did they even say that it was a tradition or something? Or they randomly just expected that you'd name your daughter after your aunt? I don't understand why they even started thinking this. Like this comment says, not the a-hole. These things always befuddle me. You don't owe them excuses and your reasoning is perfectly valid. This is your daughter. Let 
her grow up without the shadow of Elizabeth looming on her. If they don't reach out, tell them it's on them. They're choosing to cut you out, not vice versa. Stand your ground, OP. And you're over something silly too. Like, hey family, maybe don't expect this, you know? And then you won't even have an issue. It's so stupid. And yeah, definitely stand your ground, OP. This is your daughter you're talking about. You don't let people peer pressure you into naming your daughter something that you don't like. Like, that's up to you and your husband and nobody else. And the bloody entitlement of these families, feeling like they have a say. Get out of here. Yeah, you're not the a-hole, OP. Am I the a-hole for ordering food that my husband can't eat? I, 28 female, have been with my husband, 28 male, for nine years. Married for two this summer. We have a daughter who's seven years. We rarely even fight, and if we do, it's been more major and serious things. But this, what to me was a small issue, is now turning into the biggest argument we've ever had. So the problem is that me and our daughter love spicy food. I always have, and ever since I felt comfortable with her trying it, she's loved it too. Sure, we couldn't compete in a spice eating contest, and even though our tolerance is high, it's not extreme, but my husband, he hates it. He's one of those people who thinks spice is unnecessary and only likes to use salt and pepper. This is not a problem. Sometimes I make a batch that suits his taste. Another one for me and our daughter. Sometimes me and our daughter will just eat how it is to his liking. As two little spices is easier to handle than too much, as it would be for him. Now, this Saturday, he was away with friends to go pick up some car parts. It was a 12-hour drive in total, and they left it about nine. I went ahead and ordered from an Indian place that our daughter has as her favorite. My husband also likes this place and just orders something mild when we eat from there. Since my husband was not home, I didn't order anything for him as I thought they would have eaten on the road. When he got home, he greeted us and then immediately went to the fridge and saw some boxes of leftover food. When he opened them, he obviously noticed he couldn't eat any of them. Now we argued for about five minutes over this. The consensus of the argument was him saying that I should have either thought about him and ordered something or I should have asked him if he had eaten or wanted anything. I argued that I would have probably done so if it was only for a few hours that he was away. But he was away for 12 hours and came home about 4 hours after we usually eat. So I assumed that he had eaten. Now he's barely talked. He cooked his dinner for himself because in his words, I can't be bothered. He texted me from the living room when he was cooking for me and our daughter that he hoped I was happy to have my food my way now. Oh, come on. He's extremely weird about this. He's never acted this way about something like this. And I'm getting even more confused by it all. Edit, hi, and thank you for all your comments comments and everybody's judgment. To clear something up, no, my husband did not cheat. He was with his friend picking up car parts. He does not have a girlfriend or feels guilty about something that happened on the trip. We talked this morning and he told me that he just felt forgotten about. And after he ate, he was too ashamed to say that he was sorry for starting an argument about this. I also apologize for not even texting him and I told him I was sorry for hurting him and also continued the argument without considering his feelings. Everything is great and from now on, I'll try to better our communication. Thank you yet again for the help. Oh yeah, it has a happy ending. Yeah, that's good, OP. You weren't in the wrong for this, and obviously your husband knows that. And it was because of your intent. Like you even said yourself, you would have asked him if he wanted something, if he was only going to be a few hours and not like 12 hours. And yeah, that does make sense. And that shows that your intent wasn't to like hurt his feelings or something. The top comment says your husband should have let you know when he was coming home. He was planning to eat dinner, even though he was getting home after dinner time. Hours after dinner time. Late enough, you would have reasonably thought he would have fed himself somewhere along the road. Not the a-hole for not being a mind reader. Any reasonable person would have thought, oh, husband won't be home for dinner. Now's a good time for the kid and I to get some hot food. Not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for not allowing my daughter to significantly alter my wedding dress? My 44 female daughter, 25 female, is getting married later this year to her girlfriend, 27 female. I've always dreamed of walking her down the aisle. My husband passed away when she was a child and she enjoyed talking about a future wedding and playing bride when she was a child, picking flowers and colors and venues. She would love watching the videos of my wedding and seeing me and her father get married. And it was important in our bonding. When she was 13, I promised her my wedding dress. However, her clothing style is more manly. She began refusing to wear dresses or skirts when she was in her late teens, even trying to demand her school allow her to wear trousers. And it was difficult convincing her to wear dresses to formal events. She's gone through phases of wanting short hair, wanting to be a boy and getting tattoos. I've always been very supportive of all of this. Even when she met her girlfriend and proposed to her, I have encouraged her as much as I can. I'm contributing significantly to the wedding. I recently called her and I asked her when she wanted me to bring over the dress, as it would probably need slight alterations, and she dropped the bombshell on me that she wanted to wear a suit and have my wedding dress altered to remove the skirt portion, so that the bodice could be worn with trousers. At first I agreed, but I dragged my feet bringing the dress over. After a few weeks I changed my mind and I told her the dress was important to me, and I didn't want her to ruin it. When I promised her the dress, it was because I thought she was going to wear it as a dress, and she'll only get to wear it if it is as a dress. I offered that her girlfriend could wear it as a dress instead, but my daughter said that she would still be ruining it. Her girlfriend is a much larger woman than me, so it would need a lot more
more altering. And has since not been answering my messages except with saying that the dress would be a connection to her dad, so she's disappointed not to have it. I offered to go dress shopping with her for a replacement, but apparently some of her family think that I'm stopping her having the dress because I disagree with her being masculine. Am I the a-hole for telling her that she can have it as a dress or not have it at all? I may be the a-hole because I promised it to her, but that was when she was very young and before I knew she wanted to change it. Interesting, there's a lot of good comments here and it is labeled as not the a-hole. And also there is an update, so I'll read that in a second. The top comment says, not the a-hole, you offer to lend or let her use your dress, not tear it apart in a way that destroys it forever. This dress is yours with living, breathing memories attached to it. If it can't be returned to you in its original state, then no, you're not the a-hole for changing your mind on this. You might need to ask a professional seamstress about what's possible. I'm sure you have other possessions that actually belong to her dad, and she may be able to incorporate one of them, or recreate your bouquet or cake or something similar, if that connection is what she's seeking. And then also this comment, not the a-hole, but what are you saving it for? To be donated after you're gone for a stranger to alter into something else? Your daughter wants to honor you by making your wedding gown into her own. But then also comments like this one, you're the a-hole because you don't care if significant alterations are made to the dress for your daughter-in-law, only if the bodice and skirt are separated, which screams that you do have problems with your daughter's masculinity. If you're not willing to allow her to wear the dress, perhaps offer to have the bodice recreated. But what I do is talk to somebody about how to separate the bodice and the skirt so you can have both of them when the wedding's over. Okay, let's read the update. I posted recently about my daughter surprising me by wanting to turn my wedding dress into a suit, which I refused despite having promised her because the reality hurt me. I was upset and it made me feel better to see people agree with me, but the comments that made me upset made me think about the future and they've helped me empathize with my daughter. My daughter came over tonight and apologized for ignoring me and explained that she'd always thought that she'd been promised she could have the dress to own rather than borrow. So she was sad to have lost that dream. I apologize for if I'd ever come off as not supportive of her. As many comments said, I sounded homophobic and I wanted to be clear that I'm not. I respect and love my daughter. We talked about many things, especially about my husband, how his presence could still be felt on the day, how my daughter felt jealous that her fiance would get to share the day with both of her parents while she only has a memory. We watched the wedding video again. It's been a few years and cried a bit. We also had some wine, so I apologize if this is not completely clear. I told her that I hadn't realized how much giving up the dress would hurt and that I didn't think I could completely sacrifice it and that I would talk to a tailor about if the dress could be separated and be put back together and returned to me. But if not, then I'd help her find a suit as an alternative and I'd give her some of the dress's lining to use in it. I also surprised her with her father's wedding cufflinks to wear, as suggested by many commenters, and my veil in case her fiance wanted to wear it, and she was extremely happy with this as a compromise. She asked if she could try the dress on just to see what it would look like. I will admit I was hoping that she would change her mind once she had it on. She let me do her hair and makeup however I felt like. She was laughing so hard because it reminded her of when I did her braids for school. She picked out stuff for me to wear too in her style, just to see how I'd look and we took pictures together and danced. She did look beautiful in the dress. It was like I'd always dreamed when she was my little girl, but she didn't look like herself. Suddenly, I knew a lot of you had been right. I hugged her and I apologized and I told her to take it and do whatever she wants. She's gone home now and some parts of me regret giving it to her. I have been teary putting away the photos, but more than that, I'm thankful that I got to see what I thought would happen and realize it wasn't right and that I can say goodbye to the expectations that I'd had for so long. My daughter is happy as herself and it's an honor that she wants to share that with me. Oh, that's so beautiful. Hell yeah, OP. Good job. That's such a good update and such a good ending to this. Hell yeah, that's so cute. I didn't expect that to be so wholesome. Yeah, like the top comment says, don't think of it as memories being altered along with the dress. Think of it as a family memento with even more happy memories attached to it being passed down. Mementos are what you make them. You did the right thing. Yeah, that's such a beautiful update. Hell yeah, OP. The next one is called, am I the a for being too hard on my dad by saying that he let me down when he chose being married over what was best for me. My dad and I, 17 female, started therapy three weeks ago and last week during our third session I opened up bluntly about how I feel like my dad let me down and failed me by prioritizing being married and his own happiness. This was not the first time I tried speaking openly to my dad about this but it is the first time he said he appeared willing to listen and the first time that he took the harm it was doing to our relationship seriously. Let me explain. My mum died when I was just a baby and my dad was a single dad until I was four. It was then that he met my stepmom, his wife Sharon. Sharon was a divorced mum with a nine-year-old son and an eight-year-old daughter. They got married when I was five. Sharon's kids, my step-siblings, they never liked me. They always hated me. When my dad and Sharon first got married, I thought of them as my siblings and I loved them totally, but they were really mean to me. They'd say they hated me, that everybody hated me, that I should leave. They encouraged me to run away because nobody would miss me. They said I would never be their sister or their family, and I was a weirdo for calling them my siblings. Sharon noticed more than my dad, but I used to tell my dad, and when things got bad, I asked if we could leave. 
but he tried to reassure me, but he was very dismissive of how much it was hurting me. He told me that we couldn't leave because Sharon was his wife and we were all a family now and you can't leave a family. Sharon only ever said anything when her kids made me cry. I have two half siblings from my dad and Sharon. I was so excited when they were born and I bonded with them and I loved helping them and playing with them. But then my step siblings decided to use them against me and Sharon would let them do more. And eventually they told our half siblings that if they wanted to do cool stuff with them, they had to say no to playing with me and rejecting me became the normal thing. My younger siblings would repeat a lot of what my step siblings would say to me. This continued even after my step siblings moved out because they'd take our younger siblings out or they would visit them and bring gifts. For the year to year, I've been withdrawn and I've stopped trying. I don't try to do anything with my younger siblings. I don't hang out with dad like I used to and my focus is on moving out. My dad started to notice last year and he sent me to a therapist and then decided that family therapy was needed for the two of us. And this is when last week happened. My dad looked really shocked at first and then he was apologetic. After we got home, Sharon asked me why I had to be so hard on my dad. My dad and Sharon argued about it. I spent the rest of last week trying to be alone with my thoughts. Our next session is tomorrow. Sharon apologized for saying what she did, but reiterated that she feels like I handled it bad. My dad tried to talk to me since the appointment, but I don't know how to talk to him anymore without our therapist. Am I the a-hole? No, of course you're not the a-hole, OP. How could you even be the a-hole? Your dad and Sharon didn't do anything about this. Like the way that your step-siblings were treating you and stuff. You're not the a-hole even a little bit. Yeah, the top comment. Not the a-hole. It's bad enough that your dad and Sharon knew about your step-siblings bullying you. But the fact that they didn't shut your step-siblings down when they played childish games with your half-siblings and manipulated them to be nasty to you as well tells me that they're bad parents. You have a right to be angry. Your dad is supposed to be your advocate and he did fail you. And OP said, that's right. I think my dad would have wasted his time trying to influence my step-siblings. But my siblings are his kids and he could have done a lot more to try and help us with that relationship. So they know to ignore the stuff that my step-siblings were saying. Instead, now they have their favourites through manipulation and they're used to saying mean things about me. Yeah, that's awful, OP. And of course you're not the a-hole. It's so sad. Am I the a-hole for telling my son that we don't really have any room for him right now? So he needs to live with his dad and stepmom. My ex-husband and I divorced when my son was 10. My ex had found somebody new. We went for 50-50 custody, but he still had to pay some child support. I went back to school at that time. On the weeks his dad had him, I buckled down and I did nothing but school work. When he was with me, I made sure I had time for him before and after school. I did expect him to help around the house, but nothing excessive, mainly cleaning up after himself and helping with cooking and laundry. His dad's house was more fun. I tried to make my home welcoming. I bought a used PS4 and I got fiber optic internet. It wasn't enough for him. When he was 14, Handy's father got the car to award my ex primary custody. I did fight it, but my son made it clear that he'd run away if I didn't give in. Counseling didn't help. I tried everything. It was devastating having my son decide I wasn't somebody he wanted to spend time with. He started skipping visitation. When he did come, he'd leave the house and not come home until it was time to sleep. During this time, I started a relationship with my current husband. He helped me through this. He wasn't on my radar romantically. Nobody was. So he got close by being an amazing friend. I asked him out and we got married six months later. We had known each other since I went back to university. Six months after we got married, I got pregnant. By strange coincidence, so did the woman my ex was cheating with. Not the woman he left me for. A newer model. He had sold my house and my husband and I bought a condo together. Just a two bedroom apartment with a tiny den. We made the den into a nursery and we consolidated our offices into the second bedroom. My ex moved in with his new girlfriend and she isn't a fan of my son. His stepmother doesn't want him there if his father isn't there. So my son is also in the new house with his dad and also his dad's pregnant girlfriend and her mum. My son is 16 now and he called me to see if he could stay with me. I said I didn't really have any room. He asked me what I did with this room. He didn't even know that I'd sold the house. He's very upset. He called me a biatch because I don't have a place for him to stay. I said he could stay in our living room or on the couch. Not acceptable. I talked to my husband and we have enough money from the sale of my house and his old bachelor pad as well as our condo to buy back into the market. We were waiting for interest rates to fall and we were going to move to a more reasonably priced city. I told my son if he could take the living room for now, we could have a room for him in six months. He moved in with his grandparents. He isn't happy there. At least his dad got him a car so he can drive to his same school. My son is pissed that I prioritized my new baby and my work over him. I had no expectation to ever have to house him again. My ex called me and told me to make our office into a room for our son. I told him that our son's circumstances were his fault, not mine. Yeah, so this one is marked as everybody sucks here. But I don't really know if that's true. And a lot of the comments are saying not the a-hole. The top comment says everybody sucks. Your son made his decision and he got what he wanted. It's not cool that he's now facing the consequences of his father's infidelity. Again. But this decision is legally bound. It is your ex's responsibility to care for your son by his own doing. With that being said, as a mother, I think you're letting an opportunity to rekindle the relationship pass. He's 16 and it was 
probably really hard to reach out to you and ask for help. There has to be a more creative solution that can get you both under the same roof, while also giving everybody their space during such a transitional stage. And OP said underneath, I'm literally buying a house so he can have a room. Yeah, it sounds like you're really trying, OP. And yeah, like the second top comment says, not the a-hole. People are upset saying that you should have held a place for him, but you'd previously been doing that, only to have your son not want to have anything to do with you. It's a lose-lose for you here, unfortunately. If you'd kept on pushing the issue despite the son saying and showing that he wanted nothing to do with you, they'd have called you a boundary-stomping a-hole. It's perfectly fine for you to have found a new love. It's perfectly fine for you to have another child, or however many more you two wish to have. That doesn't make this a do-over child like somebody else stated. And you aren't replacing your son. It was fine for you two to downsize to accommodate the lives that you currently had. Your son didn't want to be with you until he realized he wasn't a priority with his dad anymore. Yeah, he's a child, but he and his father both made the choices they made, and that just isn't working out for him now, is it? It's lovely that you and your current husband are looking for homes to accommodate him. Truly, it is. But I think the relationship between you and your son could use some counseling before he comes back to your house and craps all over you, your husband, and the baby. But look, I'm nobody. Don't let me mess up your life, girl. The next one is called, Am I the A-Hoff for deciding not to buy food for my fiance's family anymore? Every other week, my fiance, 22 female, and I, 23 male, go out to eat with her family. And last week, we went to a Korean barbecue restaurant owned by my uncle, 59 male, where I paid for everybody's meal. I only asked them to cover the tip for the waitress, which they agreed to do so. The total bill was over $240 and I paid. Usually when I cover the tab for my friends or significant other, they generously tip since they're only responsible for the gratuity, not the cost of the meal itself. However, a few days ago, my cousins, 21 male, revealed that they'd only left a $1 tip and they've tipped only $1 before. I was shocked and disappointed because a $1 tip is insultingly low, especially considering I treated them to alcohol and dessert. So I discussed the issue with my fiance, but her family insists that they never tip or only pays like a dollar for a tip at restaurant or general services. This is happening in the USA. As a result, I informed my fiance our bi-weekly restaurant outings would have to change. I also have informed to my fiance about this. I told her that I'd only paid for their meals as a kind gesture. While my fiance was annoyed, she ultimately understood. Yesterday, they asked if I would buy their food again next week, to which I responded that they'll need to cover their own expenses for their meal. I didn't want to confront them about their habit of tipping only a dollar, so I decided to handle it differently this time and simply pretend to cover the tip for them. Her family didn't take that so well. They accused me of being ungrateful, arguing that they were the ones taking the time to meet up with me bi-weekly, and that asking them to tip was unreasonable in the beginning. They also suggested that since my family is wealthy, it's only fair that I continue paying for their meals. My fiance was surprisingly on my side. She knew that her family had this issue. She just didn't have the courage to inform them about it. Am I the a-hole for deciding not to buy food for my fiance's family anymore? Update, I didn't break up with her, but my family is furious I sent top upvoted reply. They refuse to talk to me. They've called my fiance multiple multiple times, saying things like, is this how Koreans do their business? And suggesting that she should break up with that, along with other offensive and more racist remarks. What? Of course you're not the a-hole, OP. That's infuriating. The top comment OP was talking about says, arguing they were the ones taking time to meet up with me bi-weekly. Lol. Just reply, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was such a burden for you. Going forward, we can stop getting together bi-weekly then. I didn't realize you considered it such a sacrifice, and I can't in good conscience keep asking you to make such a sacrifice. You don't owe these people anything. They're trying to take advantage of you. Stop letting them try. Not the a-hole. Oh, they sound awful. Yeah, like this comment says, they called you ungrateful for not appreciating checks, notes, you buying them food. My dude, not the a-hole, but reconsider marrying into this trashy family. Am I the a-hole for not showing up for my birthday dinner at a nice restaurant knowing everybody was waiting for me? And my parents had to pay a deposit for the table? I'm 16 male, the second oldest of four. My older sister, 18, has Down syndrome and is medically complex with complex needs. She also has food allergies. My younger sister, 13, has a host of food allergies and some of them are very serious and she's also on the spectrum. Then we have my younger brother, 11, and he has a lot of medical issues related to food and allergies that go along with it. We always try to make sure places are accessible for them, especially because my older sister is in a wheelchair. This does mean that I can be overlooked. It does mean making sacrifices or accepting that things will never be the same, as far as it would be for a kid in a family that has less extra or special needs. I'm used to not getting my favorite dishes, and I'm used to not getting my top pick for vacations because my parents don't think it's accessible enough or autism friendly enough. I'm used to my siblings never getting turned down for that stuff. After a while, it became something I expected. I was lucky that my maternal grandparents tried to make up for it when they could, and my friend's family would 
would also include me in their family for stuff like meals out. My favourite restaurant in our city is an Indian place. My favourite dish is their samosas. I never get to eat there with my parents and siblings and we never get takeout from there because it's not deemed safe for all of my siblings. Sometimes that stings, especially when my parents proclaim that they always get their kids' favourite food from their favourite restaurant for their birthdays each year. This year, my parents made a big deal over me turning 16 and they told me to pick my favourite place for us to have a family dinner for my birthday. A family dinner that included extended family. I told them my favourite place and they told me that wouldn't work. I asked if they wanted my favourite place or a place that was catered to my siblings. They asked if I didn't want to cater to my siblings and I said no. They asked where I wanted to go. I said the Indian place. They gave me one of those looks and said they'd give me more time to think. A couple of weeks after they asked me where I wanted to eat for my birthday and I told them my answer hadn't changed. They asked me if I could really enjoy my birthday knowing that it wasn't accessible and safe for my siblings to eat there and I said yeah since it's meant to be my birthday and they wanted me to say my favourite restaurant they told me they'd booked the family favourite and they went ahead and did that. The family favourite has nothing I actually like I just sort of tolerated. They had everything planned, invited everybody and when the evening came for dinner I just didn't go. My parents are furious with me. I had everything taken for a week and they planned to continue the punishment in some way. My grandparents defended me, but my parents said that I was rude. Am I the a-hole? Nah, you're definitely not the a-hole, OP. Your parents are definitely the a-holes. Yeah, like the top comment says, not the a-hole. I'm so sorry. I hope your grandparents or best friends celebrated you. Just know that in two years you can escape, unless you can go to your grandparents or your friends to live there now. And they'll always wonder why you didn't want to be with them anymore, or take care of your siblings when they can't anymore. The more fair alternative would to be order takeout on birthdays, so you can get your favourite and they can get safe foods and then you can eat at home or wherever can host your group as a whole. Or maybe one parent takes the birthday kid out for an outing and meal of their choice, one on one time, and then cake back at home with the family. And OP responded and said they did. My best friend's parents even bought me a gift card for the restaurant so I could go out with some of my friends. My grandparents also made sure I was celebrated in a way that actually celebrates me. You would think that'd be a better option. But they always eat out or if we do order takeout, they'll only order from one place for the convenience it gives them. Oh yeah, the parents suck. You're not the a-hole OP. How bloody sad. And oh, we can only order from one place for convenience. The little to no effort they put in for you OP is so sad. And yeah, you're for sure not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for reducing my parents' allowance by whatever amount they share with my siblings? My parents live in a less developed country than I do. My siblings and I all live in North America or Europe. When I got my new job, I did my budget and I saw that I could send home roughly $1,300 a month without it affecting my personal comfort. I'd still be able to save for my future and my mum and dad could retire. So when I was home I set up a joint account for us. That way I could see if they needed more and make sure that they were not getting scammed or anything. After about a year and a half I started noticing there was about a $200 transfer every month. I asked them about it and they said he was having difficulties. The brother I think they're talking about with his budget so they were helping him out. My brother doesn't need help. He's a scholarship student. He actually receives a stipend from my home government to study abroad. What he wants is money to party. So I reduced the amount I give them by 200. Obviously they don't need it if they can afford to give it away every month. My mum called me when she noticed and was yelling at me for being a crappy daughter and sister. I asked her to tell me exactly how much money they contributed to my party fund when I was away for school. Just so you know, the answer is nothing. They also tried talking me out of attending university in Canada. I'm not sure how common the idea of filial piety is in other cultures, but it's a big deal in mine. And she went off about it. I told her that they didn't need the money and I had better ways to spend $200 than to gift it to my brother so he could go get drunk with his friends. She said that I'm treating them like children by restricting how they spend their money. I replied that I wasn't going to subsidize my brother through them and that from now on the amount they'd get would be 1100 and that if they sent him money again I'd know about it and I'd reduce their money by that amount going forward. My brother called me to complain about cutting off his money from our parents. I said that I hadn't. He was welcome to tell our parents to go back to backbreaking jobs at their age just to pay for his partying in London. Then they would have my money to live off and their wages to pay for his drinking. My boyfriend is on my side, as are many of my friends. Most of my family and people from my culture think I'm being an a-hole. I don't understand how they even feel like that. However, for the last two months, my parents have been only spending on themselves. Yeah, and they should. There's no way to make this into you being an a-hole OP. Like, no matter which way you look at this, you're not doing anything wrong. And you're being so generous and you're helping them out and you're doing something that so many people wish they could do. And they're acting like this about it. Ridiculous and entirely and so ungrateful. Yeah, you're not the a-hole and I don't even understand how people think you are. The top comment says not the a-hole and since your parents probably don't tell you often enough, I'll say it for them. You're an amazingly thoughtful, loving and caring child to your parents.
parents. You send them upwards of $1,000 every month just so they can retire and not have to work. That's amazing. You're also reducing the amount you give them as preventative measure to make sure they don't get taken advantage of by a spoiled son. If you give $200 now without consequences, it would eventually increase to $300 and then $400 and then $500 and so on. You set a boundary that'll help your parents to keep their money for themselves so they can continue to remain retired and not spread themselves too thin. Yeah, a million percent. You're doing a wonderful thing, OP, and they're so ungrateful. Oh, that's infuriating. Am I the a-hole for not picking up my phone on vacation and leaving my tenant, her mum, and my mum to deal with police for a couple of hours? I rent my basement suite out to my mum's best friend, daughter Sally. I knew her growing up and I used to babysit her. The basement has two means of escape other than going into my area. It is fully up to code as an in-law suite. There's no reason for anybody to go through it into my space. I went on vacation and I left my door to the basement dead bolted. Three days into my vacation, I get an alert on my phone that there's an unauthorized event at my house. I look at the video. It's my mum opening the door for Sally's mum. They freak out when the alarm goes off. Usually if I need my mum to get into my apartment, I'll give her a temporary code. It's always the same one because she gets confused by tech, but I have to activate it beforehand. I can't do it retroactively. The only choice would be to call her and give her my personal code. I check the cameras in my house and strangely enough, my house is not on fire. I didn't leave the faucet running. There's no emergency. This is where I might be the a-hole. Once I saw they were just messing around with my area for no good reason, I put my phone on airplane mode and I went back to the party. Maybe 90 minutes later, a concierge at the resort came and said that I was urgently needed on the phone. My dad has written down my whereabouts and they called the front desk for me. I excused myself and I went for the call. I asked my mum what the emergency was. Why was she getting me out of my friend's wedding reception? Was my house okay? Was my dad okay? She very brusquely told me to shut up and talk to the cops and the security patrol. I talked to them and I apologised for wasting their time. I asked them what the emergency was that brought my mother into my house. They handed her back the phone and let her tell me that her friend didn't want to sit in the basement while she was visiting her daughter. So my mum agreed to come let them use my area and it'd be a secret. I asked the security company to please lock my house back up and take my key back from my mum. She started to protest but I hung up. I enjoyed the rest of my trip and my dad has agreed to pay any fines or penalties that come from the false alarm. Sally's mum wants her to move out. That's fine by me. I don't need a tenant and I was only doing it as a favour. Sally's almost apoplectic, begging me not to kick her out. She said that she didn't even know what our mums were up to until the alarm went off. My mum is pissed that I wasn't available immediately to get them out of trouble and she's furious that I won't give her back my key. She thinks I did it on purpose. I'm not sure how she thinks I forced her to break into my home without permission. So am I the a-hole for making them sweat until they got a hold of me and taking my key back since I can't trust her now? No, you're not the a-hole OP. And how are you meant to trust her after this? The top comment says not the a-hole. Your mum and your mum's friend chose to ignore your boundaries. Mum used a key meant only for emergencies to break into your property when there was no emergency, just entitlement. These are the consequences of her actions. I don't blame you for putting your phone in aeroplane mode while at the important event. It's not your mess and it's not your problem. I wouldn't kick Sally out if she doesn't want to go though. She's an adult and can make her own choices. Just a reminder that if she has visitors, she needs to remind them to stay on her side of the property line. Also, maybe give the key to your dad instead. He seems way more responsible and reasonable than your mum. Yeah, you're not the a-hole OP. They messed around and they found out. Am I the a-hole for telling my biological mum's family that I don't visit because I don't have a bed there? I've lived with my dad my entire life. Life. He married my mum when I was two and she's all but adopted me. 15 female. My biological mum lives about five miles away with her husband and their kids. 12 female and 8 male. Never have and I probably never will. I visit her sometimes like once a month. But we both know that she's not my mum. I've called her by her first name since I was like five. I don't have a room or a bed at her house and there's no pictures of me in there. My biological mum talked me into going to some family party with her and her family. I don't know anybody there so I was mostly just hanging out with her while I was there. She started talking about how I never see her and that it took an act of God to get me to go to this party. So I told her to show them my room. She tried to show them her daughter's room. So I said, no, that's Amanda's room. See the A by her bed. And she was out of rooms after that because it's only a two bedroom house. She pulled me aside and said to stop and that I was making her look bad. So we went back and I told her siblings that I wasn't even allowed to talk about not having a bed at her house anymore because it makes her look bad. Apparently that wasn't good enough either because she tried telling me to give her my phone. I reminded her that she's not my mum. And then I called my mum and I told her to pick me up. My mum picked me up and she's really mad at my biological mum for all of this. But my dad says it sucks, but I should have taken it since I'm probably never going to see these people again. I'm not in trouble, but they can't agree whether I was right or wrong. So I wanted to know if I was the a-hole. No, you're not the a-hole. And 
once again, the top comment. Not the a-hole. She wanted to put up a facade about your relationship for her guests. You showed them the truth. You didn't make her look bad. She made herself look bad. If she didn't want to feel embarrassed, she could have won. Not brought it up to her guests. Two, done the bare minimum of getting you an air mattress for your visits. Or number three, bought a bunk bed or a Murphy bed. Maybe tell her you won't do overnight visits. Or just avoid visits until she makes some actual effort in your relationship. And OP said she doesn't want me to visit. She just wants to complain that I never do to her family. Wow, that's so awful. Yeah, of course you're not the a-hole, OP. Am I the a-hole for cancelling our apartment signing after I found out that my boyfriend bought an expensive car? My boyfriend, 31 male, and I, 28 female, have been together for just over two years. We've been living with roommates and we've been looking to move in for a while. It's expensive and I have a dog, so it has been difficult finding a landlord that'll be okay with the dog. My friend has been moving out and she has a dog and is willing to sublet for us. The landlord said they're okay with signing us on if we want to stay after the eight-month sublet. It's a fairly good price near work, so I'm pretty happy with it. We went through the credit card check and we were about to sign it, but recently I discovered that my boyfriend bought another car. He already has a daily driver, but he wants a weekend car, which I personally find ridiculous why anybody needs two cars. He has a Honda Record that is fine, and he's never complained about problems with it, but he recently said that he bought another car. He isn't the best with money. He really likes to spend until the last dollar and doesn't have any savings. I've had to bail him out twice on rent. We both pay around $1,100 plus utilities, and he makes around $70,000 a year, so he should have savings, but he doesn't. He paid me back, but it was months later than we agreed on. So I wasn't really happy that he did that, but I didn't realize he bought such an expensive car. He didn't show it to me until Saturday when he picked me up in a Corvette. I don't know what model, but I asked him how much it was and he said it wasn't my business. And I was pissed off that he bought a clearly expensive car. He admitted later because I refused to let it go and it was 42000 and he traded in the Honda. Even then, his payments are almost $800 a month. I was so mad he did that, especially because he asked me to cover part of his share of the apartment security deposit a week before he bought the car. I called my friend and I apologized and I told her I can't sign the lease and she said she was okay with it. I hadn't paid the deposit yet thankfully and my roommate is okay with me staying so I'm good. But my boyfriend's lease is ending and the landlord wants him out so he's mad at me for cancelling us moving in together because now we still needs to move and we'll probably be paying more than if we moved in together. He yelled at me for butting in on his business saying that it's not my business what he buys. I think that's fair but he also doesn't have any money and bought an expensive car so if anything does go wrong I have to pay his share of the rent oh my god you're so not the a-hole OP this is so bloody frustrating first of all they bought this bloody car before they even paid you back did I read that right also he said he wanted a weekend car and not a daily driver but he got rid of his daily driver so it's not even a weekend car anymore I totally understand being passionate about cars I've always been so passionate about them but one you don't buy cars if you can't afford them and two you especially Especially don't buy them if you can't afford them and you not being able to afford them is going to negatively impact people that you care about. Yes, yeah, so irresponsible. Oh my god. Yeah, like this comment, not the a-hole. I was so mad he did that, especially because he asked me to cover part of his share of the apartment security deposit a week before he bought the car. This is when it became your business. Yeah, 100% and you're not the a-hole, OP. I can't believe that. Like, yeah, if you definitely can afford a car and it's not going to negatively impact you or anybody around you, then yeah, you can buy it and you can have that sort of attitude where people can't tell you what to do with your money. But in this situation, that's a huge red flag and also 800 a month car payment on a 70,000 wage. Like that's tying up a lot of money for a Corvette. Yeah, there's heaps of red flags here, OP. Am I the a for screaming at my parents for trying to use my college funds to pay off my brother's debt? I, 15 female, screamed at my parents for trying to pay off the loan that my brother, 19 male, had taken from the bank to purchase a new car that he can't pay back. I know they're only trying to help my brother get on his feet now that he's left home. But it's been my dream since I was little to be a pilot and the training for it is very costly so every little piece of money I've ever made I've been putting into a bank account to save. I've even started working two jobs of babysitting and helping out in a local cafe. Two weeks ago my brother brought himself a brand new car with a loan that he got from the bank and now he's telling my parents that he can't pay it back. He doesn't have a job and my parents pay for his college accommodation. When I heard this I didn't think much of it and I offered to bring his CV into a couple of places in town to see if he could get a job. Last night, my parents told me that they were going to take the money from my account to pay for his loan, and I was furious with them. I screamed and I called them a-holes and I said they didn't care about me at all because they never supported my dreams. I'm the only girl in my family with a younger and older brother. I haven't spoken to my parents since then. I feel like all my hard work has gone down the drain, and I feel like I'll never get to accomplish my dream. My relationship with my brother was good before this, and I know that his bad financial decisions were not intended to harm me, but 
I'm still angry at him and my parents for behaving like this. Update, I was able to get in contact with my brother and he had no idea that my parents planned to use my income for his debt and he immediately agreed to refuse to let them go through with this. He also told me that yes, her parents co-signed a loan and that they said they were able to pay it if he needed. I also visited my uncle today at his bank and sat with him for a long time to discuss my options. He has said that he checked our parents' finances and that they're more than capable of paying the loan without using my income. He said that unfortunately there's nothing I can do until I'm 18 about the joint account. Right now I feel betrayed by my parents so I'm staying at my friend's house for a while. My entire family now knows about this. Wow, that's so bad. What a terrible thing for the parents to do or want to do. And yeah, of course, you're not the a-hole OP. The top comment says, absolutely freaking not the a-hole. What the actual hell is wrong with your parents? You worked for and you saved that money on your own. I'm so sorry and ashamed on your parents' behalf. You're more mature than your brother and your parents combined. Start hiding the money you make where they can't find it. You will go far, OP. It's a setback, but with your determination, you will rise above all of these a-holes in life. My heart goes out to you, not the a-hole. I feel like we should read one more. Am I the a-hole for not telling my family I could cook and letting them embarrass themselves in front of my in-laws? Growing up as the youngest in my family, I, 27 female, was often treated like I was a little princess who couldn't do anything for myself, which was aided by the fact I was a very clumsy child and some things took me a lot of practice and patience to get right. I was the butt of the joke and my family loved to tease me and crack jokes about the fact that I couldn't boil water or I was a disaster everywhere I went. They would always say I could never be trusted in a kitchen and would need to find a man who could cook and clean for me in the future. It was something I resented and it did make me feel self-conscious. I'd try really hard to not mess up but somehow I always seem to. Moving out to attend college was the best thing I ever did. I met so many great people including my husband and I thrived in an environment where nobody was making fun of me. One of my friends was in culinary school and she taught me a lot of cooking skills that I could use in my day-to-day -day life. She was really patient and suggested that I might have something like dyspraxia. She recognized some of my difficulties as being similar to her brother's. Sure enough, I went to the doctor and she referred me to specialists to help diagnose me. I have a milder form, which is why it was never brought to attention enough. I just looked like I was careless or clumsy as a kid. I didn't see or speak to my family a lot during this time. When I did, it was always awkward. My husband, then boyfriend, would come with me sometimes and he was always so annoyed by the jokes they'd make about me. When we got married, we actually eloped while on vacation overseas with his family. It was amazing and made for a much less stressful wedding. My family and my in-laws had seen each other once or twice before, but briefly. So when my family decided they wanted to come and see me and stayed for a weekend in a hotel, we decided to host both families and I cooked. But we didn't announce that until my parents had started making their little jokes and crediting only my husband for the food and the cleanliness of our home. My in-laws were aware of how my family acts, but they didn't realize how little they believed in me. My husband giddily informed my family after they'd really made asses of themselves that I had cooked the whole meal and that we shared those responsibilities. He said the same thing goes for the cleaning. My family were like, no, she can't. But my in-laws said I was cooking almost as long as they knew me and I did a good job every time. My mother-in-law mentioned my diagnosis and my dad told her they thought I was just trying to make excuses. My family were awkward and my in-laws left with a better understanding of my family and a nice dose of anger at them for how they were going to humiliate me in front of them. My family were also pissed off for me not explaining things better beforehand. Not the condition, but the fact I do cook now and I could do it. They said I tried to humiliate them out of pettiness. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole, OP. They treat you awfully forever and they act like it's your fault. Your family sucks, OP. Obviously, you already know that, but yeah, they sound really bad. And like this comment says, not the a-hole. They humiliated themselves out of pettiness. They continue to make jokes at your expense, just like they always do. They're angry because all they had to do to not look bad was to treat you with a minimum level of politeness and respect in front of company. As usual, they were not capable of doing so. Congratulations on getting away from such awful people. Am I the a-hole for refusing to host any more family get-togethers at our house because I hate hosting my in-laws and their poor manners? My husband and I finally bought our first house, five bedroom, three bathroom a year ago. Over the holidays, we thought we'd take on the role of hosting a few get-togethers. From my perspective, it was hell. I hated every second of it. I never really hosted anything or entertained or whatever you want to call it. Maybe it's just that I'm not used to the requirements, but growing up, my mum or dad would host family, but they were nothing like this. My in-laws did stuff like let kids run around school 
screaming and yelling up and down the stairs, touching things that didn't belong to them, making messes and not making them clean up after themselves. Parents didn't bring anything for the kids to do and got pissy with us for not having anything for them. Brought a dog into our house, let the dog on the furniture, left chairs sticking out of tables and counters instead of pushing them in, stomped around the house with their shoes on despite being asked to remove them, left trash and paper plates etc sitting around or balled up instead of placing it in the trash, opened multiple bottles or cans of drinks and only took a sip and then left it open, pulled out and used new rolls of toilet paper when there was still plenty left on the rolls, opened medicine cabinets, only one person asked if we needed help at any point, and it was my husband's brother's new girlfriend who we were all meeting for the first time, she offered to help us clean up and bring out food, oh my god never let them back in your house ever OP, this was a terrible experience, my husband was shocked at his family's behaviour and didn't know what to say, I don't blame him for this at all, he was just a part of the hosting as me, but he was seeing his family through new eyes as well, when he talked to his mum and dad after, they just laughed and said, that's what hosting is, wow, <laughs> oh no that's so bad, so we decided together we would rather not go through all of that again, Easter is coming up and my in-laws asked what our plans are, my husband said that we aren't going to host after everyone's awful manners, my mum and dad are upset with us, <laughs> oh get out of here, we have the big house so they figured it would be on us from now on, we said the only way we'd ever even consider hosting is if every member of his family pitched in in some way, they said that defeats the purpose of somebody else hosting and that nobody should be expected to pitch in if we offered a host, so we said we won't host, maybe I'm just not meant to host, but are we truly so far out of bounds to refuse to host anymore because of how his family behaves, hell no OP, they feel like if they go to somebody else's house they can just make a mess and be awful, like what's wrong with them, imagine going to somebody else's house and acting like this and you can tell from what they've said they don't feel like there's anything wrong with acting like this, shame on them for real, like why do they feel like just because you're hosting that somehow means they can act like this in your house, that's not okay OP and the fact that they feel like it's okay doesn't mean it is, if I were you OP after something like this I wouldn't even want them to come over to visit let alone coming over because you're hosting something, that's so infuriating, it's so blatantly disrespectful and the fact that they don't even see that is a massive red flag, the top comment says not the a-hole, your house, your rules and if people are ignoring those rules then I think it is fair to not host, I think it's valid to not want to for any reason but your list is wild to me, going through the medicine cabinet is a huge one, I'd be worried about a hidden addict in the family, that's who does that, some of them are easily mitigated, pets on the furniture, clarify no pets if you ever host again, but what really gets me is the shoe thing, it's super common in a lot of cultures not to wear shoes in the house, it's something you should expect and respect when going to somebody else's house, it's such a baseline boundary that to disregard it is absurd, what are you getting out of it to ignore that rule, a petty sense of control, I could deal with the chairs even the messes, but if people went out of their way to spite the house rules for absolutely no reason, I wouldn't invite them back either, if they can't respect something as basic as no shoes, they don't have an iota of respect for you or your husband, yeah that's right and I feel like the pets on the furniture is a bigger deal, why are they bringing pets anyway, all of it is so disrespectful, and also like are they blind, how do they not see how disrespectful they're being, that's the most confusing part, surely they realise what they're doing wrong, yeah if I were you OP I'd never want them anywhere near my house after something like this, you are so not the a-hole, the next one is called am I the a-hole for telling my biological sister that I'm sorry she wasn't adopted, but that doesn't have anything to do with me and I owe her nothing, I 25 male was placed in the foster system by my biological parents when I was 2, I was adopted sometime later by my real parents, I recognise that I'm extremely fortunate and I'm lucky to have been adopted before I had any real memory of the system and that my parents gave me a better life than I would have had if I had stayed with my biological parents, I grew up privileged, I went to private schools, I had holidays abroad and I had my tuition paid fully when I started uni, I was loved and I never lacked anything, I currently have a well paying job as a chemical engineer, a beautiful wife, a house paid off fully by my in-laws and two children, I'm very grateful for everything I have and I recognise that I would be leading a very different life if I hadn't have been adopted, last year I was contacted by Opal, 27 female, who claimed that I was her brother and wanted to meet up, after careful consideration I agreed, after doing a DNA test together and digging a bit into family history, Opal and I discovered that we were placed into foster care around the same time, usually foster care will try to keep siblings together, but for some reason we weren't registered as siblings and we were placed into different foster homes, probably due to having a different dad and surname and being given up by different people, Opal got very upset by this discovery, even more so after she found out that while she was never adopted, I had lived a good life and I had loving parents, after the discovery Opal started calling and asking to hang out with my parents and I, or asking 
asking me to do certain favors for her. I got uncomfortable really fast since to be frank, I don't really know her that well. In all aspects except for genetically, she's a total stranger to me. I don't feel comfortable landing her money or introducing her to my entire family. She even made a couple of comments that made me uneasy when she asked me if I thought my parents would have adopted her had they known that she existed when I was adopted and if I think they'd accept her into the family now. Last night she called me again, this time to complain about how she saw the woman in my family had a get together over the weekend and how she felt excluded since she didn't get an invite. I told her that I get that she's upset but that was a family get together for all the women and she's not family to them so she's not entitled to an invitation. Opal began screaming at me at how it was unfair and how since I'm considered family she should be considered too by extension and that I owe it to her to make sure that my family invites her next time and it's the least I could do for her as somebody who got adopted. I told her I'm sorry that she feels excluded and that she wasn't adopted but neither my family nor I owe her anything before hanging up the phone. Since then I've been receiving non-stop texts calling me an a-hole and an evil jerk. I'm starting to second guess myself and I need an outside perspective on the situation. Yeah, no, you're definitely not the a-hole OP. What were you meant to do? And yeah, you're right, you don't owe her anything. Like the top comment says, it's time to block her. You had no control over what happened to you as a two-year-old and you owe her nothing. I'm sorry she's jealous of your life and how fortunate you are, but that has nothing to do with you. She can't decide she's a part of your family just because she wants what you have. She sounds a bit unstable. I don't want to be unkind because I can't know her experiences. But again, it's not your job to provide her with a family or money or favors or whatever she's looking for. I'd look at this as a learning experience. You tried to do something and it didn't work out. End of story and end contact. Because if not, she'll drain you like the emotional vampire she appears to be. Not the a-hole. Yeah, especially that last bit. Like if it's already like this, it's not going to get any better. Yeah, it's super ridiculous that they feel like they're entitled to this OP. You're definitely not the a-hole. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for telling my wife to get over my daughter's short hair? I, 40 male and my wife, 42 female, have been married for five years. I have a 14 year old daughter from a previous relationship. Her mother wanted nothing to do with her when she was born. When I met my wife, she was worried about being a bad stepmother to my daughter. They became close and they do a spa day every Mother's Day. My daughter has very long hair down to her shoulders. She hates putting it up in ponytails and she complains about the length of time it takes to blow dry. She's a big tomboy and one of her friends recommended she get a pixie cut. I booked her an appointment to get the cut she wanted and she was really happy. She's been in such a great mood and she loves having the short hair. When I brought her home to see my wife, my wife dropped what she was doing and looked like she was about to faint. She asked me why I allowed my daughter to cut all of her hair off. I told her this is the cut that my daughter wanted. My wife got furious and started telling me about how I ruined my daughter's image. Oh, get out of here. I shot back at her to get over the haircut as it made my daughter happy. That was all I wanted was my daughter to be happy. My wife continued to complain about the haircut even around my daughter and I had to tell her multiple times to drop it. My daughter has been very depressed and it does worry me. I've been giving my wife the cold shoulder and she's being very cold to both me and my daughter. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife to get over my daughter's short hair? Of course not, OP. What's their issue? They're being bloody ridiculous. They're the only person who cares about it and it's not even really their place to tell them how they should look or what they should do with their hair. And what's this image that they're talking about? Guaranteed it doesn't matter. Yeah, like the top comment says, not the a-hole. The way she's continuing to complain about the cut itself and the girl's image. Sounds like she straight up thinks that girls shouldn't have short hair. Maybe she was okay with your daughter's tomboyness as long as she still had what your wife considers a major signal of femininity. And now she feels the girl is too masculine. She may or may not have ideas about this having something to do with you having been a single father. Maybe she feels an inappropriate level of authority or control over your child's choices about how she presents herself in general, regardless of gender norms, and feels that her authority was usurped. Regardless of the nature of her issue, she's making a child feel bad about her appearance and her preferences for her own body, and she needs to stop. Yeah, 100%, and it probably is that authority thing. They probably feel like they get to decide what sort of hair they have, and they straight up don't. That's such an entitled attitude. The audacity to even say that is so wild. Like, if somebody told me they had a haircut, I understand this one's a different sort of relationship, but the last thing I would do was try to tell them what I think they should do, because it's not up to me what somebody else does with their hair, and it's not up to your wife either, OP. Yeah, you're not the a-hole. I feel bad for your daughter. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for saying that my memory book is not some family project? I, 17 male, lost my dad 10 years ago. When he got sick, he started a memory book with me so that I could hold on to the memories. He did one for my sister too, but she wasn't as into it and was more into videos that he made of himself. But for me, the memory book was everything and after he died, I continued adding to it. Any memory I had of my dad or our family, I would add to it. Sometimes something came back when I found a random photo or something. Then I included memories with my sister after dad. Sometimes I included some memories of mum, but after my dad died, my relationship 
relationship with her was harder. She thought that we needed another dad. And because we said that we didn't want another dad, she was angry with us a lot. She tried to rush a couple of relationships, but they failed when the guy realized he was not getting an insta happy family. Five years ago, my mum met her husband, John, and they did merge families. John was a single dad of three kids, technically four, but one is not in his life. John's three kids do not have an involved mum, so my mum has stepped up to be their mum, and they do call her mum. John has tried to step up and be mine and my sister's dad, but we see him as just a stepdad. John's kids are just step siblings, and I don't love John and his kids. I don't hate or dislike them, but I would never include them in my memory book, for example, and that's what this is about. My step siblings were in my room when I was in school a couple of weeks ago, and they found my memory book. They wanted to know why I had it and why I didn't have any photos of their dad or them. My mum heard them ask those questions, and she demanded to look at it. While mum was going through it, my step siblings said they wanted to add their own stuff, and I said, no, it's not for them. Mum told me not to say that kind of thing to them, and then she told me it should be something that shares memory of our whole family. Uh, no it shouldn't. Stay out of it. I told her it was my personal thing. She took it away for a few days, and my sister stole it back, and then I asked my grandpa to hold onto it for me. Mum and John sat me down and said it's not acceptable that I have a memory book that's clearly about my family when I don't include my whole existing family. They said that my step-siblings were very upset that I wouldn't add them or let them take part. They then said that it should be a family thing and mum insisted I hand it back over and we all work on it together. I told them it's not a family project, it's mine. It's for me and it's my way of documenting memories of the people I love and they will not take it away from me. John was pissed and said, Oh, so it's like that, so you don't love us? Mum told me that she and John had the right to say what was or wasn't a family project. Uh, no you don't. And once it's in their home, that's their decision. She also told me I was disrespectful for talking back. They also told me it was time to man up. Am I the a-hole? Oh, they sound awful. No, you're not the a-hole, OP. What the hell is your mum doing? Does your mum want you to resent her? What the hell? Of course you're not the a-hole, and of course they can't touch it. It's your book, and you can do whatever you want with it. They do not have a say about this. And what do they mean it's time for you to man up? Man up and what? Move out and not talk to them anymore? And like this comment says, not the a-hole. And ask both John and your mother whether they really want to teach you that your own feelings don't matter. You have to love anyone who demands it and is nice to you in exactly the way she wants you to. Why do your step family's feelings matter and yours don't? You might also want to remind them that if they keep treating you like a doll to fit into their new family, rather than a person with feelings to be considered, that they will lose you once you're old enough to make their relationship with you conditional upon being respected and treated like a person and not a doll. Yeah, 100%, that's the first thing that I thought. Like, oh yeah, this is going to pan out well when they get older and move out. And it's bloody parents like this that get confused when they're older and their kids don't even want to talk to them. Like, oh, I wonder why. Yeah, you're for sure not the a-hole OP. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for not letting my girlfriend into the bathroom? I was taking a shower and in the middle of it, my girlfriend suddenly knocks on the door and pulls the handle several times. With the water running, it was difficult to hear what she said. She then proceeds to turn off the lights in order to get my attention. I shout that once I'm done, I'll open the door, but she doesn't want to turn the light back on until I open the door. I get a bit irritated about the situation since I can't really see anything and I am nearsighted on top of it being pretty dark but she wanted to go work out and brush her teeth beforehand. After I was done we got in a bit of an argument since I said it was unnecessary to turn off the lights while I was in the shower and that she just could have waited until I was done. She starts ranting about wanting to head off so she's at the gym before a certain time. Since then the treadmills would be taken and so on. I felt like it was a bit unnecessary and now she headed off while the mood wasn't particularly at its best. Am I the gay hoff for not opening the door right away? Edit for people wondering why I locked the door and think it's weird. The reason for it is I value my privacy. I don't like people running in while I'm showering. Of course, it doesn't do anything if she does see me naked since she's my girlfriend. It's more of a personal preference. We both do it. No, you're not the a-hole OP. Why would the solution to this problem be her turning the lights off while you're trying to take a shower? That's not how you handle that situation. And what, they don't see any issue with doing that? That sounds like something you do to your sibling if you're like nine years old. Like that's not a mature way to handle that situation. And then ranting at you afterwards too. I'm assuming you weren't taking like a super long time. But yeah, that's super childish the way that she handled it. The top comment says she created a hazard by turning off the lights and leaving you in the dark in the shower. Tell her that's not okay and she could have waited five minutes to brush her teeth. Next time she's in the shower, do the same to her. Maybe she'll get a clue. And OP said, I told her this. I said that if she would have been in the shower, I would have just waited until she was done. I feel like this is just common practice. It's Sunday and the gym is open until the evening, so she's not even really in a rush. Yeah, like it'd be ridiculous if they were in a rush. Like it's never okay to do that. But it's even worse that, yeah, they're not even in a rush. Yeah, you're not in the wrong OP. And I'm happy that everybody on here is telling you that too. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for ignoring a crying baby with its mother?
another present in a restaurant and continuing to enjoy my dessert. A few days back, I was out for dinner with two friends and is pregnant currently, 17 weeks. Kim is married for three years and currently desperately trying to get pregnant. Because Anne is pregnant, Kim cannot stand the idea of not being pregnant yet and that's all she can think of or talk about. Though it doesn't interest me as somebody who doesn't plan on ever having children, I happen to have developed a good tolerance for pregnancy and child related topics because all my friends are either pregnant or parents. During dinner, they spoke only about pregnancies and childbirth where I was hoping to catch up on other topics. I couldn't get them to talk about anything else despite politely and subtly trying to change the topic several different times. But as I understand these topics interest them more right now, I very politely contributed to the conversation where I could. Otherwise, I let them talk as they pleased. A baby started crying in our vicinity and kept on crying for a while even though the mother tried to calm it down. It didn't seem hurt in any way. It seemed to be a normal cry for a baby. I noticed it started crying because it was loud and then I didn't notice it anymore. I know it was crying because that's what my friends kept talking about but I tuned it out and I went back to savoring my dessert. The crying was like background noise to me. But then my friends notice how I'm enjoying my dessert and not contributing to their conversation about how sad they feel for the baby and how it's making their heartache. As in they were having some sort of physical reaction to the baby crying. I tell them that I don't hear the baby cry anymore. They asked me if I had a hearing issue so I explained how it was like background noise to me after the first 10 seconds. They looked at me in horror and pity. Kim told me that it's good I don't plan on having children because I'm heartless and that my baby would be unlucky to be my baby. What the hell Kim? Anne said that she pities me that I'll never know the feeling that they both had. Oh my god. I laughed at their comments because I thought that Kim wasn't very serious about her comment and Anne is going through a few hormonal changes with her pregnancy and definitely deserves some leniency regarding what she says to me. But they both got mad at me. According to them it wasn't something to laugh about. Neither of these comments bothered me at first but after I posted about it yesterday I received a lot of comments telling me that they're not good friends. I argued in their favour because of their difficult situations. They are emotionally having a tough time but after what happened today I'm not so sure anymore. Yeah there's no excuse for this OP. Kim texted me today saying that I need to start showing a little bit more concern towards crying children if I'm to spend time with her future children. Wow the audacity. When I asked her if my heart should ache every time a strange child cried just because I have a uterus she called me an a-hole. So am I the a-hole for ignoring that crying child? No what are we reading? Of course you're not the a-hole. Everybody ignores crying babies. It's not your bloody baby. And you're not heartless. They're not good friends OP. Yeah like this comment says not the a-hole lol. Ignoring a stranger's crying child does not make you a heartless monster. What did Kim want you to do? Walk over and try to console a random kid that isn't even yours? Nah that's wild, dangerous and creepy. And OP said all she did was sit there, make sad faces at the baby and comment about how it made her heartache. Apparently I should have done the same. That's so wild. <laughs> and the fact that Kim had the audacity to say that you're heartless. What a joke. You're not heartless OP. Like this comment says, not the a-hole, your friends are a-holes. What were you supposed to do about somebody else's kid crying? A stranger's baby need should not cause you heartache. That's absurd. Yeah, that's also a good point. It should not make your heartache. <laughs> not even a little bit. Like the way that they're reacting to it is bloody ridiculous. It's a crying baby for God's sake. Babies cry all the time. It's like 80% of what a baby does. That doesn't mean you should feel heartache. Yeah, you're not the a-hole OP. Your friends suck. Like after what they said to you, they definitely do. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for telling my sister she was being very obvious when trying to hide her pregnancy? My sister Amber is currently three months pregnant with twins. She's already begun to develop a bump. Right now, she's only told myself, our parents and our brother, as well as giving myself and our brother permission to tell our spouses. We have all agreed to keep it a secret until she's ready. The issue is she's become very obvious about it to the point where she's doing near comical things to hide it when we're around family, which has been frequently as of late. Picture the stuff that people do in sitcoms when the characters aren't pregnant, but the actor is. Covering her stomach with her purse, holding her other daughter in front of the bump, wearing much baggier clothes when she is typically the type to wear things that show off her figure. Amber has always been pretty fit as she's a gym rat. The bump itself doesn't even look like extra fat or anything. Just a very pronounced baby bump. If ever she has to move something from her stomach, she's very quick to hide it. So obviously many have called on, but for the most part, we're good sports. No one ever directly asked us, but would make hints. I never entertained them. We all gathered on Sunday for a family dinner. Amber was holding her two-year-old for a bit. When the little one wanted to go play, Amber then tried to cover herself with a blanket. My cousin 30 said, All right, Amber, cut the dramatics. We all know. A few instantly reprimanded my cousin. Amber turned bright red. She refused to say anything in the moment, though later quietly confirmed to our aunt, telling her to spread it around. Amber is now very upset. I agree, our cousin was obnoxious and shouldn't have said anything. I've tried to be supportive and comforting. However, Amber kept saying, I don't know how they figured it out. I finally said, Sweetie, you really weren't trying hard. 
I respect why you wanted to wait, but by this point, it was quite obvious. She got mad and tried to insist that it wasn't obvious. I said it absolutely was, and she didn't help matters by acting like she was in a sitcom. I stressed that our cousin was wrong, but she wasn't as stealth as she thought. Edit, I was not saying that she should have done more to hide it. I also don't think she was wrong to hide it. I'm just saying the sentiment, I don't know how they figured it out, doesn't work when she was being obvious. Now she's mad at me and says I'm victim blaming. I said I'm absolutely not. No one should have said anything. But she was being obvious and she shouldn't pretend otherwise. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole, OP. What are they talking about victim blaming? There's no victim here. Yeah, like the top comment says, first of all, she's not a victim unless the pregnancy is the result of a traumatic event. Second of all, it's not wrong to tell her that it's obvious when she asked the question. She just didn't like the answer and unfortunately it came from you, so you're the target. Not the a-hole. And OP said pregnancy is not a result of a traumatic event. The babies were planned. Well, one was baby B was a much welcome surprise. Yeah, you're definitely not the a-hole OP. And I feel like that's enough for today. That was such a fun episode and I hope you guys enjoyed it. But let's read something wholesome. After years of renting apartments without enough space for a dog, I finally saved enough to mortgage a house with a yard and I adopted this sweet girl. Oh, that's so cute. Look at their little face. Oh my God, I'm so happy. When you and your childhood friends stay close and your friendship is thriving through the years. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Good wholesome memes today. Are you okay? I don't feel special. And they hug. Thank you. Oh, that's so cute. And of course, it's a Wild Wild Wee Wild comic. And it's a good place to end the episode. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like and subscribe. And the very fitting comment of the day goes to C.L. Hinton. Those Wild Wild Wee Wild wholesome memes are always so beautiful and sweet. It's just what we need after hearing about some truly awful parents. Yeah, they're so cute, aren't they? I feel like we've had one in almost every episode. And yeah, I'm definitely not complaining. Thank you for the support and thank you for all the comments, guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!